Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to the May 6th City Council meeting. I'm Gina Louise Shara. I'm the City Council President, and I will be presiding this evening. We will begin, as always, with public comment. This meeting and all participating on Zoom will be audio and video recorded. If you wish to make a public comment, please use the raise hand feature. The raise hand feature is in the bottom menu bar under reactions, or it is at the bottom of the participants panel, which opens if you click on participants at the bottom of the screen. If you're calling in by phone, you can raise your hand by hitting star nine. If you're having trouble raising your hand, you may use the chat feature to send a message to me. To ensure equal access and because of the open meeting law, technical problems such as not being able to raise your hand are the only thing the chat function is used for. It'll only be used during public comment. I will unmute each raised hand in order to make a comment. Before you begin, please state your name and your city or town for the public record. To ensure everyone has equal opportunity to speak, the council limits comments to three minutes. You're in no way obligated to use the full three minutes, but if you do, after three minutes, I'll ask you to please finish your sentence. Zoom now has an app with a timer like the one that would be visible in council chambers, so we're going to try it out tonight, and hopefully it'll be helpful for those who are able to see it in addition to hearing it. According to the council rules, we do not respond during public comment as it's your turn to speak. So while your comments should be directed at us, you'll understand we do not respond to you. You may speak on any topic. It doesn't need to be an item on the agenda. I ask that all but the council turn off your video until called upon as comments are directed to the council and the only person recognized has the floor. We'll do our best to act quickly. If someone is clearly acting in a way that's inappropriate, deploying profanity or slurs or displaying something outside of what one would expect in council chambers. And I'll remove anyone who needs to be removed from the meeting. The meeting can also be watched on channel 15 or by streaming on Northampton Open Media's YouTube and other platforms. The recording of this meeting will be available at Northampton Open Media's government video archive channel on YouTube. And I thank them as always for that public service. I'll remind people that we're always happy to receive comments by email, which are equally part of the public record. So please email us at citycouncil at northamptonma.gov. And the first name I see is Josh Wallace. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good evening. My name is Josh Wallace, and I'm the president of the New England Police Benevolent Association, Local 186 Union, representing the Northampton Police Patrol officers. I'd first like to acknowledge the time that the NPRC put into their work towards the final report that you are proposing a resolution in favor of tonight. <clears throat> the Northampton Police value feedback and suggestions on how they can serve their community better because the community members are our customers. And if we don't pursue the challenges of being better guardians of our community, then we become stagnant and less effective in our service to the community. The report I'm referencing is a review and criticism of the police department's practices that were researched and developed by a diverse group of people, diverse in many ways, except their view of police in general. This group took to reviewing the police department as if they were reviewing a car by only reading the manual and specifications of the vehicle. You can't look at the specs of the vehicle and be able to understand how all that combined makes for a quality vehicle, which the Northampton Police Department is, a quality vehicle for policing. You have to take the car for a drive. Not one of the members of the NPRC set foot in the department and took the department for a test drive. They only read the manual and specs for the department and passed judgment based on that information. Not one of the members of the NPRC spoke with a member of the police department and only heard from those who were unhappy about their experience with police in general, and not always this specific department, never taking the time to speak with those who had positive experiences with this department. It was very apparent how this commission would view police after they had a lengthy discussion on how they could effectively allow department members to speak with them get, without giving them a quote unquote platform at elevated status, such as being invited guests, eventually agreeing not to include them at all. The commission also spent a little over an hour eventually altering the report from clinical support options, the city's mental health support contractor to a lower acceptable level of praise that the commission was comfortable with. The NPRC is suggesting peer responders for wellness check suspicious persons and stating that domestic violence quote unquote needs further studies. These are the three type calls that are identified as the top calls that police are fatally wounded during. The injury occurs primarily during prior to or during contact, according to a DOJ study, and not during arrest or any, any other function that a police officer could perform. The commission suggests that hours of work be capped, stating that their reasoning was because these police officers are tired from overworking and then driving around the city with guns. When you look at the top running officers in the department, a total of zero citizen complaints, zero excessive force complaints, and zero traffic accidents, and no abuse of sick time. There's zero data supporting this. 
We ask that the city council take this report on its face based as a biased view of policing in general and not an accurate depiction of the police department and look forward to hearing some support from the council and commitment to its constituents for their safety and protection. Thank you. Okay. Hold on. I'm trying out this new timer and it's I'm not sure how well it's working for us. Hold on one sec, everybody. Okay, uh, next is Nan. Good evening, my name is Nancy Smith and I live on Chapel Street in Northampton. My pronouns are she and her. Last council meeting, I and many of my neighbors from Rust Ave, Laurel Grove, Burt's Pit and Chapel Streets spoke in opposition to a proposed site for a city kennel in the middle of our residential neighborhood. Tonight, I'm here to say thank you on behalf of myself and my neighbors. First to our Ward 2 City Councilor Karen Foster for meeting with us to hear our concerns, answering our many emails, and for hosting an on-site meeting with Mayor Narkowitz last night. A sincere thank you to Mayor Narkowitz for standing with us on-site in the sometimes pouring rain and not just listening, but actually hearing us, then vowing there will be no city kennel on this site. Northampton is a beautiful city, and so much of that has to do with the work you have done during your tenure. Being who you are, we know you are pressing to get everything done before your term ends, but I'm pretty sure that would be impossible. It's a tough job, and you truly have delivered for your city. Rest assured, when an appropriate non-residential site for the city kennel is found, we will be there to support it. A quick shout out to Councilor Labage for meeting with us early on and keeping in touch. Councillor Jarrett for his thoughtful responses to our emails and support during the last council meeting and to our city council president who also joined us in the rain last night to hear our concerns. Thank you to all the neighborhood organizers and activists who researched, wrote and spoke. You are amazing. A big thank you to the activists who joined us last night from around the city. You all made this happen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Next is Dane Cutler. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for hearing us tonight. So Dane Cutler, Ward 3, Orchard Street. And I'm here tonight in my finest garb to uh, implore you to adopt the resolution in support of the Pioneer Valley News Guild. I worked at the Daily Hampshire Gazette as the special sections content coordinator, as well as running the classifieds, legal notices, and obituaries for just over three years. I loved my colleagues at the Gazette, and by the time I left for another job, I was the most stressed out and miserable I had ever been at a job. The Gazette in the last year has seen staffing cuts of more than a third of its workforce and management has been dragging its feet when it comes to negotiations. It's been an untenable situation for far too long. Your resolution tonight means a lot to the people remaining at the Gazette. We need to support our local news. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Francine Deutsch. Uh, I'm here tonight to beg you to use whatever power you have to stop the Warfield Place project, which is going to chop down the cherry blossom trees that are one of Northampton's great treasures. If you've never been there, I am asking the city council members, if you've never seen these cherry blossom trees at their peak, it's a little late this year, they're sort of on the, the petals are starting to fall, but you can still get a glimpse of what the DT, DPW is on the verge of destroying. In case you haven't heard, the plan to repave Warfield Place will kill the trees. Uh, you may have heard the trees are not in good health and will die anyway within five years, although other arborists say that it's difficult to predict their life expectancy. But even if that were true, five more years of enjoying their beauty is well worth delaying the project. 
I don't live on Warfield Place, but every year I look forward to the, to the spectacle that signifies that spring has sprung. I've been to the DPW meeting with the residents of Warfield Place. What struck me was how little value seemed to be placed on the aesthetic, spiritual, and joyful, joyful experience of Northampton citizens when these decisions are made. And of course, it raises the question of how the decision is being made and why citizens' voices uh, are absent. My understanding of chapter 87 is that destroying trees this way at the very least requires a public meeting that must be advertised to the entire city. The Japanese venerate cherry blossom trees. When I was trying to think of how to convey how profoundly these trees can affect one, I found these three haiku that I will read by Issa, a famous Japanese poet. Cherry blossoms, see cherry bloom, and it was sung of this old tree. And under cherry flowers, none are utter strangers. And finally, a haiku that warns that the temple bell may disturb the delicate flowers. Hey there, wait a moment before you strike the temple bell at the cherry blossoms. It inspired me to write a haiku myself. Stop on this wrong path. Beauty brings joy to our lives. Save the cherry trees. Um, can you please state your name and city and town, please? Oh, Francine Deutsch, uh, Northampton. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Oops. All right. Next is Adam Scarborough. Hi, I'm Adam Scarborough from 11 Warfield Place in Ward 1 Northampton. I'd like to talk to you about the street reconstruction project on Warfield Place. The current project planned to reconstruct the street will significantly alter the street and neighborhood with the removal of one of its unique features, a line of mature cherry trees. Well, the DPW did notify us of a plant uh, a few weeks ago now and provided the property owners with the time to have a meeting with the director of the D DPW about it. It's clear it was done so in bad faith as bids had already gone out to the contractors to implement the street reconstruction plan, meaning there was zero chance of actually implementing any practical feedback from the baker's dozen of property owners on the street. Given the extreme and frequency with which such road reconstructions are resurfacing on Warfield Place, and I'd assume other small side streets in Northampton, as well as the age of the neighborhood. Uh, according to city records, most of the houses were built around 1870. Don't you think it would be, uh, given the opportunity to do such public works, we should be more comprehensive with planning? For example, my house at 11 Warfield Place still has its original sewer line, complete with house trap that's all got to be around 100 years old now. Amazingly, it's still in good serviceable condition but who knows how much longer that'll be true. Given the roads, sidewalk, and trees will all be ripped up, doesn't it seem like this might be a good time to also address replacing sewer lines and water lines that are in use uh, with the adjoining properties? If given the opportunity, I'd be happy to pay out of my own pocket to have my main sewer line replaced given at this time. Um, but will I? Nope, because due to the, the street's reconstructions, zero change is allowed. None of these things can happen when it might make more sense to do so. For this reason, and the loss of the habitability of the trees uh, that the trees provide, I think we should pause the project. Given the extreme unlikelihood that we'll have an opportunity to address all of the neighborhood infrastructure issues in our lifetime again, I think we should take the time to make sure we do it right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next is Ashwin Ravi Kumar. Hello everybody, I'm Ashwin Ravi Kumar. I live in Amherst and I teach at Amherst College. I'm also on the Amherst Town Energy and Climate Action Committee. Uh, I'm here again because of the urgency of this moment, which calls for ever more bold leadership on the part of the mayor and the council uh, to create a department of community care led by those who have been most impacted by policing. Um, but it's not enough to just create a new department. Fundamentally, the Movement for Black Lives and the Northampton Policing Review Commission report call on us to move functions out of policing right now and to let resources and budget follow that money in alignment with our values. Um, creating a Department of Community Care would be a huge step for Northampton so that we can start to build and fund real systems for community care, uh, peer-led non-coercive crisis response systems and other programs that truly keep us safe. 
As a person of color who spends a lot of time in Northampton, I want to be able to call someone who is not a cop, who might, who might put my life in danger uh, when I am going through a crisis. And I want to be able to do that as soon as possible. And we have a really big opportunity here to make that happen now. Um, so I know the mayor has said that building a new department on a short timeline is going to be hard. But the truth is that he can issue an administrative order right now to create that department and fund it in his current budget proposal while moving resources out of policing. I know there are many procedural barriers to overcome from insurance issues to budgetary details to specifics about how the institutions would work. But the fact is that the uprising for Black Lives was almost a year ago, and there are many pathways to action now uh, that we could take that mirror the growing wave of cities around the country. Um, so as a city that's committed to honoring the urgency of the climate emergency, we know that climate justice is racial justice. And the money that we now pour into policing must be reallocated to support an economy of care through a budget that reflects our moral commitments to both climate action and racial justice. I hope that procedural barriers will never be invoked as a reason to delay bold moral leadership. I hope that the counselors will use what influence they have to work with the mayor to ensure that these changes happen in this fiscal year creating a department of community care led by those who have been most harmed by policing and shifting functions and resources away from the police right now. So I strongly urge you to pass this resolution uh, endorsing the Policing Review Commission report and to use whatever other influence you have to make this happen right now. Also, I support the Gazette resolution. We need to support workers at the Gazette and local journalism. That is super important for building the type of community that we want. Thank you all so much for your work and I look forward to the discussion that's coming up next. Thank you. Uh, next up is Aaron Clark. Good evening, everyone. My name is Aaron Clark. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I'm a resident and homeowner in Ward 7B. I'm here tonight to echo Ashwin and others and to voice support for the resolution proposed by Councillor Maori and Councillor Quinlan, which resolves that the City Council support the recommendations in the Police Review Commission's final report, commends the commissioners for their work, and urges the mayor to establish a new Department of Community Care this fiscal year and fund it by at least $882,000 and six hundred two. dollars um, that's the amount that was cut from the police budget last year, but was never reallocated. So as you know, this is not new. Black communities have been calling for an end to police terror and, and violence for well over 150 years. And these demands have been historically delayed and silenced by white government leaders. Mayor Narkowitz was mayor when the Black Lives Matter movement emerged in 2014. And on top of that, he has had almost a year since the uprising last summer to defund the police. What has he done or Northampton con concretely to show that it values black lives. Mayor Narkowitz and Northampton have had more than enough time to figure out how to transition away from a racist punitive system to one which cares for all of its community members. 150 years of white government leaders ignoring proposals to end police violence does not make this any less urgent now. And you have a real clear choice if you want to be complicit in that silence, which is indeed violence. This is urgent. And once again, we're urging you to create a department of community care which is accountable to communities most impacted by policing, to defund the police, Northampton police by at least 50%, and to reallocate those funds to community-led safety strategies for fiscal year 2022. And I'd like to close tonight with a quote from uh, Chelsea Klein um, from her piece that was published in the Gazette earlier today. It says, quote, getting to work now could prevent future further rot. No more empty or vague promises of doing better without any action. Just like a follow-up dentist visit, a lack of action will suddenly be very apparent and the stink of our hollow promises will hang in the air like bad breath. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Oops, sorry. Okay, Dusty Christensen is next. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Dusty Christensen. I am a staff writer at the Daily Hampshire Gazette. I'm an East Hampton 
uh, resident. I cover uh, Holyoke and South Hadley for the newspaper. And uh, I am here tonight um, to speak. Um, as a reporter, I feel it's my duty to provide a bit of truth to the community about the situation at the Gazette, which has become very challenging to say the least for many of us. Um, We've seen our staffing levels cut by more than half in the past year, and everyone is feeling uh, overwhelmed, stressed, and unsure about what comes next. It's no, that's no way to, to feel in a workplace. Uh, in my department alone, we've lost many staffers due to layoffs, buyouts, and unfilled positions just in the past year. We're down a sports reporter, a sports editor, features editor, two features reporters, a news reporter, a photographer, three page designers, and an editor in chief. And that's only in the editorial department as a union we represent uh, all eligible workers in the building. At the bargaining table, our union isn't asking for the moon. We're asking for protections against outsourcing to name just one proposal so that the few of us left can feel a degree of job security at, the, at work so we can feel like our work is valued and can function at work without incredibly high levels of stress. After a year of award-winning reporting, chronicling the death, illness, and economic destruction that this pandemic has brought to our communities, I think that's a fair request and one that would make our newspaper more stable for the people who actually make it. The company that owns us, Newspapers in New England, and its CEO, Aaron Julian, have decided to take a different approach. Uh, after a year of, of us as workers, many of us, uh, uh, taking on uh, additional costs uh, with no pay raises um, to, to compensate for them for, for working from home. The company has decided uh, to recently hand over negotiations at the bargaining table entirely to the expensive out-of-town law firm Safarth Shaw, which has a long history of helping bosses fight its workers who are seeking better uh, working conditions in their workplaces. And today the company published a full page ad in our paper that said, quote, most of the positions that were eliminated had little effect on news gathering and writing. That's certainly news to me, and I think it's probably certainly news to, to, to most of the people who work at the paper and, and to our readers as well. Uh, so too were many of the other claims in that ad. Uh, as those who work to make our local paper, we deserve better than that. Um, and I, I want to, uh, to express my support for uh, the resolution you're bringing forward tonight and for our ongoing efforts to, to win a fair contract at the newspaper. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so as I said, this is a new timer we're trying out and oddly enough that when I turn it on, it seems to be starting on screen less than three minutes, but on my other screen, it's at three minutes. So there's a weird lag, but if, uh, if it gets to the point and, um, you haven't actually reached three minutes, I will make sure that you know that. Okay. Next is... Jesse Hassinger. Thank you very much. Um, I want to um, support everything that Ashwin and Aaron Clark said. Um, I also want to support everything that uh, Dusty just said. I thank you uh, all city um, councilors uh, in writing the resolution in support of workers of the Hampshire Gazette and the resolution in support of the recommendations of the Northampton Police and Review Commission. I look forward to seeing both of those um, pass and I uh, look forward to hearing the conversation that arises out of them. Um, I think that uh, all of the points that have been raised in uh, the past three people speaking are all um, extremely important to keep in mind as we move forward and uh, consider the implications of what a Northampton without the Gazette would look like and what a Northampton without changing to uh, the policing would look like. Um, neither of those are Northamptons that I for one would want to live in. Um, thank you very much. And uh, I look forward to hearing what happens. Thank you. Next is Virginia Ryan. Hi, my name is Virginia Ryan and I'm a student at Amherst College and have spent considerable time in Northampton and care deeply about the community. I'm in strong support of the resolution that Councillor Mayori and Quinlan have proposed, which urges the mayor to establish a new department of community care this fiscal year and funded by at least $880,000 in the budget for the next year. This Department of Community Care needs to be accountable to communities most impacted by policing. 
city councilors, I urge you to tell the mayor that he needs to implement the recommendations and the policing review commission's report to move the, um, the several responsibilities out of the police department within two years. And the most immediate priorities of these are wellness checks, suspicious person calls, and nonviolent public assembly. Reforming the police or simply relying on more trainings will not suffice to meet the urgent demands of this moment. There is no better way to protect the people from police than to reduce people's contact with the police. It is well past our time to invest in programs that better reflect our values of anti-racism and combating climate change and reallocating resources away from police will address these needs. As an environmental studies major, I have learned and, and deeply care about climate change um, and I'm very concerned about it. Climate change disproportionately affects the same communities that are most harmed by police around the country and both climate change and police exacerbate existing inequalities. Northampton can use the funds taken from the police department um, um, reallocated towards the community, uh, the Department of Community Care to invest in initiatives that support climate justice initiatives. Northampton can be a leader and should be a leader in the national movement away from policing towards a more just and sustainable future and should and can follow cities like Seattle, which cut their police budget and redirected some of the funds toward climate justice efforts. City councilors, you have the power to make an enormous difference for the future of our climate and the citizens of North Northampton. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Ruthie Woodring. Uh, hi, I'm Ruthie Woodring from Florence. And I just want to express my deep appreciation for everyone on the Policing Review Commission who's been doing all this unpaid work for months to help Northampton be more strategic about how and when we deploy armed officers and I encourage the city council and the mayor to follow the recommendations of the commission um, and to shift money towards alternatives. And I also just wanna recognize the difficult position that individuals in the police department are in and the work that they do. It just seems like a hard place to be right now. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Samuel Schultz. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Sam and I live in Amherst as an Amherst College student um, and I'm also a frequent visitor to Northampton. Um, I'm speaking tonight to strongly support the resolution proposed that the city council support the recommendations of the Police and Review Commission's final report and urge the mayor to establish a new Department of Community Care this fiscal year and fund it by at least $882,000 in the budget for next year. I also want to strongly emphasize that that Department of Community Care should be accountable to the communities most impacted by policing and also should uh, the Northampton Police should be defunded by about 50% and the funds reallocated to that Department of Community Care. Um, I, much like Virginia, actually come at this issue from a different place than a lot of people having been someone for most of my life um, who has been most motivated politically on climate and environmental issues. From what I understand, the town of Northampton has been a good model for the country on a transition to a sustainable future, at least in terms of meeting the demands of the climate crisis. Redirecting resources from policing towards community-led care supports that transition by ensuring that all community members can be a part of Northampton's sustainable future. Much like climate action, these changes cannot wait. Failing to swiftly reduce the scope of policing in Northampton would amount to failing our own communities just the same as failing to meet the demands of the climate crisis. I also know that the creation of a Department of Community Care accountable to communities of color and other communities who have been harmed by policing would make it more likely for me and my friends and peers at Amherst College to spend more of our time at, in Northampton. Um, a city that has committed itself to supporting its most vulnerable residents is a city that me and my friends uh, want to spend our time in and maybe eventually live in ourselves. Um, once again, I just wanna summarize that I'm speaking to support the creation of a new Department of Community Care, which is accountable to communities most impacted by policing and to defund the Northampton Police by 50% and reallocate the funds to that department. I wanna end by emphasizing that solutions to addressing public safety must move away from policing. And this resolution is, great, is a great step towards a better and more sustainable future for Northampton. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Lois Ahrens. Hello. Hey. Hi. I don't know if you, oh, sorry about that. It's okay. 
Oh. Can you see me? Now I can. Okay. Yeah. Marion Labarge's name is on the screen when I'm looking at it. Anyway, um, my name is Lois Ahrens. I live on Warfield Place, uh, where I've lived for 23 years. On April 12th, uh, residents of Warfield Place had a letter from the DPW taped to our doors stating that they had plans to repave the street and the collateral damage of the repaving would be widening one sidewalk to five feet, removing the other sidewalk and chopping down seven cherry trees. Warfield Place is a tiny street with a few potholes. The opinion of the tree warden is that the trees have five years to live and so it's all right for them to be cut down now. I'm about to be 74. With that kind of thinking, perhaps I should jump off a bridge now in advance of maybe dying in five years. Uh, residents, with one exception, do not want the, tree, the street repaved. According to Mass Law Chapter 87, prior to cutting down trees, there must be a hearing. No hearing has taken place. We are requesting one now. In a conversation with a certified arborist I had today, he said that the only reason a city could take down trees if they are hazardous trees. He said the trees looked healthy to him. If there is another law that supersedes chapter 87, we wanna see it. During the one meeting the residents had with the DPW director, we were treated with disdain and arrogance. Apparently as residents of Warfield Place and as taxpayers, we have no say about what is being done by fiat. There are many other streets that actually have traffic on them. We do not, um, we do not now have traffic except for people coming to see the cherry trees. And those, tree, those streets with traffic, heavy traffic are in worse condition than Warfield Place. I suggest that the city spend its money repairing those streets and leave us alone. I call on the mayor to stop the senseless and needless destruction of seven beautiful trees. And also I just have to say as a longtime resident and reader and subscriber to the Gazette, I fully support the reporters and the workers of the Gazette to win a fair contract. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Jose Dostra. Hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Um, thank you. I'm a Northampton resident. Um, I'd like to thank um, Michael Quinlan and Rachel Maiori um, for their resolution. I think the council should adopt it. Um, and I'd like to thank all the people that did unpaid labor on the police commission. Um, and I'd like to point out that while we are talking to a bunch of council members, really, we've been here advocating since before my youngest child was born. Um, she, she's about to turn one in August. Um, we've been asking for the, the bare necessities to put houseless people in homes since last year. Um, um, the Northampton Police Department has been using their Facebook basically as a propaganda against all these people that are trying to organize housing for people here in town and prevent arrests. Um, they, they've they been doing it since last year. They did it tonight. Um, I would like for the city government to observe how the, 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 the gangs in the police station is operating how the gang is operating their social media account and bringing in Blue Lives Matter supporter to these, to, to the to the Facebook and they're directing them towards activists basically. Um, so they're bringing in dangerous people online and pointing them towards activists and organizers. A group of organizers is showing up at the meetings, posting that on a cop page. Do you know who also did that? The Nazis. Nazis put out media that align uh, teachers union and workers unions with, um, with, with people who were doing harm. Um, and then they ended up executing those people. So I would observe how they are allowed to do that. I would 
um, urge the city council to cut the budget by at least 50%. Um, and, and really it's, it's David Narkowitz. Like we're all here looking at you, my kids, they're like, dad, why are you so mad? It's David Narkowitz. It's because for a year he's had the power to do anything with the money in this town. And I've contacted him on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, email, and by phone. And that guy couldn't be bothered to allot any of the budget for anyone that is suffering in town. David Narkowitz. Okay. Next is Oliver Kellhammer. Hi. Uh, my name is Oliver Kelhammer. I live at Two Warfield Place, and I also work as a lecturer in sustainable design at, at Parsons, uh, the New School for Design. Um, my neighbors and I have reviewed the DPW plan for Warfield Drive or Warfield Place and find it sorely lacking. We are sending you back to the drawing board. I, I think uh, the, the plan fails to meet our community needs in several registers. Uh, but we're standing ready to participate in a collaborative design process, which this was not. So here's what's wrong. As several of the speakers have, have, have noted today, cutting down the cherry trees is, is, is a disaster. The, these beautiful trees are beloved. And uh, during the blooming season, people come from all over the city to look at them. They, the trees constitute uh, part of our ecological and visual infrastructure. And they also contribute immeasurably to our quality of life and sense of place. In terms of climate change mitigation, which uh, Northampton has committed itself to, mature trees contribute up to 10 degrees Fahrenheit in cooling in their vicinity. And it will take many years uh, to get this benefit back if these trees are removed. We've already lost a mature maple on the street. And so we're already uh, behind in terms of uh, tree canopy. Um, and further on the topic of climate change, this plan makes no mention of such engineering features as rain gardens and permeable pavements which are now standard practice in Green Streets Initiative. Surely we can do better than that. But streets are more than just pavement and concrete. They're habitat for humans and non-humans alike, actual ecosystems, a commons, if you like, that can define a neighborhood and help bring us together. We just had over 100 people attend a cherry blossom festival, listening to music, chatting with our neighbors, and, and a lived example of what a vibrant street could offer. And to begin such an unpopular and noisy construction project at, after this unprecedented COVID winter when we were just crawling out of our houses to enjoy the singing of birds and fresh air adds insult to injury. But we're here to help. Through a participatory and compassionate community-based design process, we could at some point work with city staff to craft a solution for Warfield that we can all be proud of. We're just not there yet. So we're sending you back to the drawing board. There's no shame in being sent back to that. Those of us who work as designers are always uh, modifying plans and making them better. We deserve better and we're willing and able to work with the city to come up with a better plan. But the plan that they give us is not right for this community. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, next is Heidi Scott. Hello, everybody. I can't actually see myself at the moment. I'm not sure if, ah, oh, there we are. Um, my name's Heidi Scott. I'm a current resident of Warfield Place, Northampton. Um, like others who have already spoken tonight, uh, I would like to express my deep dismay about the DPW's intention to uh, remove the seven ch cherry trees on Warfield Place in order to resurface the road and upgrade the sidewalk. Now, I'm not a homeowner on Warfield Place, but I have lived there as a tenant for coming up on 10 years. And as such, I care deeply about the neighborhood, about its community, and also about the trees which I consider to be part of that community. Um, I'm very much troubled by 
the lack of meaningful consultation that's taking place so far and the dismissive way in which the DPW to date has responded to residents' concerns. And I would like to think that the DPW can do better than that and to work um, with greater compassion and, and vision. Far from improving the neighborhood, the abrupt removal of these beautiful shade giving trees would be experienced by the majority of residents as a profound loss. I would also like to add, um, as I've actually mentioned already, I'd like to reiterate the point that the trees themselves are part of the community and that their right to continued life and care, regardless of what lifespan they have left, should be taken into serious consideration, most especially in a time of accelerating climate change when we sorely need mature trees. At a minimum, I hope that this project uh, will be put on hold so that a real dialogue can take place, one in which residents' experiences and concerns are taken into compassionate consideration. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, Liz Walber, if you're listening, I'm hearing that the um, it's not broadcasting. Um, so I don't know if you can check that. I'll try and send you a chat in a second too. And also, I think I, this timer isn't working, but I think I've jerry-rigged it so that I've got 30 extra seconds on this clock. So it's going to show up as uh, three on this one. I'm sorry that it is, for some reason, there's a 30 second discrepancy between both elements of the program that I can't possibly explain. Okay, um, next, sorry to keep you waiting, is uh, Maritha Wallace. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Maritha Wallace, um, and I would like to thank the staff of the Daily Hampshire Gazette for running um, my picture, um, for winning the Louise Gaskins uh, Teaching Award, um, and is also a human it's a human and civil rights award, which brings me to why I'm here tonight. I am a black and brown person. I currently reside in Amherst, Massachusetts, but I work at JFK Middle School. I am concerned because as flipping through Facebook, I see a woman, a mother, much like myself with black and brown children, whose son was sitting in a car and uh, was approached by a police officer saying that he looked suspicious, asked for an ID where he had lived for seven years. To me, this is a problem and here is why. People who look like me for at least the for see of the last year have been killed and shot by police. It happens almost every day, regardless of whether um, it is on TV or not. This is concerning to me. I am not suspicious or he was not suspicious sitting in his car. And yet that is how we are portrayed by most police officers. I have been profiled in Northampton, Massachusetts. I have been pulled over when nothing was wrong with my car for driving down the street. I am not okay with this. I ask desperately for people who look like me, for kids that come to school and talk to me about and say, Miss Wallace, I am afraid of the police. I get it. I would like Mayor Narkowitz to give a generous proportion to community activism around this area. We don't need cops to come into our schools and tell us how to do things. We need professionals who handle this situation, who handle trauma for black and brown people. What you are doing is not okay. People who look like me are scared. I don't like that. I have to tell my son when he is in Northampton, make sure you keep your hands on the steering wheel because I want him to return. This needs to be put community policing is not okay. We need this money to go to community action where change from on a grassroots level can happen 
through mental health and education. Thank you so much and have a good night. Thank you. Next is Lisa Clausen. Hi, thank you. Um, my name is Lisa Clausen, uh, she, her. I live in Ward 2 on Harrison Avenue. Um, and I'm here tonight in support of the Gazette workers in negotiating a fair contract. Um, I am a subscriber of the Gazette, an active community member, and want to, you know, urge council to support of the resolution and urge management to negotiate a fair contract. Um, I would also like to speak out in favor of supporting the trees uh, and in support of the creation of a Department of Community Care. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Teresa. Hi, my name is uh, Teresa. I live in Florence. Um, and I would like to say um, I am for community action and care, but um, I don't want it funded by taking away from our police department. Um, I would like our police department funded. Um, I would like um, to let you know that I feel our officers are an immeasurable amount of importance to our community and to our day-to-day -day lives. They are often the first responders to emergency situations and often administer uh, life-saving procedures before even the medics arrive on the scene, um, saving countless lives. Um, they do that at all hours of the day, um, from morning to night. They risk their lives every day. Um, and I mean, I, we can't fix you know, the problem with discrimination with more discrimination. I just, we can't do it like that. Uh, we need to come together as a community. Um, it would be like holding our mayor of Northampton um, responsible for something somebody in uh, the mayor of East Hampton did. Something wrong in holding David Narkowitz responsible for it. It just wouldn't make any sense. We can't hold all of our police officers accountable for somebody else's actions. It needs to be on an individual basis, um, not a blanket. Um, with that said, I would like to ask you to look at our system of accountability. So the complaints, where do they go? Who investigates? What happens when nothing happens? Who is checking? Who is responsible for this? We need to fix this. Um, have we asked our officers, the people that are inside that work day to day, how to fix any of this? I, I bet a lot of them would have really great ideas as well and their voices should be heard as well. Um, we trust our, our health officials with our health, right? We hired them for a job and we trust them. We also need to trust our police with our policing. Um, and make sure we hold accountable where they need to be held. Um, but I just wanna say all of our members in our community are important, every single one of them, including our men and women in uniform. Um, and that's everything. Thank you. Next up is Vera. Vera Dunno. Okay. Uh, can you see can you see me here? Cannot yeah. see you, but I can hear you. Hello? 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 Yes. Hello? Hey, can you say can you sorry, that's a technical issue. Um, all right, so I'll begin. Uh, greetings, Northampton City Council. My name is Barra Dunau. Today, I'm speaking to you as the unit council chair of the Pioneer Valley News Guild, the union that represents all workers at the Daily Hampshire Gazette. The reporters, graphic designers, circulation workers, and photographers that bring you our wonderful local newspaper every day, except for Sunday. 
We commend the city council for taking up a resolution in support of our contract campaign. For closing in on two years, we have negotiated with newspapers of New England, and we are here to say that the time for us to have a fair contract is now. Some may wonder what has taken so long. Is the union asking for the moon? Well, I can assure you that our asks are very basic and we stand willing to negotiate on every issue. One of the biggest issues we face is over jurisdiction. Simply put, we don't want the company to be able to lay off Gazette workers and then pay someone else to do their job. A simple ask, right? Not to end any. Already, we have significantly dropped our ask on wages, a not insignificant thing when we have a membership that is largely made up of people who are paid in the $30,000 and $40,000 a year. Currently, we are asking for a $1 an hour raise next year and for the $2 cost of living increases we have enjoyed at the Gazette to continue after that. Now, the <laughs> Aaron Julian decided to put something in the paper saying that they weren't stripping our cost of living increases. But I can assure you, there has been no proposal that has been brought to us that has 2% increases, yearly 2% increases in it. Yes, the Gazette has continued to give us cost of living uh, those 2% increases, but if it's not in the contract, they're taking it away. We cannot accept someone's word for it in a contractual obligation. We are adults here. We have also stepped back considerably our asks around vacation rollover, holidays, and the shape of the workday. But still, we are failing to see the movement we need to see from the company. Some may ask, do we think Enony is some evil entity akin to the gatehouses and the olden capitals of the world? We don't believe that that is the case, but we also think it's time they stopped acting like them. Currently, NNE is paying an anti-union lawyer to negotiate for them. We think that's a waste of money and the NNE should be investing that in its workers and not in someone for, who works for Safar Shaw, a law firm that had Harvey Weinstein as a client. We also think that NNE should agree to a successor clause, which would ensure that the contract lives if the company is sold and would demonstrate a commitment to local control that would put many of our members' mind disease. The Northampton City Council, people of the Pioneer Valley, we ask for your support. Please continue to subscribe to our newspaper, stand with its workers, and demand that the leadership of newspapers of New England agree to a fair contract now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Shauna T.P. Hi, yes. Um, my name is Shauna and I'm a lifelong resident of Northampton Ward 1. I'd like to make a few comments. So first and foremost, on replacing the NPD with the Department of Community Care, we need to do it. The Police Review Commission, our comrades in Northampton Abolition now, and, and many others have worked tirelessly to put forward a robust, viable alternative to the horrible model of policing as quote unquote public safety. The two are not the same thing. Folks have a wide range of safety needs and as copious research has shown, the police are not best equipped or are not equipped at all to handle the vast majority of these needs and far too often make situations worse. This shouldn't be surprising given that the institution of the police, as I hope we've all learned by now, was not designed as a public safety institution. It was designed to terrorize and kill black people, to enforce the theft of indigenous land, to beat down worker organizing, and generally uphold the racist class stratified settler colonial society known as the USA. And we can see how the professionalization and expanded scope of the police over the course of the 20th century has left that reality unchanged. And that includes the NPD, which wanted to be trained by the Israeli Defense Forces in anti-terror tactics, wanted to install surveillance cameras downtown and much more, and multiple of whose senior members are documented racists and bullies from Robert Hamburger Powers to Andrew Cole, Alan Borowski, Thomas Briotta, to name a few of the worst offenders. I am a worker at Stop and Shop and thus a member of UCW Local 1459, and by the way, support the Gazette workers. And I can speak from personal experience having witnessed the quote unquote unionized police force of Greenfield violently breaking the strike lines of nurses and can metal workers to let in strike breaking replacement workers that the police did not serve my interest. I'm also a visibly trans feminine person. I can tell you for certain that when I have a safety need, the last person I would ever call to my aid is a cop. And that goes for gay and trans cops too. And every houseless person with whom I've developed a relationship or otherwise spoken with at length have had horrible experiences with the NPD. 
defunding the police and replacing it with a department of community care as outlined in the police review commission's report will be a tremendous step forward and it needs to be taken immediately. I'd also like to speak briefly to the completely pointless and awful decision of the DPW to kill the cherry trees on Warfield. It's wrong on every level. The vast majority of Warfield and nearby residents such as myself are strongly opposed to it. Their main streets in Northampton such as South Street, Locust Street, others that desperately need repaving. So why is a non throughway side street like Warfield with only one pothole being singled out for repaving? Cherry trees live a lot longer than 50 years. So why are these trees being declared near death? And the plan to eliminate the sidewalk on the south and west sides of the street is an accessibility hazard. Please tell the DPW to repave the streets that actually need repaving and leave the Warfield cherry trees alone. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Andrea Munoz uh, Ledo. Hi, my name is Andrea Munoz Ledo and I'm a student at Amherst College, but I enjoy spending a significant amount of time in Northampton during the semester. I'm here to urge you to endorse the Policing Review Commission's final report and support the creation of a new Department of Community Care, defunding the Northampton Police by 50% and reallocating those funds to community-led safety strategies and environmental justice, given that communities who have been negatively impacted by policing also bear the burden of environmental issues. The point is not to negate the positive experiences that people have had with the Northampton Police Department. The point is to address the negative, problematic, and often traumatizing experiences that a large amount of people, notably people of color and other marginalized communities, have had. At no point in this process will the changes proposed take away services that people actually need. In fact, they will enable people who have been harmed and continue to be harmed by the racist status quo to feel safe and supported. There's an urgent need to address public safety in Northampton through solutions that move away from policing. Policing is a major way through which racism is reproduced in everyday American life. Different trainings, community policing, and co-responder programs are ineffective solutions that do not address the root of the problem and do not live up to the demands of the Black Lives Matter movement. Issues caused by the systems of oppression that policing upholds cannot be fixed by expanding the police. We need new strategies based on the vision of those who have it at the hands of police violence. Therefore, any changes must be accountable to communities who have been harmed by police. Um, these community-led solutions include non-coercive, peer-based responses to people in crisis. Also, the responders must be accountable to the communities they serve. The changes must be implemented within the next two years. After all, Black communities have been calling for an end to police violence for over 150 years. These actions simply cannot be delayed any longer. Everyone deserves to be, feel safe. Thank you. Thank you. And Jonathan Vale. Hi, my name is Jonathan Vale, and I'm a student at Amherst College and someone who has many family members who live in Northampton. I'd like to voice my strong support for the creation of a Department of Community Care to take on many of the responsibilities from the Northampton Police Department, and also to divest at least 50% of the budget towards such services. I urge the council members, particularly those who may vote against the creation of such a department, to consider listening to the opinion of both the residents of the area and to the recommendation made by the Police Review Commission that you yourself solicited. I also urge specifically Mayor Narkowitz to move quickly on creating this department as such additions will not be possible once budgets are finalized. I also wanted to address Teresa's comment about defunding the police constituting an act of discrimination, uh, and I urge the council to recognize the irony in that statement. Thank you for listening and I look forward to discussing this further. Thank you. Doug Beatty. Hey, can you hear me? Hello. Hi. Hello. We can hear you. Hey, maybe you can't see me. I'm and we can see you too. And I live uh, in Northampton. I moved here four years ago from New York State, and I'm speaking in support of the Department of Community Care. In my over 40 years as a social worker, I have seen the dissembling of mental health services over the years, taken up by privatization and lack of funding. And what I've seen is that the police department seems to be filling this hole of taking care of mental health situations. And I urge you to look at this situation and support 
the resolution to create the Department of Community Care. I think it's important that peer-led professionals are involved uh, so that the needs of these people are, are greater, greatly met. Um, in addition, I also want to speak out about police being used at traffic stops. Uh, today, I was driving and I saw three signs, police officer ahead. And it seems to me that we should look at this situation as not being necessary. And I also um, support the uh, Gazette resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Liz uh, Gadet. Hi, uh, my name is Liz Gaudet and I live on Warfield Place in Northampton. And um, I just wanted to say that I also support the Gazette resolution as I'm also a subscriber to the newspaper and the Department of Community Care sounds like a great idea. So back, back to my Warfield Place uh, information. I only want the potholes filled on Warfield Place. It's a waste of the money I pay to the city to repave a tiny street like Warfield when so many more heavily trafficked streets need fixing. We love the gardens and the trees on Warfield Place. Why would the city spend thousands of dollars to ruin a beautiful street rather than using that money in an environmentally aware way. Wait until the trees die and then repave the street. We believe Northampton can be a leader in developing and managing its infrastructure in a way that's cognizant of climate change and will help everyone in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Dorothy. Yes, um, Dorothy Baker. I live in Northampton, Ward 4. I want to speak out in favor of the municipal broadband um, um, being installed in our city. It's um, it uses a lot less energy than the 5G cell towers, the small cell towers that um, is, are being rolled out across the country right now. And um, the municipal broadband is faster and more reliable, and it uses a lot less energy than the 5G towers. So it fits in with the climate emergency resolution. Um, it's also, I'd like to support the, uh, the precautionary principle because 5G cell towers have not been proven to be safe to human health or the environment. They can affect, the radiation can affect pollinators also. Um, and having these installed near um, schools and houses, well, if they're installed near a house, they can affect the property values um, and cause them to be lower. Um, also, I support the Gazette workers and thank you very much. Thank you. Next is Pennington Geis. Hi. Hi. I'm also speaking about the community broadband and my message is thank you. Um, I want to thank Gina Louise, I want to thank you for uh, your leadership in putting together this study group that you have with community leaders from near neighboring towns and bringing in experts so that you can ask questions and educate yourselves. I want to thank Councillor Dwight for his impassioned um, and articulate rationale for why he supports this. I want to thank all of you for voting for the first funding of it. I want to thank Mayor Narkowitz for 
the vision he had years ago. I mean, I read on, on the city website some study he had did he had done at the beginning of his tenure as mayor uh, that talked about this. So it's been a long held vision. We're talking basic infrastructure. This is the infrastructure of the future. It's exciting and thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Next is Ryan Cheevers Brown. Uh, hi, everyone. Sorry that my video isn't too good. Um, I'm also here speaking in support of the community broadband. Um, I, I'm really grateful that you and the mayor and several other of our city councilors in Antonio have taken the time to run this study, discuss with the leaders of other cities and towns near us, and really try to do a good job of deciding whether community broadband is a good fit for this town. I've read the mayor's um, attachment to the agenda for tonight when he's planning to announce some new information about the survey, which he said was overwhelmingly positive. Um, due to that recommendation and what he is hopefully going to say later in the meeting, I hope that you all will vote in support of the creation of the municipal light plant and later down the line, vote in support of building a municipal broadband network. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is Jeff Jones. Hello, um, Jeff Jones, um, Woods Road, Ward 6, Northampton. Um, I'm the president of United Food and Commercial Workers Local 1459. I'm also um, the president of the Western Massachusetts Area Labor Federation. I'm here to speak in support of um, the News Guild workers at the Gazette. I'm not gonna repeat what was said earlier, but I think we could all agree that part of a well-functioning democracy is a stable, um, healthy press that probes, asks questions, that has adequate staffing to get the job done. And what we've seen in the last two years is that you can't have that operation um, run exclusively by a bunch of bean counters. Um, now, part of my job at Local 1459 is I bargain contracts and having a two year period to bargain contracts, um, which is ongoing, is really an insult to the process. Now I attended the first um, virtual Gazette get together, which is a great idea. Uh, but when I raised this issue of getting the contract done with the new publisher, um, Sean Palmer, he assured all of us in attendance um, that this was gonna get done, that um, we were all on the same side and it would get done pretty quickly and look forward to having that um, over and done with and moving on. And now uh, recently we find out that <clears throat> they've hired a notorious anti-worker, anti-union law firm to conduct the bargaining. So that's really not getting it done. And I commend the council for taking up this resolution tonight, but the writing is on the wall about what the intentions are uh, toward the workers of the Gazette. And I, I say after this resolution passes in due course, that that's a great step, but the process is not over. And I urge all members of the community to continue to step forward and support these folks, whatever they need because we can't have a vibrant functioning local paper that we can all learn from. And I've been subscribing to the Gazette since the mid 1980s. If, we, if they don't have the resources to do the job and they aren't constantly under fear of retaliation for something they did or didn't do allegedly. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Next is uh, Maya Ho Hossein. 
Hi, uh, my name is Maya Hussain, and I'm a student at Amherst College who spends quite a bit of time in Northampton. Um, and I'm here today to state uh, my strong support for the resolution proposed by uh, Councillor Maiori and Councillor Quinlan. Um, I strongly urge the mayor to establish a new department for community care and fund it by at least $882,000 uh, for the next fiscal year. Uh, I also want to show my strong support for the creation of a department of community care, which is accountable to communities most impacted by, commun uh, by policing and to defund the Northampton police by 50% and most importantly, reallocate those funds to community led safety strategies. Um, I want to address some of the ideas that were said earlier by people who are against this resolution. I think the decidedly false idea that this uh, this specific police department does not perpetuate violence, although completely untrue, is irrelevant to the demands myself and so many others are voicing. The violence is in how police moderate our community through fear and punishment, punishment for being poor, punish, punishment for being not white or otherwise marginalized. Um, this Department of Community Care is a positive movement forward driven by the leadership of people most impacted by policing, specifically poor people and people of color. Um, this is an opportunity to dramatically change the status quo in which municipal government is controlled by a white, wealthy, educated people who make decisions on behalf of everyone else. I think this move could be a really strong move away from paternalism and ensure direct accountability and the elevation of community members who most often go unheard and forgotten. Uh, the Northampton Police Department spends at most 6.7% of its time responding to calls classified as quote unquote violent crime. A 50% call to defund is simply logical at this point since there is evidently no real demonstrated need for this contrite definition of safety. Um, the community is already clearly trying to take care of itself. Um, and the question is, how do we create a way for the community to sustainably take care of itself? I don't see how the answer to that is police reform. Clearly the answer to that is the Center for Community Care. It's far past time to divest from fear, from white supremacy and invest in community care um, to bring more harmony, cooperation and strength to a community that has a chance to forge a new future that includes us all. Um, this is a really great opportunity to disrupt the racist status quo and history. We'll thank all of you for it. Uh, I also want to express my support for um, the um, Ham uh, Hampshire Gazette uh, reporters. I think that um, their the fair contract is is something that we should all be in support of, and also want to support the um, the protection of the cherry trees. Thank you. Thank you. Next is David Chris. Hi, um, my name is David Chris. I live in Ward 3 in Northampton. I've been a resident of the city for about seven years now. Um, and I just wanted to come out to this meeting in support of the resolution for the Department of Community Care. Um, I think it's time that we build a town and a society at large that moves away from violence and punishment and coercion of our people. And we actually take care of our citizens of our town and take care of our people. When I think about how much money the Northampton PD spends each year, it honestly kind of makes me upset because I think there's better allocations of those funds when we have so many housing insecure people, people struggling to pay rent, people struggling to eat, struggling to pay their bills, and that money can just go further than just having people with guns and drones flying around. Uh, I would also like to say I stand with the Gazette workers and their demands for a better contract and negotiations. Um, and in conclusion, have more trees, less cops. Thank you. Thank you. Adam Gibbs. Hello, I'm a student from Amherst College. And as other students have said, I spent a lot of time in Northampton and enjoy spending my time there. And I'm here to support the resolution from the Police um, Commission Review Board to cut um, the Northampton Police Department's budget by 50% and reallocate those funds to the Department of Community Care and also reallocate the funds that were taken from last fiscal year. And I hope that this upcoming budget will reflect those. And I wanna reiterate the harm that um, policing has done historically and that, a, that the duties of police don't need to be there and they can be in a Department of Community Care and would be done much better. A lot of harm is done by police and as someone who grew up in a family that lived paycheck to paycheck, I like 
something as small, which really isn't that small as a ticket, can affect people and affect the community so greatly. Um, my my own my mom almost got like a police officer threatened to arrest her because she had a out of date registration on her car. And it's things like this to the community. And this is coming from a white person. So I can only imagine what those um, people of color can uh, experience and the kind of fear that comes into it. The pol policing is purely uh, a system of fear that is not necessary. And um, I urge the town of Northampton to defund um, the police and move those into the Department of Community Care um, and support the people in the community and not those who provide harm to the community. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Mimi Odgers. Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, so Mimi Odgers, I'm from Ward 6, um, also work at Amherst College and just very proud of our students who have been speaking tonight. Um, we moved to Western Massachusetts over 20 years ago for my husband's work with little knowledge of the area. We couldn't have fallen into a better area and believe ourselves to be fortunate to have lived and raised our children here amongst our neighbors and their progressive values. And that's why we need to embrace our true progressive and ab abolitionist roots. And as such, I'm here to state my strong support for the resolution proposed by Council Rachel Maori and Councilor Michael Quinlan, which resolves that the City Council supports the recommendations in the Policing Review Commission's final report. The amount cut from the police budget last year was $882,602 and it was never reallocated. I strongly support the recommendations of the Policing Review Commission's final report to create a new Department of Community Care, which is accountable to communities most impacted by policing. We need to reimagine public safety and community care where armed response responders are no longer needed and in their place we have thriving programs and services that support our community members most at risk. As someone else mentioned, Chelsea Klein had a great article this week in the Gazette and to sum it up, those of us who identify as white all too easily fall back into patterns where the urgency for change becomes less important. We need to remain vigilant. Black communities have been calling for an end to police violence for over 150 years. This is not new. White leaders and white citizens have delayed taking action and ultimately offer a weak solutions such as reforms or more studies. Mr. Mayor, I specifically implore you to make creating the Department of Community Care your number one priority before you leave office. City Council members, I urge you to encourage the mayor to use that $800, 800 to $600 to fund this new department this year and to move responsibilities out of the police department within two years, such as wellness checks, suspicious persons calls, and nonviolent public assembly, as well as others recommended in the Policing Review Commission. Um, the Northampton Police Department and their supporters may want to sit there and worry that cutting the budget will place us at risk. However, they spend at most 6.7% of their time responding to calls classified as relating to violent crime. The average time that police spend responding to what is classified as violent crime nationally is 1.4%. A 50% call to defund the police and reallocate the money to better community-led safety initiatives would not affect any of the NPD's work related to what is considered violent crime. A 50% reallocation of the police budget is in line with what the recommendations of the Policing Review Commission's report to transfer responsibilities, which are clearly better suited to people not trained as part of policing. We don't need more committees or more data. Procrastination on this effort is a thievery of time against people who have been fighting and pleading for change for 150 years. Across the country, other communities are shifting from containment punishment models to service and support models. Now is the time for Northampton to reflect its progressive values and to join them to be a beacon of hope and change. I just hope that you will all support this. I don't know how much time I have left, but in that time, I just wanna say, that if we were actually in the city, we would have to, uh, city council president, sign up ahead of time, <laughs> in which case um, you, I'm afraid how long this meeting is gonna go tonight on your behalf and on everyone else's behalf, because in the past you have to actually sign up and by seven o'clock or 7.15, those who had joined would only be allowed to speak. So God bless all of you. Thank you. Next is Claire O'Connor. Hi, um, my name is Claire O'Connor. Um, I use they, them, or she, her pronouns, and I'm a junior at Smith College. Um, I'm here today to voice my support for the resolution proposed by Councilors Maori and Quinlan, which acknowledges the findings and recommendations of the Northampton Policing Reviews Commission 
Commission's final report and urges the mayor to establish a new Department of Community Care led by those most impacted by policing this fiscal year. Last summer, when Mayor Narkowitz and the Northampton City Council commissioned the Northampton Policing Review, the city of Northampton took, step, took a step towards addressing the negative impact of policing on communities of color. If the Northampton City Council does not follow through with this commitment, what does that say about our community? What was the point of establishing a policing review commission if you did not intend to follow their recommendations? Um, I believe it would be disrespectful to the people who worked so hard on the policing review commission to ignore their recommendations. Um, and therefore, um, I, I am in support of the creation of a department of community care. Um, I would also like to echo the fact that the um, Northampton Police Department spends at most 6.7% of its time responding to calls classified as relating to violent crime. And there is really no reason for a police officer to have to respond to situations that could be handled so much better by a social worker or another community-led um, safety um, response. Um, thank you. Thank you. Next is uh, Luce or Luce uh, Brandt. Hi, um, my name is Luce Brandt. I'm a South Hadley resident and student, and I spend a, lot, spend a lot of time in Northampton. It's a community I care a lot about, and I could see myself living there down the road, so I want to make sure it's a safe um, place. I'm here tonight in strong support of creating a Department of Community Care, which is accountable to the communities most impacted by policing, and to defund the Northampton Police by 50% and reallocate these funds to community-led safety strategies. Um, these funds must sum to at least 882,602, since that was what was cut last year, but not reallocated. The mayor has had a year since the uprising last summer and it's time to act. Considering the average time that police spend responding to what is classified as violent crime nationally is one to 4%, a 50% call to defund the police and reallocate the money to a better community-led safety initiatives would not affect what is considered violent crime. Um, I am an environmental studies major and the climate crisis and an equitable transition are something I'm very concerned about. As we transition to renewables, um, we must not leave any communities behind. This is our chance to dismantle systemic racism, starting by defunding the police and reallocating those funds into community support. So in conclusion, I strongly support the creation of a new department of community care this fiscal year and urge city councilors to use their influence to make this happen. Um, I also support the Gazette resolution and um, saving the cherry trees. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Next is Lee Feldshare. Hi, my name is Lee Felcher from Oak Street in Florence. Tonight, City Council is considering a municipal light plant in support of a high-speed municipal network in Northampton. I'm speaking in support of such a network. First, I'd like to thank the mayor and his staff for their leadership on this project. I'd also like to thank City Council for their support of this idea in the past and uh, for Council Leader Shiara for, for helping organize a forum recently on the topic. Here are just a few of the ways I believe a municipal network would benefit the businesses and residents of Northampton. Some of these ideas were presented in more detail in a Gazette article April 28th, so you can look there, um, or on northamptonma.net website. Uh, also more details there. A quick aside, I'm thankful for the Gazette, and I'd also like to encourage the council in their action in support of the Gazette this evening back to a municipal network. Uh, it would provide competition because we effectively have a monopoly now. It would bring higher speeds like they have in South Hadley, Leverett and Westfield where they have built municipal networks already. It would create lower prices thanks to the competition. It would provide better customer service because competition would create the need to maintain high customer satisfaction in order ret to retain customers. It would attract new businesses to Northampton and keep existing businesses from leaving. 
by keeping up with the other local communities that are either investigating, building, or have already completed municipal networks. It, would, it could assure net neutrality. The city could require that any company doing business over the municipal network adhere to net neutrality rules or lose the privilege. Without a municipal network, the FCC would be the only regulating authority over private providers. And in Washington, we've seen how different administrations can either support or hollow out the net neutrality rules. A municipal network could similarly ensure privacy of our data. It could also support community media like Northampton Open Media by providing additional funding. It could assure social justice by providing high-speed internet access for all citizens, regardless of ability to pay. It could be used to create a municipal disaster monitoring and response system. It could be used to enhance the communication system for emergency responders. To achieve these improvements and more, I believe it's time for Northampton to have a municipal network. Thank you for the opportunity to address the council. Thank you. Next is uh, Kieran Slattery. Hi, thanks. My name is Kieran Slattery. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm a home homeowner in Ward 1 in Northampton. I'm also a teacher in the Northampton Public School District, so I'm obviously very committed <laughs> to this city. Um, I'm in appreciation and strong support of the resolution proposed by Councilors Mayori and Quinlan, which resolves that the City Council support the recommendations in the Policing Review Commission's final report and urge the mayor to establish um, a new Department of Community Care in um, this fiscal year and fund it by, as others have noted, at least 80, uh, 888 sorry, <laughs> it's been a long day, uh, $882,602, which happens to be how much was cut from the police budget last year, but hasn't yet been reallocated. Um, city councilors and mayor, I urge you to create a new department of community care, which is accountable to the communities most impacted by policing um, to defund the Northampton Police Department by 50% and to reallocate those funds to community led safety strategies for fiscal year 2022. Um, in my fifth grade class, we speak all the time about power. Um, so 10 and 11 year old students um, are, you know, have a really deep understanding that folks who are awarded the most power in our society are primarily in the dominant culture. Um, and they're also really very aware that racism is perpetuated by institutions. So healthcare, the prison industrial system and the police force. They can explain to you how black and brown people are treated differently by people in power, especially when it comes to the police. We need to defund the Northampton police by 50% and reallocate the funds to community led safety strategies. So responsibilities like wellness checks and nonviolent public assembly and public disturbances should be moved out of the police department and into other entities like a department of community care. The most effective and reliable way to reduce racist policing is to reduce the contact that folks have with police. And black and brown folks in our community are being disproportionately affected by excessive policing. Again, please support counselors, Councilor Mayori and Quinlan's resolutions to and to fund the police by 50% and create a department of community care. Um, also, as a side note, as a former journalist, I support the Gazette resolution and the Gazette workers. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Next is Taylor. Hi, my name is Ace Taylor. I'm a homeowner in Ward 3. I'd like to support, I'd like to speak in support of three different resolutions. I'm going to try and keep my comments to things that haven't already been said. Uh, first, I'm in strong support of the resolution in support of the workers of the Hampshire Gazette uh, because of the criticalness of local news and of the bad faith in which the current owners are acting. Um, second, I'd like to speak in strong support of uh, authorizing the acquisition and establishment of a municipal light plant as that will be critical to municipal internet. Given how much the internet needs to be a public utility and needs to be available to all, I strongly encourage the council to hold a second reading of this tonight uh, in order to pass it sooner and to get this to people sooner. Uh, internet is necessary to attend these meetings right now and I can only think of the people who are missing out because of the lack of access right now. 
Um, finally, I'd like to strongly support the resolution in support of the recommendations of the Northampton Policing Review Commission uh, on the grounds that a lot of people worked very, very hard and brought in expertise in how to make Northampton a better, safer place. If you want to, for a moment, to utterly ignore all of the facts and evidence about policing as a violent institution and examples of racism and discrimination within the Northampton police specifically, you can think of police as very specialty trained people. Their training is primarily in violence, not unlike soldiers. They are trained to shoot, they are trained to tackle people, they are trained to meet violence with violence. That specialty training should not be applied in places where it is inappropriate. One would not ask a one would not ask a doctor to change a tire. One would not ask a mechanic to perform surgery. Some skills can cross apply a little bit, but it is a gross misapplication to use someone with that training for tasks that are inappropriate to that training. Defunding the police will cause them to have to cut back on a lot of things they can do. Frankly, I think this is a good thing. I think those funds could be better applied to having specialists to do things like, for example, make house calls. Uh, <clears throat> and as mentioned by a number of other people uh, within this call tonight. Uh, thank you and thank you to the city council for listening to all of us tonight. It's gonna be a long one. Good luck. Thank you. Next, oops, hold on, stop that. Next is Marty Nathan. See it, Marty? You're still muted. Unmute, got it. Um, hi, I'm Marty Nathan, 24 Massasoit Street. Uh, Ward 2, I'm here to talk very briefly about three very important things. First is the Gazette and uh, the Hampshire, uh, the Pioneer Valley News Guild. I am a subscriber and I'm also a volunteer columnist for the Gazette. Workers' rights are a community matter. It, they are a, an essential part of our community in general, and we must stand with them and support them if our community is to be whole. Secondly, the Gazette and media, community media is a community matter. It is the means of knowing each other and understanding our common needs, joys, and pain. The Gazette is a jewel with excellent reporters and editors that bring the paper award after award in this state and in New England. In great part, it is what it is because of its hardworking and talented staff. They are suffering cutbacks and layoffs and need to be able to negotiate for their security, working conditions, a living wage and benefits. Um, I advocate in support of the union demands that the Gazette recognize and negotiate with their union in good faith and not drag their feet. I also support the resolution in support of the Northampton Policing Review Commission and its recommendations to create a Department of Community Care. As a family physician involved for most of my life in the care of uh, powerless people in our country, they are poorly served by police with guns. When I need to call somebody to do a wellness check. That is the tip of the iceberg. We need to address this conflict in roles in ways that are useful and kind to our whole community. Finally, the Warfield cherry trees. They have great community value and we can't overlook that. They give beauty and joy to folks all around the neighborhood but particularly to the people on Warfield. This is real value. I ask the DPW and the city to negotiate in good faith with the Warfield residents and I thank you. And I agree, this is gonna be a long night. Thank you, Marty. 
Next is Jasper. Hold on a sec. Jasper. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, I live in Ward 3, and I've been a Northampton resident for about three years, um, but I've been coming here as a visitor since I was a child. Um, I want to state my support for the resolution proposed by Councillor Maiori and Councillor Quinlan, which resolves that the City Council support the recommendations in the Policing Review Commission's final report. I want to thank you for your efforts in proposing this. I personally or urge and also want all of our city councilors to urge the mayor to establish a new department of community care this upcoming fiscal year and fund it by the roughly $880,000 that was cut from the police budget last year, but never reallocated. I'm in immense support of Northampton creating this department, which would be accountable to all those in our community who are most impacted by policing. I also want the Northampton Police Department budget to be cut by 50% which will be allocated to community-led safety strategies like this department. These actions are urgent because we need someone to call when we or those close to us are in need of support. The reality is that we cannot rely on the police to meet our needs and we cannot call them because they're incapable of offering the services that our community needs and also threaten the safety of many of our community members. Those of us who understand the threat that they pose are tired of grasping for straws to support those in our community who need it the most. We, know we need an alternative and it's sickening that the money is being wasted instead of going towards offering resources that are feasible and necessary. Please use your influence to raise our voices. We need to do everything you can to make this happen for our community's sake. Those of us that are aware of the impact of the police on the most marginal, marginalized folks in our community know that time is of the essence on this issue. And, I'm hope and I hope you're feeling open to the same sense of urgency that I do. Um, now is the time to take the necessary action of cutting the police budget by 50% and urging the reallocation of those funds toward the Department of Community Care. Thank you. Thank you. And next is Clara Wagner. Um, yeah, thanks y'all for being here. Um, my name is Clara Wagner. I use they, them, and she, her pronouns. Um, I honestly don't know what ward I am. I'm around Grant Ave. Um, I live in Northampton. I go to school in Northampton. I also work in Northampton. I've been here for a while. Um, and I'm speaking tonight to support the resolution, um, proposing the Department of Community Care, um, it's funding by at least the 88, um, 880,000, um, and also the reduction of the police budget by at least 50%. I really appreciate the counselors that have been fighting to put that through. Um, it doesn't go unnoticed and it's appreciated. Um, there are people keeping track, right, of, of who's putting in that work. I mean, it means a lot. Um, I think it's really time that Northampton take some bolder steps in investing in change um, and innovation in the future. And I think it's becoming, in, from my perspective, like abundantly clear that the police are not the future. That's not the direction that we're headed in or that we need to head in. Um, we're all aware of like the daily violence perpetrated against people of color and other marginalized communities. And in Northampton, like we have this opportunity to create a system that can at least start us moving away from that violence. Um, and we can't do that with the police. We can't do that with community policing. We can't do that with trainings. Like I firmly believe that the, the way to do that is, um, is by like community care um, and right, like creating solutions that are actually accountable to the communities that keep, um, that keep suffering under our existing systems. Um, I'm a social worker. Um, I work at a residential program for moms diagnosed with substance use disorders. Um, and from that, I've learned many things. Um, some of which are that like social workers are not the solution. Um, I love being a social worker. I like social workers, but we are not the replacement. Um, I also know that like, as someone who lives in like a residential program where we, you know, deal with substance use, violence, theft, conflict, et cetera. Um, one, that can be managed without the police. Um, and it's actually best managed when it's peer-led. Um, I've seen peers de-escalate 
countless situations um, that I would not have trusted with many professionals and especially not the police. Um, and I think like thinking about how strong that peer support can be when it actually is like resourced and supported feels really powerful and exciting actually to think about um, on a personal level, um, police do not make me feel safe. Um, the people I work with, police do not make them feel safe. My loved ones, please do not make them feel safe. Like when I need help, I reach out to my community. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Ryan Wadsworth. Um, wait. Oh, wait, Ryan, I see you in two places. And one doesn't have a microphone. Hold on, let's try this one. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi, sorry about that. I was on my phone for a little while. Now I'm Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your, your stamina. Um, okay, yeah, Ryan Wadsworth. Uh, I'm a father of two. I'm a math teacher. I live in Ward 3. I'm also a proud member of Northampton Abolition Now, a community organization here in town. And I'm here tonight to urge the council and specifically my, my representative, um, Mr. Nash, to pass resolution R21.267, which urges the, ma the mayor to support the recommendations contained in the, in the PRC's final report. So I've got three arguments. Um, first and foremost, foremost is that defunding the police is a racial justice issue. Uh, the movement for black lives has made abundantly clear that the only way to take effective action against the racism that has been institutionalized for generations within this country's police departments and prisons is to defund these institutions. We have to defund the MPD by at least 50%. So following the uprisings last summer, this is a historic moment and an opportunity. And I wanna make the case that if Northampton does not act boldly taking clear steps to stop racist violence by reducing the scope of policing, then not only will we be complicit with ongoing daily harm, but we also will be judged harshly by generations that come. So we now celebrate 19th century abolitionists and consider chattel slavery unthinkable. And we have to, in that context, see that today, the, it is the system of racist mass incarceration that is the modern day, uh, the modern day Jim Crow. So this is the work that we have. Um, so I want to say as well, just like speaking for myself, um, you know, I, just like many of you who hold um, positions of power here in Northampton, am white. And I feel just a toxic like disconnection with my own white forebearers, complicity with, with racist violence. Um, I want to make this point that I feel like racism is like a slow spiritual death. And so as a father and a teacher, I think a lot about my legacy. I think about, and I imagine that the elected officials, as elected officials, you do the same. So I want my grandchildren to be proud to be descended from me. Um, and I think that, uh, that that means seeing ourselves in historical context that spans generations. And so addressing centuries old racism means taking really bold action now. So that's my first point about racism. Second point, uh, and that is that the, the Policing Review Commission was an exhaustive effort. It was made with countless meetings and vol volunteer hours. Um, bold action, bold, real bold action would have, as taken by many other cities, would have been to just make a significant cut to the NB, NB, NPD budget last round. We already knew a lot of what the PRC final report contains. We knew that armed agents are not a catch-all solution. Uh, so continued stalling tactics, or worse, failing to even follow the commission's recommendations would be a slap in the face to Northampton civil society, and it would come at a high political cost. So this brings me to my third my third and final point. All right, we'll go for two. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Thank you. Um, next is Mrs. What's it? I really hope that's your real name. It's not. Oh, well. <laughs> Could you tell us your real name, please? Yeah, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um, I'm Meg Robbins. I live at 33 Aldrich Street and Ward 1. And um, I want to make sure that I support the commission's report and as well as the Gazette workers. But my primary appearance tonight is on behalf of trees and darkness 
and quiet and peaceful neighborhoods. Um, what's happened to our neighbors across the street on Warfield Place where they had notices taped to their front doors to say we're chopping down your cherry trees and we're digging up your pavement um, is pretty terrible. It's a, kind of a very sad thing to have happen in a community where we're pretty used to being consulted on major changes and we really prize our neighborhoods and we people come here because they love walking around our neighborhoods. They love enjoying the trees. I've known those trees since they were young. I've been here for that many years, almost half a century. And <clears throat> given care and love, I think they've got as much time left as I do and um, hopefully, and new ones can have time to grow up behind them. But I'm really upset primarily with how the city is making decisions these days, particularly the Department of Public Works, that any of these major decisions that impact the quality of life in wards and in neighborhoods seem to be, we have the money, so let's go spend it. What are we gonna do next? We're gonna to talk to each other and then we're gonna go do it. And we're gonna do our best to make sure that it's too late for anybody in a neighborhood to come back and say, wait a minute, wait, what about us? And <clears throat> we had the same experience with a traffic light that is about to be erected apparently on Finn Street and State Street. Um, I've become an expert on traffic lights through the last gasp about how you do traffic calming. And apparently what happened with that was the King Street reconstruction had some extra bucks. So there was a decision made within the city without consulting anybody else that they'd stick a traffic light on State Street so that you can come roaring around the corner on Prospect, come down what is already a 20 mile an hour zone, slam your brakes on for a red light, accelerate, slam your brakes on for a red light a few yards later and then exit out onto King Street. There are better ideas. Um, we can make neighborhoods that are green. We can make neighborhoods that are quiet. We can make neighborhoods that are dark. But what the city is missing at this point is a protocol and a process that says, we've got a problem, let's solve it together. We have a lot of really intelligent expert people in this city who have lots of opinions and lots of feedback as we've heard tonight, as far as the police commission, um, as we heard tonight, as far as Gazette workers, which we prize um, the city has a lot of work to do in order to be able to recreate an atmosphere that makes residents here feel as though they are a voice, they're included in decision-making, and that ultimately it's a lot easier in the long run to have a decision that's made collaboratively than to have people going, oh my God, what's happening next? And those are my words for tonight. Thanks for hearing me. And thanks very much for city councilors and everybody who's had to sit up late listening to everything else. Cheers. Thank you. Um, okay, Caitlin, I know that you are struggling to raise your hand. So hold on, I'm going to go to you. Here you go. Caitlin Freed. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Caitlin Freed. Uh, and I live in Northampton. Um, I'm here to support the Gazette workers and the Pioneer Valley News Guild. Uh, Newspapers of New England has made it clear that they want the power to outsource its workers. Um, which is why we need jurisdiction protections for the local workers that give you your local paper. Um, keep local news local, local. And thank you so much for listening to me today. Thank you. Okay. Next is Olivia Geiger. Hi there. Thanks so much. Um, as you said, my name is Olivia Giger. I'm a senior at Amherst College and a student of environmental studies and environmental justice here. Um, and I'm here today because of that. I care deeply, deeply about the Valley and the environment in Amherst and Northampton. And I believe that uh, placing reform towards eventual abolition is crucial to the project of decarbonizing that's necessary to meet our climate emergency and to building a just livable future for everyone. Given that, I want to voice my strong support of the resolution proposed by councillors Maori and Quinlan, which urges the mayor to establish a new department of community care. I hope that the department um, of community care will be accountable to the communities of color who have been most impacted and harmed by policing. Um, with that, I also want to voice my support for defunding the Northampton police by 50% and to reallocate those funds to the community-led safety strategies. Um, as a young person about to graduate, from college, I've been thinking a lot to, to try to envision what the near future holds, both for myself, but also for the community surrounding me. 
Um, with this community care department, we hold the opportunity to lay the foundation for a more just and less racist community. And by defunding the police, we have the means and the resources to put money into the kind of governance through care and empathy that will lead the way to climate justice and racial justice. So please support these two proposals. Uh, I, with the time remaining, I'd also just like to quickly voice my support for the Gazette workers as well. Um, I just retired from my tenure as editor in chief of the Amherst student newspaper here. And the reporting of the Gazette was so, so essential for the work that we did writing for and reporting on our own community. Uh, it's totally invaluable to the student journalism here um, and just really a really strong important part of the work that we did. So I please encourage you to also support the asks of the Gazette workers as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Rebecca Novick. Hello, um, I'm Rebecca Novick. I'm a senior at Amherst College. I'm here today because as someone who spends a lot of time in Northampton and who cares deeply about this community, I wanna vocalize my strong support for the resolution proposed by counselors Maori and Quinlan. Northampton needs to create the Department of Community Care this fiscal year with a budget of at least $882,602 for next year. This department must be accountable to communities most impacted by policing, especially communities of color. I also wanna voice my support for defunding by 50% and for reallocating these funds to community-led safety strategies. Any proposed reforms that involve or expand policing are not actually solutions and only perpetuate dangerous problems we see with policing today. As a young person and a student of environmental studies, I understand just how imperative it is that we address the climate crisis from a holistic interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary approach, which includes abolishing police, establishing the community care department and ensuring accountability to communities most harmed by policing are opportunities to lay the foundation for a more just, less racist and overall more sustainable community. By defunding the Northampton police, we will have the means and resources to invest in governance that works for everyone. So please support this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. I just got a notice that the timer we are trying, trying out, the public comment has uh, timed out on that timer and it no longer is working. Um, so I'm going back to the previous timer I used to use, which I understand is harder to hear, but um, that's what we got. Okay, uh, Rebecca Novick. Hi, sorry, I oh, guess I no nope. just gone, but I can that was, go again. No, nope, that was on me. Apologies. Apologies. Okay. <laughs> okay, Lemmy is next. Hi, I'm Lemmy, I live in Ward 1. Um, I just wanted to uh, give public comment in support of um, the resolution that supports the Police Review Commission report. Um, I think that it is really important um, given last year, uh, the mayor what was reported in the Gazette that he felt like it was the 11th hour that the council brought stuff up about policing. And I think it's important to be proactive as soon as possible to show support for the, uh, uh, for the residents that served on the police review commission. Um, I know I've heard a lot of people, you know, I've heard a couple of people here say tonight um, that the police were not involved enough in the uh, commission's process. And to that, I just wanna sort of really challenge us to believe why the police um, need to be involved in that process. I think it's undermining of all the hard work that the commissioners did and all the expertise they brought to the table. Um, and I think um, if you look at almost every other commission or city process, like the, the chief, like for example, the resilience hub, the chief sat on the commission of the resilience hub and weighed in a lot. So um, they have have a lot of opportunities to weigh in on the city. And I don't think um, if we're imagining new possibilities. Um, we need to hear a lot from the police. Um, and to the point, um, 
yeah, so I just think now is not the time um, to try to be like overly tactful or try to preserve some sort of business casual relationship with the mayor. I think now um, we really need to push uh, to, and I know there's a lot of precedent for like waiting for the mayor to present his budget and things like that, but I think this is an issue that the city um, has been working on all year, and I would really hope that the council will take an opportunity to be proactive in weighing in and giving recommendations and um, to the mayor on creating a new department of community care um, to support accountable solutions to public safety, um, including um, a, de a department and peer led solutions rather than um, any other sort of programs because I think if there's any programs that add or, or keep the police budget the same we're not doing the undertaking that um, the police review commission really wanted to and uh, to waste those residents time is really concerning. Um, not only just because it wouldn't be following the recommendations that they work so hard to make but um, if we have commissions where we enlist residents to do as much work as they did um, and throw that work away only to not act in good faith on their recommendations, um, I think that would just be harmful to the city overall. Thanks. Thank you. Next is Dan Kennedy. Hi, everybody. Um... So thank you for your time. Uh, like others have said, this looks like it's gonna be a long night. <laughs> um, so yay for that adventure. Uh, I'm here to support a number of things, including the resolution to support the Gazette workers as they continue to report on the city and our communities that are key to that. Um, and I also support the creation of municipal options for internet access. That's basically a human right at this point um, in every way, shape and form, especially during the pandemic. Uh, but mostly I'm here to speak as a resident uh, of Northampton that's concerned with policing and really concerned with public safety. As so many others have already said, I support um, the resolution being discussed tonight, um, which includes the language, ideas, and principles of the Policing Review Commission report. Uh, I will try to keep this brief, um, but Northampton needs a well-funded Department of Community Care so they can begin to respond to crises and shift responsibilities away from police as soon as possible. This is something that dozens of cities have across the US have done, every time responsibilities are taken away from police, they result in better outcomes for all individuals concerned. New York, the latest city to remove police from all mental health calls and replace them with social workers and EMS responders only took six months to realize how effective that was. Um, after their pilot, they decided to expand to the entire city. Uh, the same efficacy uh, for alternate um, Alternative responders was seen in Dallas in 2019, and the list goes on. This is nothing uh, new or exciting. Um, well-being checks, mental health calls, uh, those are all the first step, but there's even more responsibilities such as traffic stops or traffic enforcement in general that are currently held within the police department that could be and should be done by well-trained unarmed responders. Keep in mind that it's estimated about 50% of the police killings of civilians begin as a traffic stop. Um, the issue at the center of this is not police officers or police departments, but policing as a model uh, for responses rather than provide solutions and supports, it only penalizes. It doesn't prevent further crime. It doesn't prevent future crime. It doesn't protect all citizens equally. We need evidence-based responses to community needs, which is community-led and community, I'm sorry, peer-led peer -led response. We need inter new intervention models as soon as possible. When funds are redirected from policing models to other models of inter intervention, to investment in community, crime goes down, arrests go down, and positive outcomes go up. I know this is nothing new, and city, le city leadership already knows and has started the process of this challenging work. And the work is only gonna get harder um, before it gets easier. And I'm here to remind you all that we're here to support you through this process of restructuring our responses to crises and the needs of the residents for equitable access to safety. Please continue this work, continue to build a Northampton that responds to community needs, and please continue to build a community for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Next is, uh, is me. Yep, that's me. Hey. Hi. I'm uh, my name is Mary and uh, I am a, I've been a resident of Northampton for 35 years, pay taxes here and I would like to speak. It can can you hear me? Oh yes. Oh, okay. yeah. I would like to uh, speak in support of our the Northampton Police Department. Um, 
I do not support the, uh, the um, Department of Community Care. I feel like it is an extra layer of bureaucracy that I don't need to, that I would rather not have to pay for. Um, I think that um, I sat in on a lot of the, uh, the NPRC meetings and found them largely negative toward the police. And, uh, and very anti Northampton PD as have many, many, many of the uh, participants in this, this um, uh, discussion have been. Um, I think a simpler approach, which many po of police departments both in the area and throughout the country have, um, have taken, they, they've um, embedded social workers in the department who would go as a ride along on uh, calls rather than have a whole nother department. Um, to send social workers out on domestic violence or um, mental health calls to me seems dangerous and asking for trouble. Um, I think that the police departments who have cut their budgets, especially as drastically as, as this, the, the, um, the, the people on this forum have have asked for um, have seen crime spikes in their area. So I think that our police department should be allocated more mo money, not less. Um, I, I also noticed that many of the people who called in to support the Department of Community Care and had seemed to have access to grind and don't live in Northampton. Um, so, I just want to, I, I, I fear that our police department will be so weakened that our safety will be compromised. I think that that could very easily happen. And uh, having lived here for 35 years in this, in this city, and um, I've just seen a, a decline that I wouldn't want to see continue. Uh, so with that, I thank you all for listening. Thank you. Next is Melanie McNeil. Hi, um, my name is Melanie. Uh, I've been living in Northampton for over eight years. Um, we moved here after living in Springfield for a really long time and being victims of many crimes while living in Springfield. So we came to Northampton because we wanted to live in a community that was diverse, but also had low crime. Um, I'm really disturbed by the thought of um, defunding the police. Um, and I don't understand where this is really coming from. I, am, I have children of color and my children do not fear the police. We were actually disappointed when they ended the High Five Friday. Um, I don't teach my children to fear the police. I teach them to respect them. Um, I'm a mental health clinician. Um, I do not work in Northampton, but I have dealt with crisis. I think if we're thinking about funding more mental health programs, then we have to think about maybe funding crisis programs which we already have in place to help people who are in crisis with mental health issues. Um, crisis, unfortunately, is funded through the state level with insurance companies. And I think that people are not understanding where the money comes from. And maybe a better understanding that will help people understand how that program currently works. Um, maybe expanding the crisis program would help the community. Um, so I'm not, I'm not understanding, and I, I appreciate and respect everybody's opinion and perspectives, but I think we need, to, um, we need to react with common sense and with facts instead of with emotions. And, you know, a Gallup poll that was posted in the Washington Post of over 36,000 people found that actually 80, percent of African-Americans living in our country did not want to defund the police, with even a good percentage of them wanting to actually give the police more funding. And research shows that when you do defund the police, crime rises. And I don't think that we want to see crime rise in this area, which 
is much, much safer than areas like Springfield or Holyoke, which I lived in Springfield for 20 years and the, the crime there has, has risen and it's terrible. And maybe giving the police more training would be better. And for a wellness check, I'm not against having a social worker accompany a police officer for that. I have a family member who lives in Northampton, who's been here for quite a long time, who has some severe mental health issues, and we have had to request wellness checks for them. So um, we've never had a problem with the police, but I, I wouldn't be opposed to having a social worker accompany them. But, and I appreciate the perspective of people who visit the town, but they don't live here. And um, I think that this should only be about people who do live here. And maybe we should put it to a vote for the people who do live here. That's, Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Next is uh, Jenna Kotlarenko. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Oh, we can't hear you, but you're not muted. Nope, still nothing. How about now? Yep, you got it. Okay, thanks. Um, sorry about that. Okay. Um, so hi, <laughs> I'm Jenna. Um, my use she, her pronouns, and I'm from Turner's Falls. Um, this is actually my first city council meeting, um, that I've gone to, let alone spoken at. So I apologize if I'm a little nervous. Um, even though I live in Turner's, I go to Northampton often and I have for, um, quite a few years now I've worked there. I care deeply about the community. Um, I personally don't think that you have to live there to care about what's going on in the community and want what's best for it. Um, that's just my opinion though. Um, Northampton is actually one of the towns that made me want to live in Western Mass in the first place. Um, I'm here to urge the city council and Mayor Narkowitz to support the police review commission to defund the Northampton Police Department by 50% and reallocate those funds to creating a department of community care run by people who have been impacted by policing. Um, I'm a mental health care worker. I work with children and families, many of which have been located in Northampton over the years. And I can tell you that police are the absolute last call that many of the families want to make when they or their children are in crisis. We have families straight up refuse to put it on their safety plans because police are not safe for them. That's the reality. Rather than continuing to invest in restructuring and retraining and readjusting the police department, I think it's time that we acknowledge the truth that the NPD is not working. It's not safe for many of our community members. Um, we need to invest in the safety of all of our community members and invest in a department of community care that's accountable to people who have been impacted by policing. People who have experience with crisis or mental health struggles who have been trained to respond with compassion and care rather than the force and coercion that they are currently met with, not just by the police department, but by social workers as well. I think that's a really important distinction. Um, at least 20 other cities have implemented programs like this. Uh, the one that I hear most often is the CAHOOTS program out of um, Eugene, Oregon, which has been running for I think something like 30 years very successfully. It can be done and it is being done. I was drawn to Northampton because of what I believed was a progressive mindset, but I'm afraid that we're really behind the curve on this one. And I implore all of you to follow the Policing Review Commission's suggestions and divest from the Northampton Police Department and invest in Northampton and our community. Um, and I also just wanna add that I strongly support the um, Gazette resolution as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Rye. Hello. Uh, Mayor Narkowitz and members of the city council. My name is Rye Buckley and I live in Ward 3 of Northampton, which is represented by Councillor Jim Nash. I've heard the mayor and many councillors, including Councillor Nash, speak in support and with thanks to members of the Policing Review Commission 
The resolution tonight proposed by Councilor Maiori and Councilor Quinlan is an opportunity to begin taking tangible action in support of the commissioners, their work, and their recommendations to create safety for all members of our community. I have been very impressed and inspired by the comments of many members of our community who have spoken tonight in favor of creating a new department of community care, which is designed by, led by, and accountable to folks most impacted by policing, and also reducing the police budget by 50% and investing that money into the new department, along with the money cut last spring, which was never reallocated. They have articulated they have articulately outlined the numerous ways in which the creation of this department is the right choice for our community. I would like to particularly uplift the comments of Talo, who described the ways in which police officers are trained with tools of violence and harm. Stops, fines, arrests, and other infractions given out by police are harmful. Additionally, the tools police are given to serve these harms, such as physical restraint, pepper spray, tasers, and guns are harmful. We are told police are agents of care and safety Yet the work we ask police officers to perform is labor of harm. This is messed up. Instead, we should be creating and funding peer-led services to the Department of Community Care, which can create safety through labor of care. Mayor, counselors, please act to create and fund this department in the ways recommended by the Policing Review Commission. Additionally, I would like to voice my support for the resolution in support of the workers of the Hampshire Gazette. Additionally, again, I would like to remind the counselors that all individuals who come to Northampton, regardless of whether they live here, are policed by the NPD. And the findings of the Police and Review Commission actually found that folks living outside of Northampton have more interactions with the NPD. For this reason, I believe everyone who is part of the Northampton community's voice and opinions matter in this decision. Also, the Police and Review Commission investigated the possibilities of investing further in crisis response, CSO, and ServiceNet, and found these to be unsuitable solutions that are actually known to create harm in our community. Thank you. Thank you for all the time you're putting in, especially tonight, but all the time. Um, and I'll yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Next is uh, Katie Young. Does that work? All right, there we go. Thanks. Um, my name's Katie Young and I live in Northampton on Warfield Place. Uh, like my neighbors, including those you've heard from today, uh, Oliver, Francine, Liz, Martha, Lois, Meg, Lisa, Heidi, Shauna, and Adam, as well as the many more who've written you letters. Um, I'm unhappy with the DPW's plan to pave Warfield Place. Uh, unhappy for many reasons, of which I'll list five. Um, one, the city informed us of a plan giving us no opportunity for input. They didn't ask if we wanted the street repaved uh, or whether we thought it was necessary. And this is really antithetical to the community we've built on our tiny little gorgeous street. Um, two, as others have mentioned, the plan necessitates chopping down this huge line of beautiful 50 year old cherry trees. Uh, are they diseased? I don't know. It sure doesn't look like it. Um, they're beautiful. The city hasn't shown us any reports and they haven't answered our questions about the trees, nor for that matter, our questions about other aspects of the plan. Um, my profile picture, as you might have seen, is one that my spouse took of the blossoms just a few days ago. At the very least, these trees deserve to live out their natural lives. Three, uh, at our behest, the city hosted what frankly really felt like a sham of a meeting, where we were essentially told that our input didn't matter. Um, we ask you to please take a pause and slow down. Please don't proceed with the plan this summer. It's hasty, it feels destructive, and if you need to do more than fill the potholes, please do make it collaborative. Um, four, as far as we can all tell, the plan would necessitate ripping up gardens and cutting down trees actually on both sides of the street. We've worked really hard to make it beautiful here on Warfield. Sure, it's technically city property, but it's city property we've been lovingly caring for. Some folks for five years, some for five decades, and some actually for five generations. Um, together, we built something that we really care about. And fifth, Warfield Place isn't a through fair. We get no traffic except people who come to look at our gardens or our cherry trees. As city priorities go, 
this should be pretty low. Um, state, Finn, Prospect, streets that actually take people places should be given priority. We don't want the repaving. Um, you know, it would be nice if you filled our potholes, but if you don't, it's okay. Um, just please don't ruin our beautiful street in this top-down manner. Please take a pause, slow down, and either scrap the plan altogether or work with us uh, rather than imposing a plan that frankly has been absolutely gutting for us to contemplate. Thanks. Thank you. Next is Steve. Hello. Uh, my name is Steve Musel. My pronouns are he and him. I am a former special sections editor for the Daily Hampshire Gazette. Uh, I have since moved out of the Pioneer Valley, but at the time I lived in Ward 3 off Conn Street. The impacts of the diminishment or outright loss of local journalism on a community cannot be overstated. When journalists are understaffed, injustice slips through, no matter how talented and hardworking the journalists are and from experience, they are. When journalists are not from the community on which they're reporting, reporting priorities no longer reflect the community's needs and it is more difficult to ensure that facts are correct, something we all have uh, a desire for. Northampton, Hampshire County, and the Pioneer Valley deserve fully staffed local journalism, and the hardworking reporters at the Daily Hampshire Gazette deserve to be able to do that journalism without worrying about whether they're going to be let go unexpectedly and replaced with out-of-town uh, replacements, rather. I urge the council to adopt the resolution supporting the Gazette's workers. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I yield the remainder of my time. Thank you. Next is uh, somebody's iPad. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? I'm well. Can you state your name and city or town? Yeah. Yes, my name's Andy Trusha. I live in Ward 5 in Florence. Been here all my life. Um, I don't see why we can't have funding of the community care and the police department. I think it's probably a good idea to have the community care department. Uh, there's been a lot of good ideas brought up. But the funding of the police department by 50% seems to be a little radical to me. Um, I think it would cause more harm. The other part just quickly and I'll be out of here is we're getting a lot of scripted people from out of town which I know they care about the city but we live here and I would urge the city council to bring this to a vote of the people of Northampton not just the city council I think it's too much of a big decision to make I think this needs to go to the to a vote. I think it should be out of ballot. That's about all I have to say. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Next is Hunter. Hello, my name is Hunter. Uh, I live in Williamsburg. I used to live in Northampton. I graduated from UMass Amherst. And I would like to support the proposed resolution uh, by the Police Commission Review of defunding the police by 50% and developing a community care department. I would like to remind people listening that the checks and balances, by the nature of checks and balances, can't come from within the department. The person responsible for murdering Dante Wright was training somebody at the time. And the whole point of defunding the police is to have those resources reallocated into the community. And those are the cases where you're going to see crime spike if they're not reallocated into the community. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Christine's iPad. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, I feel the need to address some things that have been said incorrectly from some speakers this evening. 
First, I want to bring up wellness checks are not something that a non-trained person or a social worker should attend. Um, I just want to reiterate, I am a social worker and I work in Northampton. Many times wellness checks are done to find out the health of a person and can resort in a deceased body, which will cause severe trauma to the person finding it. That takes time and training, which the police have. I also want to bring up that Seattle is currently regretting their decision of defunding the police as many officers are quitting due to lack of morale or support in their community. I remind you that Seattle was the location of TROP, the mini country that sprang up where crime went up 535% and the residents of that area were terrorized and there were rapes and murders. Currently, the crime rate in Seattle is a, at a 36% spike over the last two years as a result of their defunding measures. The Northampton Police are the department that most departments in the state strive to be. Despite the man likening the police to Nazis because of their social media page bringing up tonight's meeting, I would remind you that this is a public meeting and that all voices should be heard, not just the ones supporting defunding. The smarter thing for the commissioners to do would be to wait and see how the cities that have defunded the, their departments fare and what happens to their crime rates, what happens to their tax base, and what happens to the property values or to refund the police department to invest in body cameras and stop defunding as a knee-jerk reaction to something that happened thousands of miles from here. It's not fair to speak for houseless people when they are not here and the NPD provides them with support and care. Uh, they are the ones that community policing assist and they help them with blankets, socks, food, et cetera, and have done so quietly for years. Um, it's possible that if you defund the police that it's going to be state troopers answering their calls and they don't know the city or the residents like the NPD officers do. And while I appreciate the number of Amherst students speaking, they neither live or work in Northampton and are not impacted by this defunding. They seem to all be speaking from the same script and while their intentions are good, they should focus on their, their own community. Finally, if defunding does happen, you will be cutting every female and minority officer on this force. Is that your goal? That's all the time that I have. Thank you. Could you please state your name and city or town? My name is Chris. I don't live in Northampton, but I do work there. I live in Granby. Thank you. Next is uh, David Ark. David, you might be frozen. David, I'm going to come back to you while you get to a location that will work better. OK, Ruth, Ozeki, Ozeki, sorry. Ozeki. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. Yeah, my name is Ruth Ozeki, and I'm a resident and property owner on Warfield Place. I'm, I'm also a novelist and a Zen Buddhist priest. I lived in Northampton in the 1970s and moved back here six years ago because I wanted to live in, an, in a progressive and inclusive city uh, with a robust and participatory democracy. Um, tonight demonstrates that we have just that, and I want to go on record in support of the News Guild uh, workers at the Daily Hampshire Gazette um, and of the creation of a Department of Community Care and also of municipal broadband. Um, but I'm here really to speak about uh, the uh, DPW plan uh, to chop down the Warfield cherry trees um, and to ask the Northampton City Council specifically to intervene in this plan. Um, you've heard the numerous objections of the residents on our street um, and also in the extended neighborhood, um, all of which I agree with. Uh, the removal of these trees will have a negative ecological and environmental impact, um, devastate the character of our street and do serious harm uh, to our mental and spiritual health and our quality of life. Um, in Japan, where my ancestors are from, cherry trees are venerated. Um, in, in Zen Buddhism, their blossoms are a symbol of the beauty and ephemeral nature of life. Uh, the oldest cherry tree in Japan is between 1800 and 2000 years old. 
Um, it's one of the oldest trees on the planet, and yet it still blooms every year, and every year people flock to see it during cherry blossom season. Um, our Warfield trees are only 50 years old, um, but they are still the pride and joy of our street. Uh, residents from all over Northampton come to see their blossoms every year. Uh, this year we held a cherry blossom festival, hopefully the, um, the first of many. Um, you know, and, and this year too, I think more than ever, after a very long and very hard COVID winter, we've been looking forward to the spring and to seeing our cherry trees bloom again. Mm -hmm. They symbolize hope. And so you can imagine then what a blow it was to receive a notice from the city taped to our doors that our cherry trees were going to be cut down. We've spoken to the DPW representatives and they've explained their positions, which we understand, but with which we disagree. Uh, the tree warden feels that the trees are diseased, but other qualified arborists disagree with his diagnosis. We want a second opinion. We want the hearing that is required by chapter 87 of Massachusetts law. We want a participatory design process that takes the community's needs into consideration. With proper, uh, proper care, cherry trees can live for a very long time, and we feel that these trees should be allowed to live out their natural lives and be cared for with the respect that they deserve. We'd like to offer a simple alternative to the city's plans. Uh, the potholes on the street are in need of repair, so we would be grateful if the city could fill them, but leave our sidewalks and our trees intact. Maybe not for a thousand years, but at least for the time being. Uh, we feel very strongly about this and we will do whatever we need to do to save our trees. The government of Japan- That's, designated... um, that's time, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, David, I'm going to go back to you and let's see if David, tell me if you can hear me. All right, David, I don't see you any longer. Um, all right, we'll come back and give this a try in a moment. Uh, Amy Francis. Hi, good evening. Um, thank you, Councillor, so much for your time. Uh, as, as with every city council night, it seems like you guys are um, just putting in the long hours and we so appreciate your work. Um, as a white female presenting business owner and person who lives downtown Northampton in Ward 4, I strongly support the resolution supporting the Police Review Commission creating the Department of Community Care, and I want us to actively defund the police by 50% in this year's budget and moving those additional funds to the Department of Community Care. We are absolutely here to support this work. We've been here consistently for a year, researching, bringing facts about how reform and more training for police are not effective, bringing content of what's happening around the country and ideas of how this change will better our entire community, even those who fear the defunding. As the change happens, we are here to continue to do the hard work of making this change happen in our community, making our community safer and stronger for everyone who lives here. And everyone is not just the people who are here in Northampton, it's all the surrounding towns. I absolutely feel that what's going on in Amherst and Montague and Chicopee and Springfield have an effect on me. This is a large community that does not stop at the borders of a town. Um, additionally, I want to uh, voice my support for the Gazette, my, uh, the Gazette reporters. Uh, voice my support for the cherry trees remaining uh, and more research being done on that and support um, internet ac access for all. Thank you again for your time. Thank you. Um, David, David, are you there? All right. Uh, if you do show back up, David, just put something in the chat to me and, I'll, and let me know. Um, next, we have Haley Nicholas. Oops, sorry. Sorry, unmute again, Haley. Apologies. Can you, you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. So hello, my name is Haley Nicholas. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a resident of Ward 2. I work at Amherst College as the director of the Women's and Gender Center. 
I have a responsibility to myself as a black queer woman and to my students who frequent Northampton, especially those who identify as queer, trans, low income and people of color to speak tonight. Many of those against defunding the police have dismissed Amherst College students who are equally a part of this community. They do live, work and volunteer here. I personally know Amherst College students who live, work and volunteer here. Your audacity infuriates me. Anyone who dismisses student voices claiming they don't have a stake in this community should be ashamed. They have every right to vocalize their concerns and to advocate. As many of the Amherst College students eloquently said, police do not protect the public. They instill fear, incite racial and classist hatred and instigate violence. I'm therefore stating my strong support with my fellow residents for Northampton to create a new department of community care, which is accountable to communities most impacted by policing. We must defund the Northampton police by 50% and reallocate the funds to community led safety strategies. This is a step toward our eventual goal of abolition. A few weeks ago, I was fortunate enough to hear Angela Davis, the renowned civil rights activist speak at Amherst College. She said in no uncertain terms, police and prison reform is not enough. More training will not help. The issue is policing itself. Creating a new department of community care, defunding the police and reallocating funds to community led safety strategies is not radical. It's the bare minimum. Abolition is the goal and is necessary. Angela Davis shared that during slavery, there were folks advocating for slavery reform instead of abolition. I repeat, they were advocating for slavery reform and claimed that if we trained masters to be better, to be just, slavery would be more humane. I'll leave you with that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next. Uh, I can just see it says save the Northampton. Oops, sorry, unmute again. Hello, how are you? Well, thanks. Good, yeah. Uh, I just want to address the previous speaker from Amherst College. I'm glad everybody got an A for uh, disrupting uh, today's meeting. I wonder how many of those kids come from extremely wealthy, privileged backgrounds where they live in low crime communities, thanks to the police. Some of them, I, I suspect, probably even live in gated communities. So I'm not a big fan of being a, a resident of a neighboring town, being lectured by college students who don't pay property taxes. Uh, next, I have a big, uh, big shout out to the Gazette workers. I feel for you. But the reason you're having a problem is because your paper is nobody's reading it anymore. It's called the free market. And what happens is when people stop reading your paper, they stop advertising. And uh, that brings us to business. Um, I can't blame the Northampton City Council for the total devastation of your once vibrant uh, downtown area. 90% uh, of that belongs to the uh, China Communist Party and their virus. But you have to manage it, and you've mismanaged your downtown economy severely. You've uh, lost, I believe, 12 Northampton police positions. I know for a fact three or four of them now work for neighboring Greenfield, where, by the way, their pay is a little higher. So, um, you know, you reap what you sow. Um, I'm boycotting uh, downtown Northampton. I, I don't go there anymore. I used to be a frequent visitor. There are thousands like me. Uh, your businesses are suffering. And after taking 90% of the blame to the China Communist Party virus, the remainder of the blame belongs squarely on you, the mayor and the city council. Your feckless leadership has created this situation. You're entertaining a small, radical minority of citizens, the vast majority of taxpaying citizens around the nation want a sensible an effective police department. If you wanna give them more training, a little more money, sure, that's fine. I have no problem with that. The not a racist police department prior to the BLM Antifa insurgency, they were well-respected and well-known as an effective and well-trained police department. They're great people. You are blessed to have them. When you want you finish your 50% defunding, you're gonna have a spike in crimes. A spike in decompensated mental health people not being addressed. The vast majority of mental health patients and uh, 
drug addicted people on an overdose are first responded to by the police who saved their lives and sent them to the hospital. Uh, I used to be a corrections officer. Nobody knows better than me and the police how this works. All right. So you got to get a grip on what you're doing. It's ridiculous. And finally, I just want to say, make America great again. Please Keep say America your name great. and city or my town, name, please. My name is MAGA. My last name is Tag, and I live in a neighboring community. Thank you very much. Trump 2024. David, I hear that you are still here. Can you unmute? Outstanding. Oh, wait. It, it, I can hear you slightly. Wow. Oh, cheesy Pete. How can I follow that? Um, well, my name is uh, David Arce. I live in Hadley. I've been working in Northampton for the last decade and change. I'm too late to speak for the Gazette uh, for my own job because they already outsourced our production, which makes the uh, jurisdiction clause on what they're fighting for that much more, uh, I don't know, important to people like me. Uh, but I've also been here and it sounds like public opinion is for the cherry trees in Warfield and for a department of community care. And I don't know, that's all I got. Okay, thank you, David. Outstanding. Uh, Shannon Riley. Hello, um, my name is Shannon Riley, she, her pronouns. I live in Somerville and I have ties to Northampton. Um, I am a paralegal at a Boston firm and I have a background in social work. So I just want to note, as a side mention, a couple folks here earlier complained about scripts. I am indeed reading my remarks, but I promise I wrote them myself. Um, I am here in support of the Gazette workers. The Daily Hampshire Gazette provides a valuable service to the neighborhood and the Pioneer Valley News Guild is doing its best to advocate for the workers and for the community they are part of. The paper's owners have dragged their feet in negotiations, they've cut staffing and they have brought in an expensive union busting lawyer. Um, this morning, the newspapers of New England management posted a confusing and mean-spirited full page ad about the negotiations with the Pioneer Valley News Guild. It's clear that this was the mood move of a spooked and shaken ownership without a leg to stand on. We're past the time for a fair contract. Stay out of the propaganda game, please, newspapers in New England. Stick with the real bargaining and get back to the table. I would also like to say that between my work in criminal defense and in social work, I have seen a lot of situations that needed response from social workers rather than police. Situations where the presence of police officers causes unnecessary escalation and makes the conflict more difficult to resolve, which ends up costing money and time, and it makes the community less safe. My previous home, Burlington, Vermont, started sending social workers instead of police to mental health calls and saw great improvement with handling those situations and less strain on pol police officers who had previously been asked to deal with situations they weren't trained for. Thank you for listening. I yield the balance of my time. Thank you. Uh, next is Jessica Brown. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jessica Brown. I am a student at Smith College, uh, and um, I'm, I don't have anything prepared, but I'm just going to speak from the heart. Um, I am in full support of the uh, findings of the police commission and that resolution, and I thank the city councilors who have worked on it. In support, in support of the cherry trees as well, um, but more concerned about uh, people's lives being affected by what is going on in Northampton. Um, but yeah, I really want to speak specifically to Mayor Narkwitz, who last I checked did not have his camera on, but I don't know, I don't know if you're listening. Um, and to all of the elected officials who have prevented the 880,000 that was divested from the police this past summer, um, I want to speak to you. 
I speak to an unhoused man twice a week. He is my friend. Um, I love knowing him and I value him so much. And I would love one of you to look me in the eye and tell me that that money could not be moved into any other function in the city, anything that could have gotten him housing, food, because the police don't do that. Um, and I, I am just appalled. Uh, this man that I've been talking to has been unhoused for a year and nobody, nobody in Northampton, nobody in city government has uh, helped him. Nobody has even thought about moving that money to somewhere where it can get used for housing, for food, for anyone. We have an, it is appalling to me that we have $880,000 just sitting somewhere and we have unhoused people on the streets. Look me in the eye and tell me that that is okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Sean Official. Hi. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Mute, un, hit unmute again. Can you hear me now? Yes. Right, thank you. Uh, Sean Official, Ward 7, Northampton. I support the Cherry Trees and Warfield Place. I support the Gazette Workers and the P Pioneer Valley Workers Guild, uh, Valley News Guild. And I support the final report put forward by the Police Review Commission and the demand set forth by Northampton Abolition Now. I deeply appreciate all the unpaid commissioners and all those who committed hours to share their concerns and need on issues of safety, mental health, crisis response, and the impact of policing. I deeply appreciate all the people that gave their unpaid time, unpaid and emotional labor to contribute to the challenging process of envisioning a safe and caring city and a community that was put forth in the final report. Thank you, Councillors Mayori and Quinlan, for your resolution to endorse the Police Review Commission's final report. I hope that our budget will reflect this democratic process of listening to all the concerns that have been forth, put forward. I hope that our democratic process and our budget will show that we are listening to the Police Review Commission that was built, that has crystallized the voices of those who are disadvantaged in our communities. As others spoke before me and is probably clear, I too endorse divesting 50% of the police budget and investing in our community in the form of access to rapid response crisis services by creating a department of community care and using our previously divested funds immediately. The youth services should be able to peer funded support, harm reduction model and trauma informed services based on logical data driven and integrated and transparent information the final report has our blueprint. If you say we're a progressive city, then we need to show our progressive values in our budget. Our fund should benefit our community and not harm any of us in any way. And when I say us, I mean residents, renters, homeowners, houseless, visitors, shoppers, business owners, managers, and the workforce, many more. They come to our city, they spend money here. We need to listen to all the voices and not just the property owners that pay taxes. And those people in our municipal government, those who appointed the unpaid community representative to create the police review commission, if you don't follow the recommendation of the commission, then you prove that this process is just for show and you had a predetermined agenda. If you created the review commission, then please follow, follow their resolution that came from it. If you are not gonna follow it, there was no need for the lengthy process of unpaid labor, especially if you don't follow the recommendation. If you don't follow it, it's not a democracy. I ask the council members, the mayors and the mayor and those in power to listen and make bold decision. Lives depend on your courage. Specifically, black life depends on your decisions. Workers depend on your decision. Trees depend on your decision. It is time that we dismantle capitalistic, racist, it's sexist, time. misogynistic, and colonial structure of government. Did you say my time is done? Yes, that was time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next is Gabriel P. Thank you for your time. My name is Gabriel Peoples. I use they them pronouns. I'm a resident of Ward 2 in Northampton. 
I first want to state my support for the Gazette workers and the creation of municipal broadband. Um, and I want to state my strong support for the resolution proposed by Councillors Mayori and Quinlan to support the recommendations for the Policing Review Commission in their final report. I urge the mayor to establish a new Department of Community Care this fiscal year and fund it by at least $882,000 in the budget for next year. The Department of Community Care should be accountable to communities most impacted by policing. I urge the mayor and city council to fund the Northampton police by 50% and to reallocate those funds to community-led safety strategies for fiscal year 2022. As a social worker who has worked for a number of the large community mental health agencies in the area, I have seen firsthand how those agencies are more concerned with budgets and bottom lines than the people that they serve. Social work like policing is an institution that is built on white supremacy and pairing or replacing police with social workers will do nothing to make the residents of our city or the folks who visit safer. Reforms don't work because these systems are functioning exactly as they were designed. We should not replace one toxic system with another. Again, I urge the, the mayor and city council to focus on solutions that move away from policing and are accountable to communities of color and other communities who have been harmed by policing. I insist that those solutions be community-led, non-coercive, peer-based responses to people in crisis. Wellness checks, traffic monitoring, and nonviolent public assembly should all be moved out of the responsibilities of Northampton Police. Again, I urge the mayor and city council to establish and fund the Department of Community Care. I support the resolution proposed by Councilors Mayor and Quinlan and support the funding of the Northampton Police Department by 50%. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next is Beth Finney. Hi, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. I only have a few comments. Um, I'd like to say that um, I am a resident of Florence, Massachusetts. I've lived here for um, greater than 25 years. Um, I am a healthcare worker. I have a social work background and I'm invested in this community. Um, I have sat through a number of the commission meetings and listened, but not participated. Um, because I came to this subject with um, pretty strong preconceived opinions. Um, I've learned a lot. My, my, um, my scope of understanding of the different issues has been broadened by listening to the different opinions of um, people who I originally didn't agree with. But ultimately as a member of this community, a tax paying member of this community, um, I do feel like the issue of defunding the police department is something that is too large and too important for the um, city government to make a decision on, on their own. And I think that it needs to go to a vote in this community. Um, and that's all I'd like to say with the exception of, um, I do support the issue of the cherry trees remaining and I do support the um, Gazette reporters. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Booker Bush. Well, hold on. There we go. Um, I'm a member of the Northampton Police Commission, though we don't exist anymore. Um, I'm really proud to live in this community. I've been here for 10 years. I also live in Florence. I stare at the back of Sojourner Truth, sort of Northampton's favorite abolitionist. I want to just clarify one or two things. The Northampton Police Commission um, um, never stated that we wanted to fund the police by 50%. As a matter of fact, I don't think you'll find the word defund in anything that the Northampton Policing Commission report finally said. Um, the second thing I wanna make clear is we met with Chief Casper on two occasions and she actually agreed with many of our recommendations, um, especially around having an alternative response to mental health calls and some other issues. I'm not sure that she would agree with an Office of Community Care. We did not ask her that question directly, but I, I do wanna clarify for all of the really thoughtful people, and that's why I'm really proud to live here. Um, people are really impassioned about things and I, I feel special because I can look out my front door at Sojourner Truth and I can look out my back window at beautiful cherry trees, which are, which are very meaningful to me. And having the Gazette drives all of these discussions that we're having right now. But um, although some of us might feel that we ought to defund the police, that is not what the commission said. 
we tried to do things on a data-driven basis and things that we can make reasonable assumptions about. Um, and second, we actually had some agreement with the Chief Casper that having an alternative to policing for a number of functions in Northampton would be something that would also be viewed positively by the police. I'll stop there. Thank you. Uh, Henry Pope. Mute. Good afternoon, can you hear me? Yes. Outstanding. Hello, my name is Henry Pope. I live at 29 Pleasant Street, Northampton, Mass. I have lived here for, uh, here in Northampton this stage, going on 10 years. I lived here for a year and a half, almost two years prior to that. Um, I've been among Western Mass and among Northampton in specific for the last 22 or 23 years um, by recollection. I just want to express that uh, I am against the specificness of a 50% reduction in the budget for the Northampton Police Department. Uh, that to me, being a person, I'm a black person, um, prior to living in this region, I've lived in areas and cities, major cities, uh, where crime was rampant. Um, I'm from DC, Washington DC. I've lived in Maryland, Prince George's County, Montgomery County, uh, Baltimore County, Baltimore City, uh, a lot of areas, and uh, from the 70s through the 2000s. And I can tell you that the defunding of the idea of removing funding for, for a police department at this level uh, is irresponsible, and it is, um, it's wishful thinking. Um, I do not believe that people here understand how well they have it, how good it is here at, in Northampton in the city. Uh, our police, are they perfect? No, but there is no such thing as perfect. Every, every uh, agency and department has imperfections. Um, I agree with Mr. Bush, Mr. Booker Bush, thank you for participating in the, in the, um, in the committee. Uh, but I agree with him about the idea of the chief of police being amenable to some changes, that makes sense, uh, that is logical. Uh, but as it goes again to 50% reduction, that's outrageous. Uh, that's, I think it's about my time. That's all I wanted to say and express. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Um, next is Pat. Good evening, um, I'm Pat, I'm from Ward 1. Um, I just kind of want to say something. Um, I'm going to frame this first. Uh, basically, for the past year and a little bit, um, a lot of us have been speaking out. And a lot of us have been trying to get action and trying to get um, city governance and our elected leaders to actually do something about the systemic racism problem. And yes, we have the resolution way back in March of last year that designating it as a, uh, as, um, a public health crisis. And the unfortunate part for me is that the inaction that I keep seeing between the mayor and the council chambers on a lot of these issues speaks volumes in deafening silence. Um, and I just kind of want to talk about that with following that with, I am in full support of resolution 212627. Um, I think it's a long overdue step of ac actual action um, and hopefully will build some momentum to greater improvement for true community safety in Northampton. Um, I also want to echo as a union member um, working at UMass, like I definitely support the um, Gazette union um, resolution that's on the docket today. Um, I think that's really important. I also think that having local news local is really important. Um, I don't know how many times I resource out of the Gazette I'm really appreciative of them, but I also just 
re-echoing what a lot of my friends and colleagues here have said. Um, the resolution 21267 is really important and I just want to voice my support for that. Thank you both or thank you all. Have a great night. Thank you. Next is um, Xiao Yu or Dora. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, hi, my name is Dora Zen, co-chair of Graduate Employee Organization at UMass Amherst. I'm a resident of Amherst, but go to Northampton frequently. I'm here to support the workers at Hampshire Gazette. As an immigrant and woman of color, I want to thank the workers at Hampshire Gazette for turning up my voice. As someone who works under the table in the past and a victim of wage theft with the help of Pioneer Valley Workers Center and workers from Bye -bye. Hampshire Gazette, I was able to share my stories to the community. When my family and other international students and their families were being evicted from our home, it was the worker at Hampshire Gazette that come over to our community and report our our voice. When the Asian community is hurt due to the ongoing racist and the xenophobic violence happening at the national level, it was a worker from the Gazette showing up at the rally and help us voice our concerns. The local newsletter pl plays an integral role in bringing diverse voices to the table. Hereby, I support workers at Hampshire Gazette. They deserve to have a better contract. Lastly, I'm in support of the community care department. I want to bring your attention to the international level. If you look at what's happening at Colombia, Hong Kong, and Xinjiang, police was never there to help but punish those who are most marginalized. They were there to only to, to support the privileged. Ever since I moved to the Valley, I was told I lived in the Happy Valley. What people didn't tell me is I live in the Valley in progress. If Northampton truly embraced it, its name of a progressive town, I urge you to pass the resolution of defunding police and investing in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Sean Don. Um, yes, good evening, everybody. And thank you all city councilors and, and everyone for staying up late again. Um, my name is Sean Donovan. I'm from Ward 3 in Northampton. I live on Coolidge Avenue. Um, I'm also someone who's either lived or worked in Northampton for about 15 years. Um, but I also think it's great when folks who don't um, live here can, can share some perspectives because this is a this city is a hub. We have a courthouse that's a hub for this, this county. And uh, I do think a lot of people that are part of the city deserve to uh, share some perspectives, uh, whether living here or not. Um, I wanted to say, first off, I support the um, resolution and um, support of the Gazette's reporters. Uh, I don't know what I would do without the Gazette as a paper reporting on these issues. Um, so yeah, I, I'm very much in support of those folks. And also, um, yeah. I'm very, very glad to see that Councilors Maori and Quinlan, thank you so much, um, have put forth this resolution to, um, yeah, put forth some of the ideas of the Northampton Policing Review Commission. So thank you so much for all of your work, for those of you who are on the commission. Um, I, I did wanna say as someone who is a, a resident of Northampton, but also someone who's worked as a peer advocate in the mental health system around here for a decade, um, that we do <laughs> have a need for change in policing and I guess like, I just wanna to say to some of my fellow white folks on this, on this call, like I'm not interested in your fantasies of what crime is, I'm interested in real stories. Um, and so a lot of my friends have been hurt by police in this town. Um, I've spoken at um, numerous times at the commission, sometimes city council about when folks needed support because they were in distress and um, a wellness check or welfare check was instigated by a social worker, by a family member. Um, that's often led to more trauma for people rather than the support that they deserve, deserved and needed. Um, and so I've also known of um, friends of color, black folks, folks especially who don't come to this city because they're worried about being pulled over by the cops. And I think we have a lot of um, opportunity now to, to shift some of the um, focus on policing our residents to supporting our residents. And so when um, I'm calling for a 50% defunding of the police, it's not necessarily in the policing commission's um, report, 
but it's something that Northampton Abolition Now and other folks have been calling for. I think we have a lot of other um, skills and, and possibilities in this community to support people who are in distress, who are drug users, who are houseless folks, who are people in distress in general. Um, so yeah, I guess I, I would really encourage the, the mayor um, and the city council to follow through on the recommendations of the policing commission, but especially when it comes to peer led supports, uh, people that are trained uh, not to escalate situations that have themselves been in certain um, positions of distress or impacted by the police. Um, we don't need social workers to replace the cops as so many of the people have named already. And we don't need a co-responder model because that's not addressing the core issue. Um, so yeah, please, please look to those finer points of the commission as you implement this new Department of Community Care. And um, thank you all for your time. And cherry trees are great. So thanks for speaking for them too tonight. Thank you. Um, uh, this next person, please state your name and city or town. Hey, all good evening. Uh, my name is Matthew Clark. I live in Ward 2 in Northampton. Um, I would just uh, like to address a couple of my opinions. Um, I don't believe that the decision should be made um, based on a, a council vote about defunding the police. I'm all for um, police reform and police change because it's definitely not working. Um, if you can see my profile picture, I don't believe that anybody with a mental issue should be put in a room like that. It's just not going to do any good. Um, so I'm all for that. Um, and I would like to take it a step further um, and my uh, vo voice my support and opinion to have all apparel uh, with the thin blue line on it removed from our police departments. Um, that flag of tyranny has no place. Um, it's gang colors and it doesn't uh, belong on our police force. Um, and I'll relinquish the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Lee Lemaire. Can you unmute? Hold on. Now try. Yeah. Hi, um, my name, can you hear me okay? Yes. Uh, my name is Leanne Lemaire. I live in Ward 1 in Northampton. And actually, um, I live right around the block from the cherry trees um, on Warfield. I live on Finn Street. Um, and they are absolutely gorgeous. Um, I just found out about them because they were planning on being cut down. Um, so I'd like to urge the the DPW and the mayor to not do that or whoever's responsible for that to not do that. Um, but mainly I am here to speak tonight um, about defunding the police and to voice my support for the Department of Community Cares. Um, I just moved to Northampton three years ago. And one of the reasons I chose to come to Western Mass and to make my home in this community is because of the progressive and forward thinking values that Northampton embodies. And I think we have an amazing opportunity here um, to fund this department with the money that's already been cut from the budget and to fund it even further, I urge you to. Um, and I urge the city council to think about this in a historical perspective. Um, I think policing is just an extension of the oppression of black people in this country. The first police departments in this country um, were organized gangs to catch escaped slaves. Um, and when you think about it that way, like the seeds of violence are in the police department. And the only way to undo that is to move away from that and to move towards a model that actually cares for people and that doesn't harm people. Um, and I think it would be a betrayal of our progressive values to not throw all of our energy into making something like the Department of Community Cares work. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have Ezekiel Baskin. Can you unmute Ezekiel? I'm sorry, I think my speaker got connected somehow. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I'm Ezekiel Baskin, born and raised in Northampton. Um, I'm in support of both resolutions tonight around the Gazette workers and around following the recommendations of the Policing Review Commission. I just wanna echo what Dr. Booker Brush said, 
the establishment of a Department of Community Care is a sensible data-driven first step as outlined in the Policing Review Commission's report. It's not a giant radical step. It is a sensible first step and it should be established this year. It's not, it's not too much. It's the bottom line of what needs to happen. I wanted to address a couple of points that were brought up tonight. Um, the idea of co-response with the police is more expensive for the city than replacing one kind of response for certain calls with another kind of response. It's an added administrative cost from some folks who were speaking about not wanting to add costs to their taxes. Um, the idea that it seems dangerous for unarmed responders or peer responders to address mental health calls I would like to challenge the idea of what it seems with the data of what has happened in other cities where that kind of response has been implemented, which has been really positive, really successful, and has not led to harm for those responders. Um, the, the idea of sort of peer-led support as untrained, I think has come up in some responses tonight. Peer-led supporters and responders are trained they are not trained in the exact same way as police officers because they're a different force and a different approach. But I don't think anyone is suggesting that people are completely untrained and then sort of going to respond to emergency calls, there would be training protocols in a department. And I think that's part of why it's vital that this be a department so it can be structured within the city rather than attempting to sort of outsource to an outside agency. Um, we, we need to be able to build training, we need to be able to build accountability, and we can do that best with a departmental model. Um, I also just wanted to speak to the idea that this needs to be something that the city votes on. The city voted to elect the council. The city voted to elect the two at-large councilors. Every city resident who voted, like your votes are what elected all of you. Um, and we voted to elect our ward councillors as well. So I think the idea that this needs to be voted on in some kind of a ballot resolution or referendum, I, I don't, that this is part of the budget process and it should be voted on by the council as is sort of what we elected you to do. So I, I urge you to be empowered to, to make those decisions as we have empowered you with our votes. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to, to thank all of you again for your time. I know it's another late night, so thank you all. Thank you. Ya Ping. Hi, my name is Ya Ping. I live in Turner's Falls and I am close with a lot of people in Northampton and spend a lot of time in Northampton. Um, thank you all so much for being here tonight, um, for listening to so many comments, and I want to also second my support for the um, resolution to support the Gazette workers um, and the um, voices tonight that were speaking in support of the cherry tree staying. Um, and now I will um, talk about um, something I may have read some of these quotes before um, about the proposal um, by Mayor Savante Mirick um, to propose a new department instead of the police department, but I think it's worth summarizing again just for context because we're still here thinking about all of this. Um, so uh, Mayor Savante Mirick will propose replacing the city's current 63 officer $12.5 million a year department with the Department of Community Solutions and Public Safety which will include armed public safety workers and unarmed community solutions workers, all of whom will report to a civilian director of public safety instead of a police chief. Under the proposal, all current officers would have to reapply for a position with the new department. Um, those calls, as well as a majority of patrol activity, can and should be handled by unarmed community solutions workers well-trained in de-escalation and service delivery. This will uh, allow our new public safety workers to focus on preventing, interrupting, and serious, solving serious crime, is what the mayor said. 
Um, it says now he's investing his political capital and a plan that would remove armed officers from most civilian interactions, which he said should free those who remain to fully investigate and solve serious crimes. The investigators are going to be focused on the shooting last Tuesday. They will have nothing on their plate except finding that gun finding that shooter and taking them off the street, he said. They won't be pulled away from that work by a motor vehicle crash on Third Street or a welfare check on Madison. Another thing, another quote from that article is still, he said, it's clear that the system is not working as is. Um, he'd rather try to find the solution than continue to kick the can. Sorry, this is the quote from him. Once you can fully imagine an alternative response agency, it's hard to defend what exists currently. And again, uh, to reiterate, he envisions the department be up and running by the summer of 2023. Um, and so just to relate that to Northampton and, you know, the call from a lot of activists and community members to cut the police department by 50% and move all of those funds to people who are um, well fit to respond to the situation at hand the, and connect that to the Policing Review Commission's report. While they did not use the word defund, um, they did suggest that immediately police be removed from wellness checks, suspicious persons calls and nonviolent public assembly. And then as soon as possible within two years, remove police from animal control, flagging, general patrolling, medical emergencies, minor traffic That's accidents. That's time. Thanks. You Thanks. Math, there's just the math for y'all. Thank you. Uh, Javier. Thank you so much, President Shire. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, first, I want to say thank you to everyone who has spoken. Uh, thank you so much to every single member of the Northampton City Council, to the mayor, and everybody who has spoken in support of the recommendations that the Northampton Police Review Commission gave to the City Council a little more than a month ago. I was the co-chair with Booker Vuch of the Alternatives to Policing subcommittee. We heard hundreds of testimonies within that subcommittee, not even mentioning the amount of comments and personal stories that we heard in the regular general commission meeting, plus the three biggest uh, public speaking events that the commission put together where people came forward, plus uh, the testimonies that we collected from the affected communities. I just want to clarify something. The, the commission's recommendations were neither capricious nor uninformed. Uh, seven months of people, really talented people, professionals like Carol Owens, Cynthia Zapois, Dan Kennedy, Booker Bush, Joyce Rosales, Elizabeth Barajas Roman, myself, I work for the American Civil Liberties Union of Massachusetts. During seven months, we heard testimonies. We investigated, we researched. After seven months, we came out with a tangible report with solid recommendations. I know that uh, yesterday, every one of the members of the city council and the mayor got a letter from all the names of the commissioners that I just named, clarifying what we are recommending. I want to say thank you to Councilman Quillen, to Councilwoman Mayori for moving forward to just have the city council on record and publicly saying that they support the creation of the Department of Community Care. This is not revolutionary. Somebody mentioned CAHOOTS. CAHOOTS have been running for more than 30 years. We're not re reinventing the wheel. We're not asking for something that's radical at all. It's sensitive from the point of view that our budget should represent the values of the community. Um, I also want to uh, state my support for the resolution in support of workers of the Hampshire Gazette. I think that is fundamental. As a union member of in the ACLU, I'm also supportive of other brothers and sisters in other unions. I think their claims are fair. Um, and going back to the Northampton Police Review Commission. Um, somebody mentioned that if if you if 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 you diminish the footprint of the police department, officers of color and female officers are going to be laid off. I already said this in a different city council meeting. That's by time. now, 
can I finish that sentence? Finish that sentence, absolutely. By now, uh, female officers and officers of color should be sergeants. By now, they should be high-rank police officers. Shouldn't be the, the ones that just enter into the force. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we are going to convene the meeting. Um, so, Laura, will you please take the roll? Councillor Dwight. I am here. Councillor Foster. Here. Councillor Jarrett. Here. Councillor Labarge. Uh -oh. Here. Councillor Mayori. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Unmute and then I'll. Here. Councillor Nash. Here. Councillor Quinlan. Here. Councillor Shara. Here. And Councillor Thorpe. Here. Madam President, you have a quorum. Thank you, Laura. Okay, counselors, hold up. Um, before we get started, does anyone want to take a short recess? Oh, I, I'm seeing nods. Okay. Yes, um, let's do a, Councilor Dwight, did you, were you going to say something? Well, I, I was going to whimper yes, but I, ah. if I'm alone, then I, I will stand down and wait. I saw, I saw nods. I saw I'm a nods. yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, let's come back at about 10, 20, 10, 21. See you then. Okay.
Okay, we are in the meeting. Um, and uh, we are going to start with a public hearing. This is on 21.97 National Grid Verizon petition uh, for installation of underground conduit on Damon Road. It's petition number 23303524 for Mass General, General Law, Chapter 166, Section 22, the Northampton City Council will hold a public hearing Thursday, May 6th. 2021 at 7 to 5 p.m. Huh? Uh, National Grid Verizon New England's petition to install underground conduit on Damon Road. The city council will hear all persons who wish to be heard there on. Move to uh, open the public hearing, please. Motion to made by Councilor Joyce, seconded by Councilor Varge to open the public hearing. And I will just note that um, we have uh, the DP DPW says no potential conflicts were observed. Um, and that the trench permit uh, approved has already been issued actually. Um, and uh, this permit will be revised to reflect the spe specifics of the above work upon approval of this petition by the council. And Lisa, I see that you are here. Uh, Councilor Jarrett. You may need to vote. I think we need oh, to do I'm a sorry. vote on opening Thank you. public hearing. It's gonna be a long night, huh? Thank you. Um, Roll call on opening the hearing, please, Laura. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. <laughs> Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. And Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Okay, now it is officially open. Um, and Lisa is here to speak as a proponent. I, I will speak as a proponent. I'm not sure if there's someone else from National Grid. I believe that there is in O'Brien, Brian maybe, Castillo. I don't know if you see that name. I didn't see it on the list. O'Brien? I, I, I'm not sure it might be. I'm not sure about the first name, but Castillo is the last name. Oh. I was actually just went back to look at this because I didn't see it on the email. But I'm C -A -C -A -S. sure. C-A-S. Uh, C-O-S-T-E-O. E-O. No, I don't see. Okay. Anybody. Okay. And so because sometimes they take the, they do the DOT jobs. I do know what this is. And it's strictly for removing the overhead wires that cross 91 on Damon Road. Um, and they will be installed underground with a couple of manholes for, you know, access. It'll go from the pole before the, the highway and, and the wires will go and around and they'll rise back up on the next pole. I believe it states in there is pole seven and a quarter to uh, seven dash 25 to seven dash 50, I believe is stated in there. Okay. Um, is there anyone else who wants to speak in favor of this? Anyone from the public who's here to speak? Uh, for or um, as an opponent or has any questions? Okay. Move to close the public hearing, please. Motion made and seconded to close the public hearing. Any discussion on closing? Uh, roll call, please, on closing, Laura. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. And Councillor Dwight. Yes. Okay, the hearing is closed and that's under the consent agenda, right, Laura? Is that what you yeah. said? Okay. So thank you, Lisa. Um, thank you. Uh, moving on, we have announcement of two public hearings. Um, Public hearing on 21.238 National Grid Verizon Pole Petition for one jointly owned pole on Damon Road, petition number 23303524 for Mass General Law, Chapter 166, Section 22. City Council will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 20th, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. National Grid Verizon New England's petition to install one jointly owned pole on Damon Road. Instructions for accessing the hearing may be found on the May 20th, 2021 City Council agenda to be posted on the city website at northamptonma.gov at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. City Council will hear all persons who wish to be heard thereon. 
Next is an announcement of public hearing on 21.239 National Grid Verizon Pole Petition for two jointly owned poles on Burt's Pit Road. This is petition number 30025210. Mass General Law, Chapter 166, Section 22, the Northampton City Council will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 20th, 2021 at 7.15 p.m. A National Grid Verizon New England's petition to install two jointly owned poles on Burt's Pit Road. Instructions for accessing the hearing may be found on the May 20th, 2021 City Council agenda to be posted on the city website, NorthamptonMA.gov. At least 48 hours prior to the meeting, the City Council will hear all persons who wish to be heard thereon. Oh, there's a there's another announcement of a public hearing. Uh, this is for 21.261, application for license to store flammables and combustibles at 140 Olander Drive. For Mass General Law Chapter 148, Section 13, North Commons at Village Hill, LLC, has submitted an application for a license to store flammables and combustibles for one 4,000-gallon LP gas underground storage tank at 140 Olander Drive, Northampton. City Council will hold a public hearing by video conference on Thursday, May 20th, 2021 at 7.05 p.m. Instructions for accessing the hearing may be found on the May 20th, 2021 City Council agenda to be posted on the city website, NorthamptonMA.gov, at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. And the City Council will hear all persons who wish to be heard thereon. The City Council meeting begins at 7 p.m. Okay, moving on from that, um, I was going to give an update on um, and share with the public, whoever is still here with us, kind of, this will be an ironic update. Um, the schedule for the upcoming budget hearings and budget deliberation. Uh, I've developed this schedule to allow additional time and consideration for members of the public who want to participate and share comments. Um, it also reserves time for us to conduct the business of the council and hopefully structures it in a way so that we're doing it at a more reasonable hour. Um, this is where the irony comes in. Uh, in addition to consideration for ourselves, our administrative assistant and the other city representatives who need to participate in these meetings with us, um, it's also of the utmost importance to consider the residents of Northampton who are entitled to an open meeting that they can attend. Uh, it does no one service to be conducting our work as counselors early into the morning and I want to acknowledge the residents um, who've, who've made it clear that they've felt excluded from our deliberation when that happens. Um, or very late at night or early in the morning. Um, the items on our agenda are not optional. The key to uh, a functioning city is that we, we pass forward these things and, and do our part in this. Um, and we know that, which is why we work to finish an agenda regardless of how late it goes. So I hope that by creating these additional meetings, we will allow that work um, to happen more reasonably. Uh, so this is the schedule um, for budget hearings Tuesday, May 25th at 5.30 p.m. And then Wednesday, May 26th at 5.30 p.m. Um, once we have the departments scheduled for those two days, uh, Laura will post those and um, we'll know what order they'll be in. And for the June meetings and the budget votes, those meetings are gonna be Thursday, June 3rd, starting at 5.30 p.m. That'll be public comment and the first reading of the budget. Um, and depending on how late that goes, uh, we may take up other items. Otherwise, the rest of the agenda will be continued on to Monday, June 7th at 7 p.m., which will be a special meeting for those agenda items we didn't reach on the Thursday meeting. Um, and then Thursday, June 17th at 5.30 p.m. will be public comment and a second reading on the budget. And same thing, we will, uh, if there is time, we will go to other budget I mean, we'll go to other uh, agenda items. Um, otherwise, we will convene uh, the following Monday, June 21st at 7 p.m. Um, for a special meeting for uh, any additional items we did not get to on the 17th. So that is my update on what our schedule is gonna be for budget season. Um, and any committee chair uh, updates? Councilor Dwight. Uh, legislative matters will be convening at seven in a joint hearing as opposed to uh, our normal time of five o'clock. We'll be serving a joint hearing with the planning board, which is actually starting to become a regular um, event. But this is uh, to discuss and hear from the public on items 21, 217, 218, 
to 140, 41. Uh, basically, I'm sorry, all the um, the the resolutions, uh, the zoning discussions that were moved out of this committee into um, legislative matters. So folks who wishing to attend, don't show up at five because you'll be lonely. Um, show up at seven. We'll, we'll see you there. Any other chairs? Okay, moving into one minute announcements. Oh, oh boy. Okay, we'll go to, wow. Okay, Councilor, let's start with Councilor Jarrett, then Nash, and we'll figure out after there. Great, I wanted to give an update on uh, art in Florence Center. The city set aside 1% for art with the recent funding uh, for the Florence streetscape improvements. And this weekend, uh, a local artist, uh, Kim Carlino, uh, with the assistance of students from JFK, will be painting murals on the rail trail surface uh, at the intersections with Straw Avenue, Chestnut Street, Kai's Street, North Maple Street, and Bardwell Street. Uh, and there are already some beautiful murals that have been uh, painted by uh, Straw Avenue. Uh, so please come check them out. Thank you. Fantastic. Councilor Nash. Thank you, Council President. I just wanted to do a quick thank you to a number of volunteers uh, who over the last few weekends helped worked on conservation areas in down in Ward 3. And um, you know, they were picking garlic mustard and they were picking up litter. Uh, folks are Dan and Kokoro Bensonoff, Unakoy, Lola Reed, Tyler Sh Shuneman, John Mayer, Lynn Yanis, Ellen James, Claudia Lefko. Oh, Mac Everett's on this list too. Uh, um, Amanda Pachomsky, Jennifer Normanly, Becky Shannon, Brittany Hathaway, and Elliot. Lola Reed, again, because she was so uh, prolific in her work. Susan Parker, Barry Nigrosh, Bob Reckman, Vicki Van Z, Nate and Jonathan Brody, Greg Kerstetter, and two ladies from Henry Street. Lori and her mom, Marge, we didn't get their last names. But anyway, I just wanted to publicly thank them for uh, their volunteer work. Thank you. Councillor Foster, did I see your hand? Okay, Councillor Foster, then we'll go to Councillor Labarge. Thank you. I wanted to use one minute um, to recognize that, that earlier in this council term, we passed a resolution calling on all local public officials to condemn and denounce any and all anti-Asian sentiment in any form in and around our city. And I couldn't let, let the public comment that was um, insinuating um, that the, the Chinese responsibility and uh, insinuating anti-Asian sentiment for coronavirus, I couldn't let that pass uh, without bringing that up. So. Um, that's not something I'm comfortable with hearing here. Thank you very much for that. It was not comfortable or appropriate to hear. Councillor Labarge. Yes, thank you. Um, I wanna thank the many residents. Two weeks ago on a Saturday, um, we did a cleanup and I'm not gonna go through the whole list of people. Um, and I wanna thank them. We did all of Park Hill Road bagged up trash, some of the stuff I'm not going to even talk about. But we had children with parents working with us. It was a happy day two weeks ago on a Saturday. We started at nine o'clock in the morning and some of us got finished at two in the afternoon. Then again, I want to thank my residents on Pertspit Road, who did a fabulous job also cleaning up Florence Road, I mean, Birch Pit, um, Birch Pit Road. So thank you, thank you from my heart. It was well appreciated. And we had nice, clean, two big, large streets done. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. Councillor Quinlan. Uh, just a quick one for the council. Last week, the Massachusetts Senate voted unanimously to pass a $400 million bond bill to finance a new Holyoke Soldiers Home. Uh, I think this looks like a great development uh, after, uh, you know, it, it had also passed unanimously in the House, uh, because, and primarily because Governor Baker is the one that proposed it first. So I think it's got everything it needs to, to happen. I want to thank Councilor Barge for her partnership on the resolution that this council passed and to uh, my fellow colleagues for passing it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other announcements? 
All right. Seeing none, uh, Mayor Narkowitz, I believe you have an update for us. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Council President and members of the Council. Um, I did want to kind of give an update on uh, municipal broadband. Um, I heard uh, folks uh, talking about it a little bit in public comment tonight. Um, as you know, um, we are in the middle of a uh, sort of two-phased uh, study process um, that has, was funded through our capital improvement program. Um, we contracted with uh, Design 9 Incorporated, uh, their broadband planning firm, um, to do sort of a two-part study for us. First was a uh, market study to both uh, residents uh, as well as businesses in the city. And, um, uh, and so I wanted to tonight uh, give some of the uh, preliminary results of that, um, of that study. The study closed officially at the end of April. Um, data is still being tabulated because paper, some of the paper uh, surveys that we mail to all households are still sort of trickling in. So uh, these are not the final exact numbers. Um, uh, but uh, I did want to um, give some of the some of the preliminary numbers tonight that, that came out of that survey, the, the sort of the top line um, information as uh, survey uh, uh, folks would would use. Um, so first off, uh, we had 2,800 uh, residential survey responses um, and 123 business survey responses. Now, if you think about that, we've got 11,292 households in the city. So that means we had a approximately a 25% uh, response rate um, from households. Um, I told the, uh, the Design 9 folks when we met with them that you know Northampton uh, likes taking surveys and, um, and they actually reported that in the more than 30 uh, plus broadband surveys that they've done around the country, the typical response rate is about 10 to 12 percent. So 25 percent is um, is a really uh, strong response, and obviously, I think provides us with really good data. So, uh, so for the residential survey, again, um, the the um, the respondents who responded, 88 um, percent of those who responded indicated that they needed better internet service. 98% um, of respondents ranked internet access as very important to their household. 71% um, indicated that access to affordable high-speed broadband um, influences where they choose to live. 49% um, of respondents have someone using the internet for education several times a week. And a total of 63% of households have someone using the internet for education at least once a month or more often. 70% um, currently have someone working part-time or full-time from home. Um, and then in terms of uh, satisfaction, dissatisfaction with their current provider, 39% uh, of respondents were reported being dissatisfied or very dissatisfied with their current internet provider. Only 22% uh, reported being satisfied with their inter internet provider. And only 4% uh, reported being very satisfied with their current internet provider. Uh, provider. Um, and then sort of finally here, 97% of those who've responded are, are interested in having access to fiber delivered internet service. 98% of respondents, let me say that again, 98% of respondents uh, believe the city government should facilitate better and more affordable internet service. Um, and 87% indicated that having competitive choice of providers is very important um, or important. So a really um, First of all, a, a, a great sample size of nearly 25% of households and some fairly strong um, opinions, um, uh, I think, favoring uh, us moving forward and um, doing more uh, exploration and hopefully implementation of, of, a, of a broadband alternative. On the business side, um, again, similar, um, you know, in terms of um, uh, the need for better internet service, 86% responded that they needed better internet service. 92% um, of the businesses ranked the internet as important or very important to the success of their business over the next five years. 39% um, um, respondents were dissatisfied or very dissatisfied with the speed and reliability of their current internet service. 
Um, 17% of businesses reported that uh, internet service options affected their decision to relocate or to stay in the city. Um, and again, similar to the residential, very high interest in fiber delivered internet, 94% of business respondents uh, were interested. 90% uh, of business respondents said they would likely or very likely uh, switch to a faster and more affordable uh, city government developed network. And 80% of business respondents indicated that a choice of competitive internet providers was very important or, or extremely important to them um, in terms of running their business. So those are the, again, they're not the final results because we still are working to tabulate um, all of them, uh, when they, when the, especially when the remaining uh, mail, mailed in surveys are, are tabulated. But um, you have an order before you later in the council uh, meeting, um, which is going to be a second uh, vote on, um, on the municipal light uh, uh, plant authorization. Mm -hmm. But um, we will be meeting with Design 9 to um, begin moving forward with phase two, which is the actual technical feasibility uh, part of the study. Um, but I wanted to report back to the community and actually thank the community for the incredible um, uh, participation rate uh, in this important survey. We actually were running a lot of surveys um, at the same time about a lot of different issues. And um, clearly this was a, one of high importance to people as, as evidenced by the response rate. So thank you to the public and to businesses for participating. Um, and obviously I think we've, we've heard a pretty clear message that, um, that we need to continue uh, working on pursuing uh, a municipal broadband option. So we will continue to do that. And as part of that will happen. We have an opportunity to do that later on in your agenda, but obviously uh, the technical um, uh, feasibility study will be, will be the next critical piece in terms of laying out um, what the next steps are for making that a reality. So that is my communication. Thank you. I agree that that is a clear message received um, and join you in thanking the community and um, participating in, in letting us know what they think. Um, are there any, anyone have any questions or comments? Councillor Dwight? I, first of all, nothing like a pandemic to really drive home the the critical need, the critical utility and its value and our understanding of it. It's now how people access their government. It's now how people access their health care and education. Hopefully that will not continue to be at the level that we're experiencing now. But many people, the the economy and jobs are moving towards the this critical utility and reliant on that. And as such, also the whole social justice and social equity issue actually hinges on this because with the digital divide, you actually create not only an economic disparity, but you maintain uh, a separation disparity from access to government education, to opportunity, to healthcare, to all the things that are currently already wheezing and uh, are problematic for particularly for people who, uh, who do not have the means to to subsidize um, Wi-Fi. I want us as we move forward to continue to keep in mind that whatever system we establish that that be a priority as we as we um, as we finally evolve and and move into the center. <laughs> move in solidly into the century and how we're going to address the issues that face us and that we, we address every day now. And I want that to not just sort of be like a, yeah, it's great for businesses. It's great for, uh, it's great for gaming. It's great for, you know, you know, streaming movies and stuff. And oh yeah, in social justice too, I guess. No, I want social justice and equity to be primary personally. I mean, ultimately, whenever this happens, and I believe it will happen, I really won't get a chance to vote on it. So I'm just sort of asking my colleagues who will continue on that they will will, will do that. I'm actually confident that they would, but I'm just saying my piece on that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Okay, seeing none, thank you very, very much, Mayor Narkowitz, for that. 
update. Um, and we are going to move on to resolutions. First one is 21.266, a resolution in support of workers of the Hampshire Gazette. This is on first reading. I'm going to read it. Um, this is upon the recommendation of Councillor Karen Foster, Councillor Marion Labarge, Councillor Rachel Mayori, and Councillor Gina Louise Shara. Uh, 21.226, a resolution in support of workers of the Hampshire Gazette, whereas the Daily Hampshire Gazette has been an institution in our community for nearly 235 years. And whereas the Gazette has tirelessly chronicled the triumphs, tragedies, and history of the people of the Connecticut River Valley, keeping the public informed, improving itself invaluable in exposing injustice in Northampton and beyond. And whereas local news is critical to a working democracy, ensuring communities have accurate information, uplifting marginalized voices, and providing crucial oversight over local governance. And whereas Northampton's municipal government relies on the Gazette to communicate issues, events, projects, and public notices to the public. And whereas the Gazette is made by its workers, and this council appreciates how they have persevered through a global pandemic, despite losing over half their staff, to keep the Valley informed of vital information, and in the early stages of the pandemic, making the important decision to provide coronavirus-related news to our community at no charge to readers. And whereas the Gazette's unionized workers have been in contract negotiations with the Gazette's parent company, Newspapers of New England, for nearly two years. And whereas the Gazette's workers deserve protections against the outsourcing of their work, as well as a contract that provides for a fair wage with cost of living increases and remains intact no matter who owns the newspaper. And whereas the Gazette's workers who were laid off deserve the opportunity to be rehired if their positions return to the paper. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Northampton City Council stands in solidarity with the workers of the Daily Hampshire Gazette and asks the newspapers of New England to swiftly bargain a contract that improves the well-being of its workers, which will strengthen the newspaper and help it continue for years to come. We call on newspapers of New England to invest in the Gazette and its workers and make a commitment to local ownership. Be it further resolved, the Northampton City Council recognizes the importance of the Daily Hampshire Gazette to our region and encourages our local community to support the Gazette to help maintain the financial viability of this critical source of local news. Be it further resolved that the Administrative Assistance City Council shall send a copy of this resolution to U.S. Senators Elizabeth Warren and Ed Markey, U.S. Representative Jim McGovern, Senator Joe Comerford, Representative Lindsay Sabadosa, Newspaper of New England President and CEO Aaron Julian, Daily Hampshire Gazette Publisher Sean Palmer, Editor-in-Chief Joan Livingston, and the Pioneer Valley News Guild. Um, Councillor Dwight. Yes, I, uh, because of a uh, family relationship with the ownership, it's, uh, I think it makes sense that I recuse myself from the discussion and debate and vote. So if you'll forgive me, I'm checking out. Okay. Um, I need a motion. Move to approve, please. Second. Second. Motions made by Councillor Quinlan, seconded by Councillor Labarge. And I will start with one of the sponsors. Someone, uh, let's start with Councillor Mayori, please. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so when the Gazette was, you know, started having financial um, issues, you know, a while back, I realized how much I take for granted that we have this uh, independent quality newspaper here in Northampton and started really thinking about it. You know, as a city councilor, I rely on the Gazette uh, to keep my constituents informed and in the loop and the public informed. And my constituents and the public in turn rely on the Gazette to hold myself and other elected officials accountable. It's an integral part of the, the democratic process. Local journalism is not just a nice thing, it is in fact critical to a healthy functioning democracy. Decisions made at the local level reverberate sideways and up and it's crucial that these decisions are made by an informed public. Ultimately, I believe local news should be considered, you know, just like high-speed high internet, a public utility. Uh, it, you know, in any case, I. I think we need to support viable models that are, you know, that are equitable for workers and more sustainable. Uh, in any case, I, I'd like to kind of also really see this resolution as a big thank you to the workers of the Hampshire Gazette for over 235 years of service and for going above and beyond, particularly in this last pandemic year. And I'm grateful for the community connection you fostered in a year of isolation and disconnect. And I truly hope you receive 
a, a deserving contract. Quality news coverage means providing a healthy work environment and a living wage, wage and benefits to all those who work to make it happen. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor LaBarge? Yes. Um, my family has been highly involved of having the Gazette delivered to our house for over 40 something years. And I am very honored to be in support of our workers of the Hampshire Gazette. I feel that that union shouldn't have to be going through what they've been going through for two years. I know I belong to a union way back, way back. And why do workers have to fight for something that is their right, their right of a good pay, a good pay, their right to not to be able to just wait for two years, unacceptable, just unacceptable. I think our workers at the Gazette have, have done valuable work for our community. And that is very valuable. Where are the rights of our essential workers at the Gazette? There is no question about it that for two years, which ups, upsets me and many, many people in our city, city, that they are fighting for something that should not be taking that two years. And I'll constantly repeat that. They are asking for something, a raise, a raise. They have worked under bad conditions of layoffs at the Gazette, layoffs, not one or two, several. Our Gazette depends on our reporters, our photographers, and like we just heard Councillor Rachel Muir talk, there is value with all our workers at the Gazette. I do have to say, and I've seen this happen, belonging to a union myself. They linger you on and linger you on. And then all of a sudden, yes, they're going to do this and do that, and they stand back. What happens? Then they bring in these awesome law firms, and I mean awesome. And it's just to linger them on. And then what happens is, do they get that raise that they're asking for? No. What happens is the move starts. The big move starts. More layoffs. Well, I am telling the whole Gazette, all the employees, I'm with them 100%, 100% to fight what you are fighting for. And I am hoping that a compromise will be made soon. There's no reasons to be hiring lawyers on the outside when you can make things happen very quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Foster? I'll be brief. Thank you so much to my co-sponsors and, and Councilor Mayori um, for, your, you know, uh, for your hard work on this, um, Councilor Sharon, Councilor Labarge. Uh, I just wanted to say, you know, that we know that there, a business or an organization or a city is made up of the people who are running it and doing the work. And we've seen that with the Gazette, some, um, some really fantastic reporting that has shown a spotlight on local issues. I, I know a public commenter earlier brought up the um, series on um, wage theft and undocumented immigrants. And I, I remember that that very vividly from a couple of years ago. It was a very important um, series of stories. Um, and we know it takes time and work. I have, it's a, it's a rare story that I haven't had some involvement with where I haven't had multiple conversations with the reporter or the photographer, double checking the spelling of the name or did, you know, wait, what exactly happened here? You know, and, and double checking and, um, you know, that that takes time and it's a lot of behind the scenes time um, that's going on. Um, and, you know, the Gazette, it holds, as was mentioned earlier, but it holds your local government accountable. Um, you know, that, that, that um, 
you know, there's been studies done that municipalities with a strong local news presence actually have lower borrowing rates um, and that's connected to accountability. And so it's as important as, as Councilor Mayori said, for us to disseminate information, but also for the community to have accountability to its own institutions. Hampshire College was brought up, your municipal government, um, it's very important for that accountability. And I, I also call on the community to support the Gazette as well, um, you know, so we're, I uh, support the Gazette's union and um, their work for uh, a fair contract. And I also call on our community when, when you know, if a paywall is hit, those who can, um, you know, to subscribe and help financially support the Gazette um, to help keep uh, independent local news uh, here in Northampton. Thank you. Um, I'll just, I'll also be brief. Um, and, you know, a key to a, healthy democracy is an unbiased media. And we know what happens to communities that lose their local newspaper, the newspaper um, that Councilor, as Councilor Foster just said, that reports and um, informs them about their government and the important issues that are in their community. Um, and also to, to echo what Councilor Foster just said, a newspaper is people. That's, that's, what, it, that's what it is. And it's absolutely critical that their work is respected and that their work is valued and that their work remains in the community. Um, so I thank the sponsors that my co-sponsors very much for this. Um, and I hope that the council agrees. Thanks. <laughs> Councilor Quinlan. Thank you very much, uh, council president. Thank you very much to the sponsors. Um, my first job as a young boy, I delivered the Gazette after school. It was an afternoon paper there. Uh, then, um, you know, I, my route was, was where we lived on Fifth Avenue and then Franklin Street and Crescent Street and Bancroft, including delivering uh, the paper to Francis Crow's home. Um, as a teen, I worked in the press room, uh, putting together the bundles, stuffing in the advertisements uh, for the trucks. And during our adult years, my wife worked in circulation for a number of years. Actually, the 401k she earned there uh, at the Gazette was the down payment for our first house. Um, I read it every day. It means a lot to us. And I noted recently that the Gazette closed nominations for the second annual Francis Crow Humanitarian Award. I was thrilled to hear from Ruthie Woodring during public comment, who was the first winner. Um, but I wonder, what would Francis Crow think of the use of her name by an organization that lays off her neighbors. Dolores Huerta once said, organized labor is the only way to have a fair distribution of wealth. I would dare to say that here in our little city, a great part of our wealth is our access to superb locally written information and news. The workers of the Daily Hampshire Gazette have given us plenty of that wealth over the years. And now I believe I and we will stand with them, the organized workers urging the newspapers of New England to negotiate in good faith with the Pioneer Valley News Guild and to bring our printing and reporting home. Thank you, that was lovely. And you know, I now wanna see a picture of you as like newsy little Michael with your little hat. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, any other comments? <laughs> yes. Councilor Nash. Thank you, Council President. So, you know, I just want to acknowledge that for me, I, I, I am in support of this resolution, but I am a little uncomfortable that we as council are wading into uh, collective bargaining matters that are currently going on. And I, I want to emphasize my support here um, of this resolution is the call for the, um, both the, the, the company and the workers to come together in collective bargaining to resolve this matter. And that in, in the spirit of that particular whereas, I, I, am, I am in favor of supporting this resolution. But I, I just, I'm always cautious that when we, we start to delve into uh, into collective bargaining si uh, situations where, um, you know, frankly, th they can be messy, they can be difficult, and, and they are the best thing that we have for re resolving uh, labor management matters. And, um, but, 
even though I have that on comfort, I, I will be voting yes. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? You know, I'm just, I'm, does anyone, oh, maybe Councilor Jarrett just has his camera off. I was worried that we lost Councilor Jarrett, but, oh, you're there. Okay, just checking. <laughs> um, all right, any other, any further comments? Seeing none, uh, roll call please, Laura, on a first reading. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. And Councillor Foster. Yes. Okay, that passes in first reading. And we are moving on to 21.267, a resolution in support of the recommendations of the Northampton Policing Review Commission. This is on first reading. And this is uh, upon the recommendation of Councillor Rachel Maori and Councillor Michael, Michael J. Quinlan Jr. Um, whereas the mayor and city council of Northampton committed to quote, actions at the local level to combat public health crisis uh, crises of uh, systemic combat, it's, it should be combat the public health crisis maybe of systemic racism, end quote, by creating the Northampton Policing Review Commission and charging the commission to study these complex issues and recommend reforms to the current organizational and oversight structures, municipal funding allocations, and policies and ordinances that together can transform how the city delivers policing services while ensuring community safety, uh, equitably, and justly for all. And whereas the Northampton Policing Review Commission met that charge through dedicated work holding three public hearings, more than 70 meetings of the full commission and subcommittees and countless hours of research. And whereas the Northampton Policing Review Commission's final report underscored the importance of building a new system that reflects Northampton's values and is designed to promote the care, health, and well-being of everyone in our community at no one's expense. Whereas the Northampton Policing Review Commission is uh, in the reimagining safety report states, quote, the Department of Community Care be established and funded in FY 2022 and fully operational in FY 2023, end quote. And whereas the Northampton Policing Review Commission in the reimagining re safety report states, quote, the commission recommends that this department be intentionally independent from the Northampton Police Department, but open to collaboration with all city departments. Given the nature of the responsibilities we are recommending this department take on and the recognition of racism itself as a health crisis, we advocate that the department be situated underneath the Board of Health, end quote. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Northampton City Council supports the recommendations outlined in the final report of the Northampton Policing Review Commission. Be it further resolved that the Northampton City Council commends the members of the Northampton Policing Review Commission for their effort and dedication in Northampton. Be it further resolved, the Northampton City Council urges the mayor to establish a Department of Community Care in this fiscal year and fund it by at least $882,602 in the FY2022 FY budget. Be it further resolved that the City Council recommends that given the nature of the responsibilities that are recommended for this department to take on and the recognition of racism itself as a health crisis, we advocate that the department be situated underneath the Board of Health. Be it further resolved that the administrative assistant to the city council shall send a copy of this resolution to Mayor David, J Mayor David Narkowitz, Health Director Meredith O'Leary, and the commissioners of the Northampton Policing Review Commission. <clears throat> Commission. Um, Move approval, please. Second. The motion is made by Councillor Dwight, seconded by Councillor Mayori. Uh, would one of the sponsors like to speak? Why don't you go ahead, Michael? Okay. Yeah, I think you were commissioner. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Councilor Maori, for inviting me to partner with you on this resolution. And thanks, uh, as mentioned in the resolution, and as I mentioned before as well, thanks to the members for the uh, NPRC for the recommendations you worked so hard to create. Um, you know, I, I really joined this resolution uh, because I felt that, that we had a really interesting discussion when the recommendations were presented to the council, but I didn't feel we discussed them you know, in, in detail ourselves. And I, and I really wanted to try to create space where we could have that discussion. I think the community has sent us emails and phone calls and, and letters to the editor that we've seen uh, 
you know, asking for our feedback basically. And so I wanted to, you know, I was interested in being part of this resolution based just to get the discussion here in the council. Uh, it was important to me to, to have that, that conversation. Um, that said, um, you know, there's a lot of language in this, uh, in this resolution, but you can really nail it down to nine words. And it, it could have been these nine words and I would have signed on perfectly fine. Whereas we commend the commissioners and support their recommendations. That's it, that's all it had to say for me. Um, so there's some language there that I know some people have thought about one way or another. Everything that's in quotes uh, in the resolution came right out of the report. Um, so I just, I'm happy to discuss any of the language, but ultimately those nine words are what this is about for me. Thank you. Yeah. Councilor Mayor? Yeah, just, you know, so as, as Michael said, we, we just felt it was important that the council as a body uh, who helped charge the, the police re review, the policing review commission with its mission, express and affirm it, it, its formal and collective support for the commission's final recommendations. Um, the, the community deserves our feedback and we, we didn't really get a chance to do that at, at the presentation. And I, I really feel like those who serve so thought, thoughtfully and tirelessly on the commission deserve no less as well. I'm gonna uh, leave it short, and, but we can, you know, I can answer more questions about it. Okay, Councillor Dwight, then Councillor Thorpe. Um, so I'll pile on and once again, thank uh, the commissioners and for their work and their, and, and their advocacy and their vision. And, and the energy that they've invested in this. And their very loud statement about their, one, their commitment to the community and two, the commitment to the cause of justice. I have some questions relative to this, a number of questions actually, as, uh, as Councilor Quinlan kind of hinted at that that was likely to come. One of them is the issue of the Board of Health. Uh, now, while that was a recommendation from the commission, the fact is, is that the Board of Health is an unfunded department, more or less. It's actually, and in fact, enjoys special, I've mentioned this before, it has actually special state-granted authority that doesn't, um, that, that does not conform with, say, representative accountability. I, I think the Board of Health should be uh, worshipped, particularly as we emerge from the pandemic. But the fact is, is that, and, and, and I understand the impulse because of the declaration of a health emergency, but they're not an agency and that's a problem. And I was wondering, did you, did anyone consult with the board of health or the, the uh, health director about the possibility of assuming this new department that will have a budget that they would have to be managed? And um, I, I would be interested to know what their response was. Well, I, I think, um, to be honest with you, what, what I think it should say health department there, right? It should be part of a city structure. Uh, and I think that even Councillor Jarrett, when we had the discussion about uh, this being a municipal office, uh, mentioned that, that, that it would be part of the city structure. So I, I think that's actually a mistake in the report. It should say health department and not board of health um, first. Um, and second, the conversations, one, one member of the board of health uh, was, was a, commissioner, uh, was a police and review commissioner. And I know that she had had discussions with the, with the health department, but in this particular case around this resolution specifically, I, I didn't, and I don't believe Council Mayor had a discussion with the health director at this time. Uh, can I follow up? I, yeah, I have a sure. couple of follow-ups. Well, in that, in that case, I, I'm a little uncomfortable making the, embedding that in the resolution because I, I, <laughs> I well, I understand, and we say these are aspirational documents, and this is a document, as you said, that could be summarized in, 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 in nine words. It's uh, now also, we've heard the number, of course, of $882,602 repeated multiple times this evening, which has been asserted that that was the um, money that was cut from the police department by this council in the budget. I've I would like to actually go, if we could, and actually talk with the mayor about this, since he's here, and just get some clarity on that particular amount, because that number has been tossed around pretty frequently, but Councilor Quinlan or 
Councilor Mayori, if you want to respond. I, I, I would just quickly respond. The 882,000 was not what was cut by this uh, council. It was, our, our cut was 690,000 and 200,000 was cut by the mayor before we ever even voted. Uh, so that's, but the 882 represents that, those two numbers together uh, in, in discussion. Um, if, if the council has no objections, I, I would like to direct that question to the mayor. Okay. Mayor Narkowitz. What is um, thank you, Councillor. Yeah, this is a question I've gotten many times and I've um, responded to folks about it. Actually, in council meetings like this and in um, and, um, email communications, and uh, it's been a, a popular topic with um, press interviews. Um, so, I, you know, I think the, I guess the sort of the, the way that I've found to explain it is to kind of go through the chronology and Councilor Ken Quinlan just mentioned it. So um, I, I submitted a proposal in May of, of 2020 um, uh, that basically, you know, was a level service uh, budget for the police department of, you know, 6.9 million or 6 you know, million, 913, 403. Um, and as part of the larger budget, and um, and but but it's important to say that that budget relied on nine hundred and thirty five uh, and twenty dollars in uh, fiscal stability funds to balance that overall budget. That's an important thing to sort of keep in mind. Um, then fast forward, um, you had your first uh, meetings in in June, um, and then eventually. Uh, you had a vote on the first, uh, you came to a vote on a first reading on June 10th. I actually revised my uh, budget at that point prior to that. Um, so I actually lowered the, I, I lowered the amount of the general fund operating budget and I lowered the amount that I was proposing um, uh, for the police department. Um, you know, that was again by the 212-645. Um, so that then basically, um, lowered the amount that we would need to draw from the fiscal stability fund um, in order to balance the budget. So that lowered it to 722, 375. So that was sort of the, the, the revised proposal that I, I put before the council following, um, you know, following the, the discussion and public discussion. And obviously a lot happened between May 18th and June 12th, 10th, as we know. Um, so, when the council then took the first reading vote on that budget and passed it unanimously, uh, that was sort of the that was the that was the, the the new sort of proposal for 21. Then fast forward to June 18th, um, uh, second reading on that budget, and the council uh, voted to reduce it um, reduce the budget by 10 percent, which was the equivalent of the 669 957. Um, and so then the final budget that was ad adopted by the council was that 100 million 192079 number. Um, and so the budget then relied only on 52,418 in non-recurring uh, fiscal stability stabilization fund revenue. Um, then you have to go to November um, when we came back to you and, and um, because of the lagging revenues and I asked for a mid-year appropriation from the Fiscal Stability Fund um, to basically uh, shore up um, local revenues so that we could set the tax rate. Uh, so you approved unanimously a, a mid-year appropriation of 358,949, um, which then basically um, the same bottom line budget for uh, the general fund was in place, but it meant that we were now relying on uh, 411.367 in non-recurring -recur fiscal stability fund revenue. Um, so basically we began the process with a projection that we would, we would need to use about 935 of fiscal stability funds to balance the budget. Um, and it ended up, you know, in the present, as we close out the budget year, uh, that the budget's built on 411.367 in non-recurring fiscal stability funds, which is a, you know about a difference of about 523. But I keep emphasizing the stability fund because um, I guess the the, the 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 challenge that we've had is that folks have said that you know somehow we freed up operating revenue that could be moved to some other department. 
Um, and again, we, we, we were, it was a budget built with these fiscal stability funds, which again, something that was created back in 2013 as part of our fiscal stability plan um, to maintain um, and to sort of stabilize and, and uh, you know, allow us to maintain um, level services over the last nine years. Um, uh, and then of course, obviously, um, we've been very clear to the taxpayers that because this is one-time money and it is non-recurring revenue, um, if we use it, uh, it doesn't come back the next year. It's not, it's non-recurring. And so eventually the money runs out and we either have to make cuts or we have to um, go back to the taxpayers and ask for a, uh, an addition, another override and basically reset the plan again. Um, so I think it's important as we talk about this, um, you know, in terms of looking at what the cut was and and what funds the cut constituted, um, you know, that's that's what I've mainly tried to communicate to people, um, including at the time uh, when we were concerned that these funds, um, we weren't sure if if the budget we had set uh, back in June was actually going to be the budget that could get us through the fiscal year because of our concerns about what, what local revenues would look like. So, um, and again, fast forward to November and that's how it played out. So I think that's uh, in my discussions with people when we talk about uh, the numbers, um, that number that keeps getting used is a um, is the difference between a budget that didn't did, uh, didn't ex didn't get voted on didn't exist wasn't was a proposal but then got reduced um, and so uh, the idea that then at the end of that process there's eight hundred and sixty thousand dollars in operating revenue that was freed up in the budget um, is just not is just not true it would require us to then go back into the fiscal stability fund um, uh, for that $860,000, um, which at that point would have been up to, um, with the 411 that we were needing to use, um, you know, would have put us up, you know, into over a million and a half dollars uh, to be able to accomplish that. And in a year that we were um, uh, delaying the override, um, you know, we were laying off or, or eliminating um, over 20 full-time equivalent positions because of COVID-19. So I guess it's the context that I think is important. And so I understand that folks have taken that first number and subtracted it from the last number, um, but it isn't, it isn't, it doesn't represent, it, it's, 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 it's not recurring revenue and it doesn't represent um, the true cut uh, to the police department, um, even just looking at it, you know, year over year from 2021 to 2020. Um, I mean, from 2020 to 2021, that's not the cut. So um, I guess that's the, I've tried to explain it. It's um, people have uh, been frustrated because I keep talking about this um, fiscal stability plan and the fiscal stability funds. And, and, um, and it's not something that I just created for this conversation. It's something I've been sort of talking about uh, like a broken record uh, for the last, you know, eight or nine years. Um, and I've always been clear with people that these are not recurring revenues and you cannot spend them on, um, you know, you, when you spend, try to spend them on operating expenses, um, you are, um, going to then have to um, not only replicate them in the in the next year, but then increase that amount, and then continue to increase that amount um, to try to support operating expenses. So um, that's really the the explanation that I've tried to have with people about that number. So, and again, we're now in a budget year where we've just come off of um, the COVID nineteen um, pandemic. Uh, we're hoping that those uh, numbers are going to recover. We're hoping that um, uh, you know we'll be able to uh, balance a budget uh, without relying on significant use of the fiscal stability fund, so that we can uh, build another four to five years of stability um, using the override that was adopted um, in March of 2020. Um, so it's in that context that I'm concerned when I hear that that's the number. Um, you know, somebody mentioned that, you know, how could I just let that money, um, you know, that was freed up in the operating budget uh, not be utilized. Um, and that's really not a, um, a factual explanation of, of, of what those funds represent. So I guess that's my, 
again, overly, I thought I could explain it more clearly, but that's my overly complicated, um, but I think accurate uh, description of the funds. Thank you. If, if I, and I just, um, I'll finish my question and stuff. And then thank you, Your Honor, that more or less conforms with what I know, but to be perfectly frank, um, trying to follow it is difficult. <laughs> and, and, and I actually have a, a, I think a relatively fluent understanding of how this works, but I, and I actually do agree with your conclusion that on this, but however, trying to explain this or even understand it is, is difficult, particularly when we're discussing emotional numbers. And therein lies my difficulty here with having that number embedded in this resolution. Also, I, I have to say, I support every dimension of this, except for the specificity of determining a department, which we have not consulted with, or at least none of us have any uh, discrete knowledge or understanding of what that department head's opinion or thoughts about are. And the same thing with this number, this dollar amount, which is arbitrary. I, now, it doesn't seem likely, but the mayor, it also the mayor could even exceed this amount possibly. But the fact is to literally almost down to the penny dictate what the dollar amount is seems not a critical point to the thrust and the intent of what this resolution is. And so I, for one, would prefer that the uh, the sponsors consider removing those two items, but, um, but I, I will leave it to the rest of the council to discuss. And I will yield the remainder of my time. Uh, Councillor Le, uh, Council Barge first. Thank you. <coughs> um, I want to thank the mayor um, for presenting what you just talked about, about the money involved here and how it's being used. I have great concerns of two issues that Councillor Dwight brought up. And I have received calls as a counselor about this money being placed in this resolution. Right away, people are upset seeing that number that we're going to defund the police department. And as we heard Dr. Bucker speaking tonight, that with their recommendation, they never mentioned defunding the police, defunding the police. No. I also have to say that I have great concerns also of the letter received today, all of us counselors, and I had great concerns before that, which I had talked to somebody from the, um, who was a chair on the board of not talking not talking to anybody in that department, especially the Department of Health. They received that resolution and apparently there was great concerns that there was no communication or no transparency. So I am requesting the same thing that Councilor Dwight is requesting. If we could please move, remove the Board of Health on that, and also the amount of money. I think it's critical here about the transparency and the communication, definitely. I think the mayor did an excellent job because it's very hard for counselors to try to explain where we're at with that 800 and something thousand dollars. But I have a problem as a counselor of doing resolutions without talking to department heads and hearing how they feel about something. And I was very glad to pick that language up. And I was very glad that Cynthia Skarupski, I think that's her last name, had sent that resolution to Meredith. And to hear that there was nothing, they knew nothing about it. So I think it's important that we remove that Board of Health and also the figure of the numbers too. So, but I still want to thank the two sponsors. I, I agree about having a community care. There's no question about it. I fully support that 100%. But I think that we need to remove those two items. Thank you. 
Councillor Quinlan, did you want to respond? I just wanted to respond to one one thing, which is, um, you know, I'm I'm not sure that that the health director and the chair of the board of health didn't know about this. They were sent the the report when it was released in at the end of March. Um, you know, and this this language that's in the resolution was taken right from the report. It was not something that that Councilor Mayori or I wrote separately. So I, you know, I, I'm again I'm comfortable changing this resolution because I you know I feel that that I want the the council support here and I want to have this discussion. But but I'm not sure that this was a huge secret. Um, Mayor Narkowitz, oh, oh, Mayor Narkowitz. <laughs> I guess, I guess I wanted to say that I, I did speak with, um, I have spoken with uh, Meredith O'Leary about it. And, you know, in, I guess in fairness, um, she's been a little busy um, this last month and year and, and um, obviously the vaccination clinics and just all the other pieces. But um, she does have concerns and, 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 um, uh, and doesn't and is uh, just given all that her department is currently handling and um, not just during the pandemic, but their, um, uh, you know, the, the work they're doing um, around the, the various federal and state opioid uh, grants that they're managing, uh, the, the regional emergency preparedness uh, coalition that they manage. Um, uh, there's a bunch of other task force that are led out of the health department. Um, so she's deck is, um, is very concerned about it from a capacity standpoint. So, um, I mean, she's not, I'm, I'm not saying that she's, she's not opposed to the concept of it being, um, a, a, an independent department, but I think the concern is that it's, um, that it would be placed on, uh, under the board of health or, or, or certainly not the board of health, but the health department. So I can report that much, but again, um, these are all the conversations that have to happen going forward as we as we work on how we're going to structure this and how we're going to structure these new services. Um, that's part of the conversation. So again, I, this is a this is a resolution of the council. It's your uh, your purview to um, express um, you know your your uh, positions and feelings on on issues. And so I, I'm not going to tell you what you should or shouldn't say, but I'm, I will just provide you that bit of information um, that I can report directly. Thank you. Councillor Mayori. Yeah, let me just, um, I, I wanted to clarify, um, but this resolution and the recommendations have nothing to do with the funding, uh, the the budget, the police budget. And this is this money isn't new money. And, and maybe I was confused about how council, what Council Robard was saying. They're not requesting a new eight hundred, you know, thousand to be taken. Uh, maybe that's not what you were saying. Um, so, and I, you know, I do kind of wonder how the non you know, non recurring rev revenue. The plan was to put it in the police department. So I, I'm not clear as to. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm not clear why what the mayor said there because it seems like he was planning to put this in the police department budget. But in any case, uh, I what they really what they said in the final report was a minimum uh, of that amount of money. So I'm I you know if it was my recommendation from what I heard and gathered from my time listening to the commission, it's going it would it would be better to give more like a million dollars to a new independent department. Um, that said, I'm, I'm willing to amend this as, as Councillor uh, Quinlan is. And I think the most important thing is that this um, community care department be housed independently and outside of the police department. I just wanna be careful here to not make up my own recommendations because I really defer to the commissioners who did the deep dive so I have my own opinions, but I'm trying to really support what I read in the commission. Um, and that, you know, with the health department, of course they would have concerns when there's no outline about uh, staffing and funding. Uh, so I, I absolutely respect concerns. Uh, I also think that it's really the job of uh, the executive branch and, and the council to some extent to make decisions about that and taking in those concerns. Uh, so I'm fine with the idea that because, because I think it would, count, it would capture what the commission was 
really going for, which is to have the community care department outside of the PD. So I'm flexible on that. Um, I'd also like to take a moment just to say that um, that I think two readings tonight be, with the with the budget season as it is would be a, a good thing too. But I just put that out there. But in any case, I am open to those amendments. Um, but I also um, really want to stay as true to what the commission was trying to convey to us um, as I can. Um, let's go to Councillor Nash, then Councillor Thorpe, and Councillor Foster. Thank you, Council President. Um, so, um, so first of all, I you know I. I, I want to thank uh, the sponsors for the spirit in which they are presenting this resolution tonight. I have to say that when I read the first over the past few days as I've been reviewing it, I feel like I've been uh, am, is, is the goal of this to like pigeonhole me into something on the budget or a vote in the future. And um, and I, I I'm going to I want to acknowledge that that the goal here was was actually just for us to be able to have a conversation, um, which I think we need to have, and we're doing it right now, that these were really important recommendations. I don't think that um, us discussing in greater detail was our job um, following the present, at the presentation of the Policing Review Commission. It was really our job then was to ask questions and really listen as to, you know, what they were presenting and then take some time to process things. So I, I now that that, now that my back is down a little, I'm like, oh, well, this is great. Let's do this. Um, so um, I too, like uh, Councillor Dwight and Councillor Labarge, um, would ask that those two particular items related to uh, the the Board of Health and to the uh, the roughly nine hundred thousand dollars that those aspects be removed. But I would also like to see added to the resolution the other thirteen recommendations. There was the there is the Department of Community Care, which I think is basically it's it's like that's the the, the, the end goal in, in all of these recommendations. Uh, one of the things that I, I appreciate that the Policing Review Commission did was they prioritized, the prioritizing the recommendations. It doesn't say do them in this order. And in fact, as you go through it, it's kind of like, oh, Department of Community Care. But to get there, we need to do this step over here, like number eight, number nine, number 11, and, and that in some, that's how we're gonna get to the right place. And so I, I would like to see um, part of this resolution, all 14 recommendations included. That is my request. Um, to, the, okay. to the sponsors. That's your request to the sponsors. I mean, so generally what happens then is you would make a, a motion to amend and you would have your amendment ready. So I don't know if you have that ready, sir, but. <laughs> I do not have it ready. I did not think you did. Uh, get working. Um, Councillor Thorpe. Yes, I'm <laughs> taking in all this and I really want to thank uh, Councillor Maori and um, Councillor Quinlan for this uh, resolution and prior to all this going on, I had made my own notes and um, had received the email today um, prior to my note taking. And so I'm just going to go through what I had written down. I wanna first start by saying, <clears throat> I fully support acknowledging the difficult and very admirable work of the Police Review Commission. And I support the thrust of the recommendations in the commission's report. It is clear that in the months and years ahead, the city will implement a number of reforms <clears throat> aimed at how we approach public safety, including how we provide social services to those in need <clears throat> and how we place the city. But as the commission stated in the report, the scope of this is immense and the commission only tackle portions of the many issues that need to be addressed. So at this stage, <clears throat> my opinion 
is that we need to move forward expeditiously to begin implementing some of the reforms, but also to further study what needs to be done to make those reforms work most effectively. This resolution is well-intentioned, but I fear that it was prem premature for us to make decisions, for example, about where the newly proposed department should be housed. This resolution adopts the commission's recommendation that the uh, Board of Health is the correct place for a new department to be housed. <clears throat> now, I, I am not opposed to this, but I do not know what the practical or legal ramifications would be if we vest these new responsibilities within the jurisdiction of the Department of Health. For example, I didn't know what limitations might exist for the Department of Health under state law, how communications would work between the Department of Health and the police mm -hmm. or dispatch, what the mayor's authority would be, or for that matter, how our Department of our Board of Health views this proposal. Mm -hmm. For me to move this forward, we, be, we begin implementing many of the recommendations, like diverting you know, um, some of the calls, mental health calls to social workers. But if we are going to do this and get it right, we need to hear more from the voices such as the Board of Health, Dispatch, the Fire Department, the Police Department, and all of the community partners like social service organizations, including possibly Cooley Dickinson Hospital. I want to emphasize that I support the work of the Police Review Commission and I support the idea of the police reforms, but I'm also going to abstain from voting on this resolution because I did not think we knew enough to call upon the mayor to adopt a lot of these specific proposals. And, and when you look at items 14, where you're, when you're looking at um, some of the unarmed responses regarding traffic. Those are good ideas, but those things need to be looked at. We need to look at too, possibly, because I don't know this, maybe Councillor Dwight or someone knows this. We, we need to know what are some of the things at the state level or federal level that might hinder us going forward with some of the recommendations in this report. So I thank you everyone for your time. Thank you. Uh, I think Councillor Foster, you were next, yes? Yeah, um, and and um, you know, thank you I, uh, to the sponsors for bringing this forward and your spirit as well of of being able to have a discussion, which um, you know I think we all very much want to have. Councilor Thorpe, I, I so appreciated hearing hearing your thoughts, and it's really um, you know such a valuable opportunity. Um, you know, and it's interesting because the the two I'm not even going to call them concerns, but the two things that I was considering proposing uh, a, a small amendment to the resolution are um, uh, the same things that Councillor Dwight and Councillor Labarge brought up as well. And so I had time um, to think about that, um, but if the, if the sponsors are amenable um, to, um, sorry, it's late, my brain. Um, <laughs> if, the, if the sponsors are amenable to an amendment, I would like, to propose two friendly amendments um, to that, if that's something that you're open to. Okay. See a nod. I see, I yeah. see three, okay. three potential Sorry. amendments, yeah. but go ahead. <laughs> okay, so uh, walk me through the process. So do I make a motion or do I mention my proposed friendly amendments first? Um, so uh, you can- or, yeah, I'm sorry. So <laughs> go, go ahead. <laughs> um, you can make a motion with your amendments. Okay. So I would make a motion that the paragraph where it says fund it by at least $882,602 in the FY22 budget, we consider um, funded with a meaningful investment. And perhaps that's not getting to what the sponsors want of naming what a meaningful investment is. Um, so that that's one. Um, and then the, the second one, um, the second paragraph in the bottom, the be it further resolved, um, where it says we advocate that the department be situated underneath the board of health, um, that we advocate that the department be housed outside of the police department, because I think that's also getting at the spirit of what people are asking for without naming specifically uh, what the structure 
um, of a potential Department of Community Care would be. Second, with, with one possible addition on that, if I could, um, a meaningful investment that would assure viability, if we can include yeah, I like that. Much better, yes. Much better. Mm -hmm. So that's my second with the, an amendment to your amendment. That's the... <laughs> um, okay, so to the amended language, Councilor Jarrett. Oh, sorry. Could you repeat the amended language in full, Count, uh, Councilor Dwight, I guess? Just I didn't quite hear the last bit that you suggested. Well, actually, what I just, um, all I added on to uh, uh, Councilor Foster's was um, what she recommended was a meaningful investment. And I said that would assure liability, uh, viability. <laughs> Boy, it is late. And we're not even to the consent agenda. So that would assure viability. Thank you. Um, to the amendment, Councilor Mayor? No. No? Sorry. Okay. Any, um, <laughs> Councilor Jarrett, you're thinking? Yeah, Councilor Jarrett. Yeah, I, I do want to speak to the to the amendment um, because it is about the funding. I'm fine with the changes, um, but I do want to say, just, and I think Councilor Mayori alluded to this, that you know it's it's about how much we're funding public safety, and uh, if last year we didn't cut the budget or propose to, then a level service budget would have continued into this year. And I really don't imagine that there would have been a proposed reduction in this year in the police budget, although you know things have changed. So, um, so con in considering funding public safety, I think we are asking for an equal amount of funding as the mayor had proposed last year, um, of course, likely increased to continue to provide level services. Um, so I understand the math and, and I understand the fiscal stability fund, but ultimately it's, it's about, you know, we were, we were the, the mayor was proposing to fund public safety in this way. And we are asking for a similar amount or more um, it, when you add up all the public safety uh, <coughs> departments, including a potential new one. So I hope that that makes sense. Um, but I, I think the new language, and I think that's why that number is there because it's about, it's about that, that, equality of public safe of funding public safety um but i'm happy to go with with the councilor dwight's uh amendment and councilor foster's amendment as well thank you any further discussion on uh the amendments okay roll call please laura the barge <clears throat> excuse me oh you. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. You can abstain. Thank you. Um, Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. And Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Okay. Um, so now further discussion as amended. Councilor Mayor, then Councilor Nash. I just wanna point out that I believe that Chair Kennedy and um, Commission Member uh, Javier uh, Garrida Luengo are here if we wanted to recognize them to, talk, to discuss um, the amendment that possible amendment that Councilor Nash brought up. Um, we, Councillor Dwight. Well, there, it, it can't be a, in order to discuss it. It can't be a possible amendment. Actually, has to. Be oh, okay. Yeah. So I don't know if if Councillor Nash is prepared to present that amendment. Ah, I'm working like put it on the floor. There, I'm. I'm really close. Yeah. And you're really close. Okay. You're working on it, Councillor Quinlan. I am. Okay. Oh. Okay. okay. I think I got it. Okay. Meet me too. Go ahead, Councilor Nash. Oh, thank you for recognizing me. Okay, um, so I, I basically have pulled the the list of recommendations from the uh, the table of contents, and uh, 
and proposing that we add this as the third whereas before the whereas that mentions creating the new department. Whereas the Northampton Policing Review Commission recommended the following 14 recommendations, create a Department of Community Care, improve options for crisis response, promote the safety of the houseless community, reduce the risk of substance use, transition to peer and co-responders, improve the current complaint process, continue to provide some police response, create a strategic plan for the police department, um, establish data-driven staffing levels, establish safe work hour caps, conduct a needs assessment, engage the police unions, evaluate success, expand peer and co-responder functions. It's a very long list, but I think it's, I, I would like to see, the, I am making a motion to include this in the resolution. Motion has been made. Second. Seconded by Councillor Thorpe, was that right? No, it was me. Oh, sorry, Councillor Quinlan. Uh, discussion on the amendment, Councillor Foster. Uh, I would really love to hear from the sponsors of the resolution on on this amendment. Um, I, I was, I guess, my question is if the resolution is intended to highlight that what I'm hearing as the the very high priority of establishing a department of community care, um, and then we can, you know, these other priorities. Council Nash, you're correct. The Police and Review Commission studied them, felt they were important enough, they were included in the report. Um, I might need some more time to think about that as well. Um, but anyway, I would love to hear from the sponsors, I guess, what, um, how, that, how that is with you. Uh, Councilor Mayori? I would actually, um, because my intent is to really capture the spirit of the commission's recommendations, I would like to take a moment to recognize um, uh, Commission Member Luengo Garrido or uh, Chair Kennedy uh, to, to briefly hear what they um, they have to say about that. Javier has his hand raised, um, so oh, there, there uh, needs to be a motion though to recognize. Motion to recognize. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on recognizing? Uh, roll call, please, Laura. Councillor Mayori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. So I'm not sure if Councillor Thorpe would be called. Um, well, it's it's just a just it's just to recognize, so for right. the purpose okay, thank of, you. Yeah. Councillor Thorpe? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Foster? Yes. Councillor Jarrett? Yes. And Councillor Labarge? Yes. Okay. Uh, are you there? You have been recognized. <laughs> good, uh, good night, everyone. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Thanks for um, giving me the floor. And I would also encourage you to hear from Chairman Kennedy, who was mainly the one of the main drafters of the uh, of the report. Um, I just just want to clarify something. Um, a lot of the list that uh, Councilman Nash mentioned, it's a description of how the department should run and the, the different characteristics that the department has to have. So if you take a look to the, that list, it's literally the, the chopping list of how the department should run and who should run it. We talk about peer led, we talk about different things. So I just wanna clarify that first, right? Uh, second, uh, and this is a personal concern, um, the main, the main, and the and, and I think uh, Councilman Jared and Councilman Quillen can talk about this. 
the main point of the recommendation is the creation of the department as described, period. One of the things that, and, and I know uh, you got a letter from us, the H city council member, including the mayor, got a letter from us because we did feel that early on after the presentation of the report by the Northampton Military Commission in front of the city council, there was confusion. There was an intended misrepresentation of the recommendation. Um, and we addressed that in the letter that was sent to the city council and we talked with city council too. The main recommendation, the most important recommendation of the commission is the creation of the department that is accountable to those that it serves. And what Councilman Nash read, 90% of that it's are the characteristic of the department that how it has to be, uh, how it's formed. Um, I know that uh, Chairman Kennedy can talk a little more about that, but that's so far my, my contribution to this conversation. Um, Chairman, can, oh, there you, there you Motion go. to recognize. Oh, sorry, yeah, hold on. Motion to recognize <laughs> Chairman, um, Chair Dan Can Kennedy. Second. Motion's made and seconded, any discussion? Roll call please, Laura. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. And Councillor Maori. Yes. Okay. There we go. Good luck. <laughs> Hi everybody. Seems like we just did this a few hours ago. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think um, just to follow up on what Javier was saying, and I think this is important to, to think about, is that we didn't, as a commission, we tried to make sure that it was, it wasn't super formulaic in terms of how, like saying exactly how all of these things should be done. Uh, we wanted to leave that to um, the the um, legislative and the executive branch uh, where those powers exist because there are so many things that you know we ne we didn't necessarily know exactly what the process would be um, or thinking about you know I mean, these are the elected leaders um, you know and what their their decision process would be but um, when we did make our recommendations the idea was that there were the primary recommendations that started those were the immediate things to do they didn't it wasn't necessarily a step-by-step -step process, but th these were the key issues. Um, and the very first recommendation is that create a uh, Department of Community Care, because without that department, you can't really necessarily address all of the other things um, that we're looking at in meaningful and substantial ways that also are separate from um, the, uh, the models of policing that exist now. Right. And that was the key is that this department would house really public, they're really public health intervention models, um, which also made it seem like it would be a good fit to be either under the Department of Health or the Board of Health. The Board of Health has different, um, different considerations for its power and its scope um, related to city, um, to city matters too. So that's important to consider. Um, but the idea is that we have a department that is funded, it's strong and it can start to adopt um, some of those initial recommendations that it can start to get to train peer responders or higher trained peer responders, depending on, again, how um, things are structured. There's, um, that was the, the key part. Um, the other things sort of come as that department is established and starts taking on those roles. Um, so I think it's, it's it's not necessarily a prescribed formula, but but there is there is a little bit of an order of operations there, right? Um, I don't know if that that clarifies things or makes them more confusing. Um, uh, uh, Councillor Dwight, then Councillor Quinlan. Um, Chair Kennedy, um, would you feel comfortable in, in, in as 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 Javi basically just said that? some of them were essentially uh, elemental or s structurally important to what the commission division of the, uh, of, 
of the Department of Community Care would be like. Can you itemize those for us so that we can actually unfold that into the broader um, endorsement of that? Yeah, I can. I will give it my best shot. I am not at my best at the moment. I've already had some NyQuil to get over some allergies. But um, oh, you're right. You're running right parallel with all of us, so you'll be fine. Don't worry. You won't even remember this tomorrow. <laughs> um, but yeah. So um, primarily, uh, it was the creation of a department of community care um, that could respond, um, or that would house peer responders. Uh, so those are responders who are outside of the police department, who are trained, who have experience, um, lived experience, uh, dealing with a lot of the issues for mental health, substance use, um, and houselessness. Um, that this um, that ties into the sort of improve um, responses for houselessness. It would also involve um, peer respond or responders who can handle or could intervene and meet someone where they are. Um, in their path to recovery, um, if they use if they have substance use issues, so it's not coercive. So these are non-coercive models. So this is inviting somebody in. If somebody's having issues with substance use, they can intervene. They can help them. They can match them with the program that is where, that would meet them where they are. So if that's just immediate medical service, if that's fine. If it was um, directing them to recovery center that met with their sort of needs that's another option but it's not forcing someone into recovery before they're ready that doesn't help them right we know that that doesn't get somebody to just flip a switch and say good i'm not i'm no longer addicted right um so finding those different resources connecting them with those things the same thing for houselessness um, and other issues when it comes to um the sorry <laughs> think about what else did we have um, in here. So when it came to um, looking at other models for um, detail work or other things that reduce the footprint of police, right? Th that was the spirit of this, right? The ultimate goal of this report, reduce the footprint of police, reduce their contact, because that's what reduces the likelihood of um, extrajudicial killings. It reduces, um, it reduces the, the racist impacts of policing on marginalized communities, right? Um, nowhere, no one has a really good solution other than just reducing the footprint of a police, a police department in a specific area. So that, that's the main thrust of this. Um, but it also comes with, you can't just reduce the size of a police force, you have to create support systems. And that's what the Department of Community Care is meant to house. Um, if you just cut <laughs> um, without reinvestment and without that support, then it's gonna cause some problems. Of course, things are gonna go downhill a little bit, right? Because um, you're not responding, you're not funding a response to those issues, which is what the goal is here. Um, there are other things in there, like creating a strategic plan, um, establishing you know, staff levels um, and things like that. Those are sort of secondary. Um, they're important to do but um, they're not necessarily the, the, the most important. Like number one, <laughs> the number one thing should not be like is, um, establishing safe work, cap, uh, work hour camps, right? Um, does that answer your question? I feel like I'm rambling a little now. Well, no, it, and it does actually. Well, it clarifies it. I mean, I, I mean, for the purposes of our discussion of this particular amendment, it's particularly helpful um, because those last few items that you mentioned would be isolated and separate, would also be included in the endorsement language, but we should enfold the ones that are um, specific to um, the, uh, the Department of Community Care. The ones that actually, as you say, establish it, describe the parameters and the and and how it should be staffed, how it should move forward, and its responses, and th those seem integral to that and should not be iterated separately. That's I think, at least that's a concern I'm reading from you guys is that you you don't want them as just a shopping list of items that doesn't have any uh, relation to each other, and and so. I just want to make sure that as we craft this, I mean, this is something we're trying to endorse and to reinforce what it is that the commission um, is recommending. Yeah, we, it seems appropriate. It seems 
we should devote the energy in the adult discussion that would at least make it more more correct and more aligned with the intent of the commission. So you did great. Okay. Where are we? Well, to that amendment, yeah, I would, I would actually, I would defer to Councillor Nash to have him uh, hopefully reconsider the the um, the order by which he offered his amendments and how they would be applied. Uh, clarify what you mean there, Councillor Dwight. Well, as you just heard, the uh, concerns were that some of the items in that fourteen point list. Uh, were actually uh, relevant, more relevant to the, the establishment and management of the Department of Community Care, and some were separate, like uh, uh, the, the uh, strategic plan for the police department wouldn't have any necessarily direct relevance to the, uh, the department. So if we can fold the ones that are relative and relevant to uh, the Department of Community Care, and then the remaining items will be just added on in the amendment that you propose. Does that make does that come clear, or, or did I fog it no, up? I, I, can I respond? Yeah, I, I, I'm confused because the, the name of this resolution has to do with accepting the policing review report, and that it's not that that if the intent is to um, you know, to have a resolution to create a department of community care, um, then I then I'm misreading the intent oh. of the resolution. That um, that um, that I, the title of the resolution is. All right, this is not good. Let's. Uh, you know, I get into pulling up the wrong screens here. A resolution in support of the recommendations of the Northampton Policing Review Commission. And, um, and I, you know, in terms of these 14 recommendations that I, I, I see them all as, as, as um, these are recommendations we can work, many of these we can work on simultaneously and they all feed into each other. I think that a, in a, a, an evaluation of what our uh, police department needs to be doing, it's, it, it feeds into, it, it's one of these recommendations and it, and it very much frames what the uh, Department of Community Care is going to be doing. Um, I, I, I find these 14 recommendations, um, I, I think it's a pretty thorough list of items that we need to be checking off as 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 both gentlemen had shared that um that in order to create the department of community care but it's doing it's lay it's laying out the homework that needs to be done to make that department happen mm -hmm. so i maybe we're talking at different ends here but um I, you know, these are the recommendations. This, this, this resolution is titled in support of the recommendations. I think it's appropriate we put all of the recommendations in the resolution. And that's what this, my motion is. Right, I'm not, I'm not arguing that. I think they should all be included, but I'm talking about, um, segregating the ones that are relevant to the establishment of the department and then those that are separate as as was pointed out by both commissioners that um are are not part of now as was stated the the emphasis and the most critical intent was to establish this department and i think i i think if i'm reading the temperature of the room that there's no problem everyone's got no difficulty supporting that and endorsing that and encouraging that. And I would include the mayor in that discussion. I believe I, I believe I sense that from him as well. And then the other items we would list as uh, the remaining items that are not directly relevant to the establishment of that department would stay embedded in the resolution as, a, as supporting them, but separate, if you get my drift. So and I, 
like so basically we'll have two whereases one one listing off the the items that are critical to creating the department the other which are homework around uh, emergency services exactly that's why god made whereases that's right <laughs> <laughs> well you're asking me to write something at Let's see, what are we, after midnight here? Okay. Um, it's only 12.07, that's early for this council. Yeah, yeah we, we, we haven't even gotten to the first item uh, beyond the resolution, so just if it's any consolations, a whole lot okay, more. Okay, so, all right, I, I, I will work on that a little. You guys talk. Okay. I mean, is that what we want to do? Or, I mean, usually we do two readings, and I, I'm fine, you know, uh, there's, there was a request that we get both readings done tonight, I, I'm I'm fine pulling these things together, sending it off to the uh, the, the sponsors, and and we can add in these uh, whereas is these amendments for second reading. Councillor Dwight, if I may, I, I understand the 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 desire for an, a second reading, but the fact is is what what this resolution is principally the, the who this resolution is principally directed to is the mayor. I think the mayor already understands, even just by the gist of the debate and probably our conversations with him, what our intent is here. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. And I, I, I don't think that it's imperative that we have two readings tonight. I think that if, if, if rather that we want to uh, make a statement for the public, um, the public can also, those who have remained with us thus far, um, would get a sense of where the vote is going to go. But the fact is, is that I think the most, the most important audience, the most important year that we're directing this towards is well aware of what we're, what we're planning to do. And I wouldn't worry about that so much. The idea is to entreat the mayor to uh, proceed with all due urgency and deliberation towards work uh, presenting in his budget some, something that will uh, show uh, commitment to these recommendations. And I think you got that message. Um, so where, remind me, the amendments on the floor? Yeah, I think okay. it's, on, yes, it is. it's on page 13, right? Mm -hmm. this, is that what Jim Nash was talking about? If, 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 yeah, if I may recommend is that Councilor Nash withdraw the amendment. Either we vote on it tonight or we postpone for the, our next meeting, a vote as amended, and we could do two readings at the next meeting. Um, that um, because Councilor Nash is right, drafting this on the fly at wow. if, and after twelve is doing no one any good. And as I said, the message that needed to be delivered has been sent. I think rather clearly. But if, uh, that's my suggestion, is that we delay the vote until uh, the next council meeting. Um, Councilor Nash, you want to respond to that? I will withdraw my amendment and I will submit language for our, our next council meeting. An I, amendment. I mean, I, I could also, I mean, I'm not going to make an amendment, but I could suggest we could withdraw it and and ha and have an amendment that encompasses that we support all of the recommendations mm -hmm. um, that maybe they wouldn't need to be spelled out if, if we state that. Um, it's just an idea. Uh, Councilor Mayor, did I see your hand? Yeah, I was going to say it, that with that same uh, logic, we could, um, we could vote for it. And then we have the second reading uh, to, to then propose amendments. So rather than withdrawing them all, we just say we support all 14 recommendations. Yeah, I think but then we're not segregating. We're not I mean, we could say we support the report and its recommendations. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like if, if we say we support it in toto, that sort that encompasses all of it. But Councillor Foster. Um, I understand the sort of desire to separate them. Um, Councilor Dwight, I, I, I think that your idea of withdrawing the amendment, knowing that we get a second reading, um, but the part I, I 
do want to take a vote. I want to take a vote tonight on first reading if we know the intention is to come back with, with Councilor Nash's amendment, but with the um, recommendations listed out, but I, I wouldn't want to leave tonight's meeting without having um, taken at least one vote on it. Councilor Quinlan, did I see your hand before? Uh, that was pretty much what I was gonna say. I really would love to get a first vote done tonight. Um, and if we wanna if we wanna modify this at all, we, you know, two weeks from now we could do that. So thank you. Okay. Councilor Dwight. Uh, just just to remind everyone now that Councilor Nash is withdrawn his amendments, but the other amendments that we approved are embedded. So we will be voting on it as amended, but not amended as Councilor Nash had anticipated. Just to add to the confusion. But yes, I have no objection to voting on it tonight. I mean, insofar as the mayor will be presenting his budget at the next meeting. So at that point, um, right. we'll pretty much know his intent. So. Councillor Nash, did you want to? Yep. Did, did I actually officially withdraw it? I, I am withdrawing my motion. You did. <laughs> you did. <laughs> okay, it's withdrawn. All the question. Uh, may I have a quick bite at the? Oh uh, yeah, why not? I I let you all speak. Yes. Um, and then I wait. Um, okay, so I'm uh now I've got to like come up, pull myself together. Um. So I'm I'm very deeply grateful to the commission for their tremendous work and also for this resolution that recognizes it. Um, in addition to my gratitude, I feel like maybe I've um, had the real privilege of having the opportunity quite a few times uh, in the last few weeks to express my full support of the creation of a Department of Care um, in different venues. And so maybe I, I recognize that maybe I'm unique in, in having had those opportunities to do that um, directly to commissioners, but also um, in other venues. So um, so I'm, I'm glad that everyone can have that opportunity to, to express their full support for it. Um, and uh, I think it's very, you know, it's extremely important to build this new response system and department well and in a way that endures and allows for evolution. Um, and it will need a strong and stable foundation, which I commit to. So, um, so I appreciate uh, some of the amendments, the amendments we actually amended tonight um, that I think express that. Um, and that's, I guess that's the main gist of what I wanna say. Well, one other thing, which is that, you know, I, I know that it's, the budgetary aspects of it are complicated, but it's important for us to understand that because that's our job. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm glad that we had a further discussion on that um, because that it's important to understand what we did last year and uh, what cuts we actually made and then um, what happened throughout the year. Um, and to recognize that that was a, a budget in crisis and it's been a a year of um, deficit and crisis. So it's important for us to all be able to, to understand that part as we go into talking about the budget uh, at our next meeting um, or have it presented to us at our next meeting. So I think with, with that, I, you may now call the question or... I'm calling the question. Okay. Laura, roll call please on a first reading. Councilor Mayori. Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor Quinlan? Yes. Councillor Shara? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Foster? Yes. Councillor Jarrett? Yes. And Councillor Labarge? Yes. Okay, that passes in first reading as amended. And we are on to the consent agenda. Okay, um, on the con these are the items of the consent agenda, I will read them through. Um, then, oh, Councilor Jarrett? I'm sorry, uh, could I have a three minute recess? Three minutes? Three. Just yeah. you or all of us? <laughs> well, it would be all. <laughs> yeah, yeah could we make it five? Okay, yeah. we're gonna go five. So five. 12, 21 ish. Okay. Thank you.
are back and we are at the consent agenda. So again, I'm gonna read the consent agenda and um, then I will ask for any removals uh, because there is no discussion on the consent agenda. So these are the items. Um, the minutes are not ready, so they are not, we are taking them out. Um, we've got approve uh, 21.197 National Grid Verizon petition for installation of underground conduit on Damon Road. We had that hearing earlier this evening. Uh, or yesterday, so you want to look at it. Um, next, we've got 21.260, petition for secondhand dealer license for the Cancer Connection. It's a renewal license uh, at 375 South Street, and the applicant is Christine Quinn. Then we've got 21.262, application for business owner's permit, Jeffrey D. Miller, Cosmic Cab Company, renewal license. Address is 160 Main Street, number 8. 21.263, applications for seven taxi cab licenses, Jeffrey Miller, Cosmic Cab Cosmic Cab Company renewal licenses for taxi cabs for the following vehicles. 2008 Dodge Car Grand Caravan Gray, 2005 Dodge Magnum Gray, 2008 Dodge Grand Caravan Brown, 2010 uh, Dodge Caravan Gray, 2009 Dodge Grand Caravan Blue, 2008 Dodge Grand Caravan Black, 2007 Chevrolet Suburban Brown, 21.268. Reappointments to various committees for referral to city services to the Agricultural Commission, John J. Uh, Bobola, uh, 25 Old Ferry Road, Northampton, term July 2021, June 2024. It's a reappointment. Richard E. Uh, Jeske, 774 Bridge Road, Northampton, July 2021, June 2024, reappointment. Robert Volander, 460 North Farms Road, Florence, July 2021, June 2023, reappointment. Earl Chip Parsons, 137 Mill Valley Road in Hadley, July 2021, June 2023, reappointment. Central Business Architecture Committee, Joseph Blumenthal, 39 Chapel Street, Northampton, term July 2021, June 2024, reappointment, Urban Forestry Commission, Susan Lofthouse, 15 Star Street, July 2021, June 2024, reappointment, Council on Aging, Robert Dion, 87 Vernon Street, July 2021, June 2024, reappointment, Jean Hoos, 36 South Park Terrace, term July 2021, June 2024, it's a reappointment. Historical Commission, Dylan Gaffney. I think actually that has two Fs. Uh, 23 Marshall Street, Northampton, term July 2020, 2019 to June 2022. Reappointment, Barbara Blumenthal, uh, 39 Chapel Street, term July 2021, June 2024. Reappointment, Housing Partnership, Julio Alves, 35 Fort, uh, Fort Hill Terrace, it, uh, the term is July 2021, June 2024, reappointment, James Reese, 108 Coles Meadow Road, term July 2021, June 2024, reappointment, Parks and Rec Commission, Julia Chevin, 8 Cosmian Avenue, uh, July 2020, 2020, June 2023, reappointment, Planning Board, jo George Kohout, full member, 234 State Street, July 2021, June 2024, reappointment, Zoning Board of Appeals, Maureen Scanlon, 197 Nonatuck Street, July 2021, June 2024. It's a reappointment. Moving on to 21.269, applications for annual Sunday and weekday bowling licenses. This is for Northampton Bowl. Renewal licenses for weekday and Sunday bowling. Northampton Bowl, 525 Pleasant Street. The applicant is J. Michael Corley. And that is the we'll consent agenda. Consent Second. agenda? Second. Wait, 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 wait. Any removals? Yes, one removal, please. Okay, um, what would you like to remove? I'd like to remove Earl Chip Parsons, 137 Mill Valley Road in Hadley. Okay, um, any other removals, Councilor Foster? I'd like to remove Dylan Gaffney um, from that as well, from the consent agenda. Okay. It's, I think removal? it's a Scribner's error, but for purposes of discussion. Yeah, two Fs. Um, the term. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, well, okay, well, we'll we're gonna discuss okay. it. All okay. Right. Uh, any other removals? Seeing none, um, we need a motion on the consent agenda. I move the consent agenda minus the removals. Second. Okay. Motion made by Councilor Joyce, seconded by Councilor Nash. Roll call, please, on the consent agenda minus those removals. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor Quinlan? Yes. Councilor Shara? Yes. Councillor Thorpe? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Foster? Yes. Councillor Jarrett? Yes. 
Councillor Labarge. Yes. And Councillor Maori. Yes. Okay, the consent agenda passes. Now moving on to the removed items. So first is Earl Chip Parsons, 137 Mill Valley Road in Hadley. This is the reappointment to Ag Commission. Uh, Please. Second. Motion's been made by Councillor Dwight, seconded by Councillor Nash and Councillor Quinlan. Oh, I just wondered about um, Chip Parsons because it says that his address is in Hadley. I wondered if the mayor could just kind of speak to that. Uh, certainly, Councillor Quinlan. Um, the um, the Agricultural Commission, uh, the actual um, uh, uh, formation and charge of that uh, committee, the, the the establishment clause, um, actually provides that um, some members of the commission um, are not required to have residency in Northampton, uh, provided that they own or manage uh, agricultural land in the city. Um, and so uh, Chip is someone who has um, significant agricultural uh, farmland in the city. So it's on that basis that he's um, been uh, serving on the committee. Um, so that's sort of the, that's the reason why you have someone who's not a city resident, um, but he's somebody that's been sort of nominated by other farmers to be a representative on the commission. And he's been a, you know, a, a a great contributing member and he has lots of ties to Northampton and has been involved in the, in the fair uh, very actively for many years and has some um, lots of uh, deep roots in in the ward three uh, area of the city. So that's ship's backstory, but that uh, we are allowed to have non-residents on the agricultural commission provided that they own uh, or operate farmland in the city. Great. Thanks for that clarification. Okay, any further discussion on this uh, reappointment? Seeing none, roll call, please, Laura. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. And Councillor Nash. Okay. Yes. Um, moving down to Dylan Gaffney, I've confirmed Gaffney has two Fs, um, but Councillor Foster. Yeah, well, I just wanted to, move. we were going quickly, but the Sorry. term. Sorry, right, hold on. I have, to, I have to move approval first and put it on the floor. Second. <laughs> Motions are made and seconded. Go ahead, Councillor Foster. I just, it's hard, we were, we were going so quickly, but the term here is July 2019 to June 2022, right. and those years just seem off. Oh. Um, mm. Everything else is for a term beginning July, 2021. I just wanted to confirm that. Yeah, it looks like Mayor Narquitz is looking. How did you notice that? I, didn't, I noticed it when I was saying it. I got kind of caught on it, but. My I have a, a nickname, yeah. Councilor Nash of Speed Reader. Um, um, it's not always yeah, accurate, it, but that's it, a nickname. It's, um, it's not uncommon that somebody's reappointment will get delayed and being submitted and and you know for whatever reason sometimes an oversight sometimes uh the, we don't get the application back so I, I can't really give you i'd have to check with court to find out the backstory but this wouldn't be the first person who was you know being sort of retroactively appointed to the term um the rule is generally that you know if they're pending reappointment they continue to serve and so obviously this service uh, went on a little longer probably than before the reappointment happened. But that would that's the best that I can tell you, but I can do a little more research on it. And if there's a correction, we can bring back a correction to you to correct the appointment. Okay, any further discussion? Seeing none, roll call please, Laura. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Okay. We are going to recess for finance. Laura, will you please call the roll of finance? Sure. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Here. 
Councillor Shara. Here. And Councillor Thorpe. Here. Okay, it looks like we're uh, skipping the minutes because they're not attached and we're going to move on to financial orders. So 21.264 in order for the FY 2021 budget transfers. And so, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, upon the recommendation of the mayor, the following budgetary transfers be made DPW forestry parks and cemeteries on the PS side. Um, these are permanent salaries, and this is uh, taking 47, I mean, 40,000 out. DPW forestry parks and cemeteries, OOM side, grounds equipment, uh, transferring 40,000 there. Fire rescue, PS side, permanent salaries, um, transferring out 46,000. Fire rescue, OM, equipment replacement, transferring there the 46,000. Employee benefits, PS, medical insurance, 130,456. Other employee benefits, benefits PS, Medicare, 26,588. Uh, unemployment, PS, unemployment compensation, 23,668. Uh, health, PS, salaries permanent, 29744 The assessors on the PS side, permanent salaries, $8,004. Uh, mayor, overtime, transferring to 1475 Mayor, permanent salaries, 14000 transferring to. These are all transferring to going forward. Plan sustainability, overtime, 7995 Building inspections, PS overtime 13,750 building inspections PS salaries tech slash pro, uh, professional uh, 16,997 DPW administration PS permanent salaries 3,608 DPW snow and ice PS overtime 45,651 DPW snow and ice OM side uh, vehicular supplies 37,553 DPW snow and ice OM Snow removal supplies, 79,431. The assessors on the PS, permanent salaries, 26. We are removing 26,500. Assessors, OM, property re, uh, revaluation services, transferring to 26,500. Total budgetary transfers, uh, transferring uh, out 332,960. And same amount has been transferred to. Move a positive recommendation to full council. Seconded. Motions made by Councillor Quinlan, seconded by Councillor Labarge. Oh, Susan, you're still here. <laughs> Hi. Hold on. Hi, Susan. I didn't know you were still in this meeting. Still here. Um, <laughs> does anybody have any questions on any of the transfers? Mm -hmm. We really should think of something, right? Yeah. <laughs> How'd you do it? <laughs> oh, Councillor Quinlan's got a question. Oh, well, just for fun. What, uh, what is the equipment replacement and fire rescue? We'll make up one question. Uh, they have a uh, vehicle um, that uh, is on the capital plan for replacement next year. However, that vehicle needs substantial repairs now. So oh, we're gosh. just going to take that off the capital plan and uh, pay for it um, right now, um, which will save maintenance money. Great, thank you. It's actually, I can, it actually um, broke down on route two in somewhere out near like Fort Devens and had to be towed back. It, it's, it's in rough shape. so. It's not going to it's not going to last another year, so that's why we're just going to have them replace it now. So, okay, uh, Councilor Labarge. Yes, um, Susan, can you explain the mayor on overtime and the mayor on permanent salaries? Okay, the the mayor mayor uh, overtime. Um, I don't get overtime, but <laughs> yeah, mayor, not get overtime. neither do we actually. Um, some um, additional staff time that was needed for some projects. Um, but the um, permanent salaries, that 14,000 um, is because the new finance director will be starting on May 24th. Uh, okay. There'll be overlap of about four and a half, five weeks. And so we need to have additional money to pay because you'll have two finance directors for a few weeks. Thank you. I think the, um, I was just going to say, many of you know that Annie Lesko um, has done some additional staffing for the NPRC when it got started. And then the License Commission has been having a lot of 
additional meetings as part of the pandemic. So I know that that's partially why the, uh, the that small amount of extra overtime in our office is largely related to. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay, roll call on a positive recommendation, Laura, please. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. And Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Okay, that moves forward. Uh, next we have um, 21.265, an order authorizing acquisition and establishment of a municipal light plant. This is upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz, whereas the mayor and city council approved a two-phase market study and comprehensive feasibility study of municipal broadband as part of the FY 2020, FY 2024 capital improvement program. And whereas the city of Northampton awarded a contract for the aforementioned two-phase study to Design 9 Inc., which has completed a market study, the overwhelmingly positive results of which dictate moving forward with a comprehensive feasibility study. And whereas, if based on the results of both studies, the city of Northampton decides to implement municipal broadband, the city would be required to establish a municipal light plant in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 164, Section 35, and whereas establishment of municipal light plant under Section 35 first requires two separate approval votes of the city council by a two thirds majority in two separate fiscal years. And whereas the city council approved the establishment of the municipal light plant, light plan uh, in a fiscal, in fiscal year 2020 on June 18th, 2020. Um, and whereas in the interest of not unnecessarily delaying a future potential municipal broadband project, it would be prudent to complete the second required approval vote in fiscal year 2021, ending June 30th, 2021. Now, therefore, be it ordered, the City Council authorizes in accordance with the provisions of Chapter 164, the general laws, and in accordance with the rules, regulations, and orders of the Department of Public Utilities and the Department of Telecommunications and Cable, a municipal lighting plant for all purposes allowable under the laws of the Commonwealth, and more particularly for the establishment of a municipal broadband system for the city of Northampton. The mayor is hereby authorized to execute any documents necessary to effectuate this order. If I make a full recommendation to full city council. Second. Motion's been made by Councillor Labarge and seconded uh, by Councillor Quinlan. Um, uh, and I think there are a couple Scrivener's errors in here. Um, uh, Councillor Dwight? Well, I wasn't going to speak to the Scrivener's errors because I, I'm not sure it's all in the same. But anyway, but the, I just want to emphasize this is critical in order to establish municipal broadband. Even if we don't, we need to have this in place. It's required by law. And the establishment of a municipal light plant, while it sounds rather amorphous you know you have i'm sure you have this image of this glowing building somewhere that just sort of generates light it is in fact it, it is the structural uh requirement by the state uh, uh, in order for us to go forward with any any plans relative to anything that looks like a municipal uh broadband facility so i just want to emphasize just how important this is i don't anticipate anyone objecting to it but I, I just wanted to emphasize the relevance. Thank you for that emphasis. Um, the, so am I right that it's in all instances, instances in here, it should be municipal light plant, not plan? Should be plant. Okay. Yeah. So one, two, three, the fourth, whereas uh, we need a T and the fifth whereas we need a t i think that's it councillor jarrett um also in the now therefore in the second to last sentence and more particularly for the establishment a municipal broadband system i think that should be and more particularly for the establishment of a municipal broadband system Yes. This was a this was written rather quickly to get onto the agenda in time, so I apologize. We understand. Um, any other discussion? I did just want to add that this is like the this is the second step in the process, but there would be a third step just to let you know um, 
because the third step is actually it then has to go to the voters of Northampton. So it will go on the ballot. Um, and the ballot question actually, it's some, it's kind of similar to like the constitutional amendment process in Massachusetts. There's like two separate votes in two separate legislative sessions and then it goes to the voters. And so basically there's two separate votes of the council in two separate fiscal years. And then it'll go before the, the voters, it'll go on a ballot. Uh, and the voters have to then affirm the two votes of the council, basically. Um, so that'll be sort of the next step down the road. Um, and, you know, obviously we we're going to work with our consultants in the meantime, but just wanted you to be aware that there may be something coming that would be um, creating a ballot question as well. And obviously the timing is good because we have a municipal election um, in November. So that would be a, a, um, an ideal time to do it. So anyway, just wanted to give you the full process that, that this would set us on in motion toward. That is exciting. So what you're saying is that you, you think that it, uh, the earliest election could potentially be the November election that it could be on the ballot. Yeah. And again, it's, it's, um, you know, I think we would still, we would do it uh, probably only, even if we weren't a hundred percent sure um, by that point. I mean, there's nothing that requires you um, actually East Hampton did one a couple of years ago and they haven't really advanced anything forward um, and, and actually their ballot question says that it, it doesn't obligate the town to establish a municipal light plant, but it does give them the authority to do that. But, um, and I just, my, my past experience about trying to get local questions on state ballots um, is uh, I would avoid that at any cost because it's been a nightmare. Um, you know, we tried to get a charter question on a, on a state election ballot and that turned out to backfire. We had to do a separate election. So I think doing it on a municipal election would be the best way to do it. So yeah, so it could, I think, I think that's probably the most prudent course. Um, but again, we're gonna work with our um, consultants in terms of what they think is, is realistic. Okay, great. Any other discussion or questions? Seeing none, roll call please, Laura. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Yes. Okay, that moves forward with positive recommendation and there's no other business on the consent agenda. I mean, sorry, on the finance agenda. <laughs> Move to adjourn <laughs> finance. Second it. Motion's been made and seconded to adjourn. Roll call please, Laura. Okay, Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Okay. We are back in the full council and we're picking up financial orders. So 21.264, an order for the FY 2021 budget transfers. This is on first reading. Second. Motion made by Councillor Droid, seconded by Councillor Jarrett. Any discussion? Roll call, please, Laura. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. And Councillor Shara. Yes. Mayor Narco. <laughs> um, it was not it was not requested formally on the agenda, but I, I guess I would ask whether the council would entertain um, taking a second reading on this tonight, um, primarily because it would allow us to make these changes in journal entries in the budget. Um, and, uh, and I know uh, Director Wright has a lot on her plate right now and, and is trying to get to the end of the fiscal year and obviously turn things over to a new finance director. So it would actually, it would, I think it would help immensely to be able to get these transfers approved so that they could then be um, done in munis so that we understand where we are as we close out the fiscal year. Move to suspend rules, please. Motion made by Councillor Dwight, seconded, I think, by Councillor Labarge. Any discussion on suspension of rules? Roll call, please, Laura. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. 
Councillor Shara. Yes. And Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Second. Second. <laughs> But it's made by Councilor Labarge, seconded by Councilor Dwight. Um, any discussion on moving second? Any discussion on second reading? <laughs> Roll call, please. Councilor Foster. Yes. Councilor Jarrett. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Maori. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Quinlan. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Thorpe. Yes. And Councillor Dwight. Yes. Okay, that passes in two readings. We're at 21.265, an order authorizing acquisition and establishment of a municipal light plant. Oh, Motion cool. made by Councillor Barge, seconded by Councillor Dwight. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please, Laura. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. <laughs> Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. And Councillor Foster. Yes. Okay, that passes in first reading. Councillor Dwight. The I would like, in the interest of yes. mercy, actually, <laughs> if we would consider um, the next orders, uh, item 21244 through to uh, 256 to move them as a group for virtual second reading because as I recall there was no debate or discussion on the items in first reading um, and I would even uh, also suggest wave reading but but anyway I like to move them as a group I'll second, second. That. okay motions made by Councilor Dwight seconded by Councilor Labarge to move these as a group. Um, you, so don't read what they are. Is that what I heard? I, that was my suggestion, but I would defer to anyone who would be interested in having them all read again. I'm not reading them. I would just be reading their titles. Let's be clear. Right. Okay, it looks like no one has any interest in that. So. Motion has been made and seconded to move the financial order orders on second reading as a group. Any discussion on them as a group? Seeing none, roll call please on the group, Laura. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Maori. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Quinlan. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Okay. That brings us down to ordinances not yet referred. And uh, these are Florence traffic and parking ordinances that were sponsored by the Transportation and Parking Commission, so they don't need to go there. Councillor Dwight. If you'll indulge me, I'd like to move these as a group for referral <coughs> to legislative matters. Councilor Jarrett, second it. Uh, these are these are on second reading. They yeah. don't need but, to be uh, referred. Oh, wait a minute. Am I? I'm so sorry. No, you're right, and I, I apologize. Then I'd like to move them as a group for a final vote. Sorry, I was the one who said they were not yet referred because I was looking at the page above. Um, right. Yes, correct. These are on second reading. So they really don't have to go to transportation parking or <laughs> legislative matters. Um, okay, so a motion's been made and seconded as a group for second reading. Yep. Any discussion? Roll call, please, Laura. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Oh, yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Yes. Okay, those pass on second <laughs> reading and I don't see any further business. Oh, poo. <laughs> Anything else you want to take as a group? 
Yeah, I want to take a, a vote to adjourn as a group, yeah. please. Move to adjourn. <laughs> Motion's been made by Councilor Dwight, seconded by Councilor Foster. Uh, roll call and adjourning, Laura, please. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Quinlan. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Thorpe. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> Councilor Foster. Just one, yes. Councilor Jarrett. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. <laughs> and Councilor Mayori. Yes. Oh. All right. It's not even one o'clock, but I like the energy that Councilor Jarrett just brought to that adjourning. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Good evening, everyone. everybody. Thank you.